Good morning and welcome along to Silverstone for the 72nd Burkitt Relay uh, hosted by the 750 Motor Club once again. We're here on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit on what's a, a damp day but it's starting to brighten up. I'm here with Lewis Bills. Lewis who's been uh, covering these events now for 30 years. Welcome along Lewis. Really glad to have you here. Looking forward to this year. Yeah, yeah. 30 years. First started this in 1992. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's going to be a great one I think. We, uh, we can see the cars are beginning to line up to start the race and uh, yeah I think we're in for a really good one normally uh, normally the wet normally favours some of the lower powered cars but I still think the radicals will uh, probably do it overall yeah that's right so we should have four radical teams not all of them here at the moment they'll be the ones mainly battling for the scratch victory which will be the race we mainly talk about during the course of the coverage but the main race of Burkitt Relay is a handicap race and therefore, Lewis, any of the 70 teams we've got here this weekend could come out on the overall victory. Yes, last year was not the, the, the race, the handicap, because it is the Holly Burkett handicap race. The handicap wasn't really decided until um, the last half hour Absolutely. when the RAF team uh, sneaked in and took it. That's absolutely right. So you can see the cars starting to line up uh, on the grid. The first of the cars uh, I can see here is Alistair Smart, uh, who was our Class A champion in the Bike Sports Championships. So let's see if we can have a word with Alistair. Alistair, back again for the Burkitt. You've got, got four radical teams that's going to be really close up front. Yeah, uh, well, we managed to win it last year because we had a bit of lady luck and the weather was well, slightly better than this. <laughs> but, yeah, we're going to have fun, see how we go, um, try and see if we can get the overall win and uh, do our best. And obviously this race is important to just keep being consistent and keeping out the pit lane, I guess. Uh, yeah, staying out the pit lane, don't pick up penalties. And for us, it's just the closing speed on those slower cars and making sure that, you know, we've got to go around them. They've got to stay on their line. And, um, yeah, everyone have a, you know, we'll all have a safe race. There's some people here doing it for the first time. So using your years of experience, that should really come out, on, uh, out in a handy way. Uh, I, I hope so. I mean, let's see. It's... Um, it's a six-hour race. Who knows? <laughs> Best of luck. Thank you. So that's Alistair Smart. Like I say, he won our Class A championship in the bike sports this year. He's a former winner of the Burkitt Relay. And this year here on Alpha Live, we have a predictor um, going on. So if you check out the uh, details on the YouTube link, you'll be able to see how to um, predict all our winners. You've got the overall winner on scratch, the overall winner on handicap, as well as the classes. So if you put that into the comments, you can uh, be part of something we will look out for throughout uh, the six-hour race. So if we have a look uh, further back, I think we've got Lewis. If, uh, we hand it back over to Lewis, who's got one of the TCR cars uh, who's competing today. Yeah, well, I'm uh, standing right next to uh, Mark Grice. And Mark is going to have a bit of a chat. He's in one of the TCR cars. In the wet in 2018, they actually won the, the race overall. Mark, you were just telling me you were part of that team, although you weren't one of the drivers. No, I wasn't one of the drivers back then, but I was uh, there helping out, getting wet uh, in the pit stops and everything. But, yeah, that was, um, that was some year for the TCR boys. Well, yeah, so I take it you're going to be hoping that we're going to have a lot of wet weather today? Yes, I mean, I, I love it in wet anyway, so, um, and these cars are phenomenal in wet, but whether it's wet or dry, and just out there to have some fun. Well, good luck to you, the, good luck to you and the team, and uh, hope to talk to you later in the day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, there we go. There we go. That's, uh, can't even see the number of the car. Oh, yeah, car 16. That's rather silly, isn't it? Car 16, Mark Grice. And uh, here we go. We're back to... Uh, to Josh. So let's uh, have a little look further down the grid. We've got uh, some of the, the Volkswagen Golfs that are competing uh, in the Burkitt Reel. I want to go a little bit further back though to some of uh, the cars further down that will be looking to come out on top uh, during the course of this six hours. And it's great to have um, these car up here, which is Kevin Clark, because if you were watching on the Burkitt, uh, on the 750 Moat Club coverage and the Alpha Live coverage, Kevin had a very large accident at Alton Park. So let's see if we can have a ride with Kevin. Kevin, it's great to have you here because last time we saw you, things weren't going very well. No, it was, uh, yeah, slightly just one of those things. It was a racing incident and I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I, I, I don't consider that I did anything wrong and I don't consider the other driver did anything wrong. It was just two into one, don't go. But from your point of view, you're absolutely OK after that? Yeah, I feel quite good. I've still got aches and pains, but I've been told I love them for a long time. So, <laughs> um, 
nothing really new there, but uh, yeah, I, I feel good in the car. I'd just like to say a big thanks to Lucky Gear and his team, Race Lab, for loaning me the car because fantastic car because right now I'm carless. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's great. To, you're obviously very keen to get back out in the car just a few weeks after that. Yeah, that's right. You know, um, it's a bit like falling off a bike. You've got to get <laughs> straight back in and have another go. So yeah, and um, I love coming racing with the clubs. That the, all the drivers are a great bunch of guys and really make you feel welcome. Yeah. And um, I, I mean, I, I'm absolutely astounded how many marshals and rescue guys have wished me well. And you know, it just makes you appreciate them all the more. You know, you just we're so lucky to have them. And in terms of this race, are you looking to move forward in this first stint? I'd be sensible. You know, it's <laughs> six hours. Yeah. Yes, if there's an opportunity, I'll always go for a Kevin Clark size <laughs> gap. But um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be doing anything silly. You know, yeah. it, I, I'm only in a loan car as well. So, <laughs> no, the, the car's a very good car. It, it does it well. Um, I think we'll be competitive, but so is everyone else. Yeah. So you've got to treat everyone with the respect they deserve. Best of luck and great to see you, Kevin. You. So that's Kevin Clark who's uh, out there in his uh, M3 and we can uh, have a little look uh, further down on the grid. Just a few minutes now until we get uh, the, um, the race cards onto the circuit. Lewis is over here, it's over to Lewis Bills. Thanks Josh. Well here we are next to Alan Curtis. He's leading off the 55 team, has to break dancers one. Alan, um, tell us about the car. Well this is a 310R. Um, it, it's an academy car which you can then uh, add to the kit and um, changing ECUs and, and so on and camshafts and uh, it gives you 152 brake horsepower uh, at the engine it's a 1600 Ford Sigma engine and they're all sealed so it's a nice competitive field but everybody's got the same. Yeah here at the Burkett you know, one of the uh, first of the open wheelers so uh, you know it's good you're gonna get fairly well sprayed I think in the first in the openness this stint Absolutely, I'll be trying to keep away from the larger size cars. It, it does feel a bit daunting as you go past them on the bends, but uh, I'll be giving them plenty of space. OK, have a good race. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. So that's the, uh, that's the brake dancers. Alan Curtis leading off in his Caterham uh, R310. There's a lot of Caterhams here, aren't there, Lewis? So lots of well, these yeah, Caterham teams. Well, yeah, that's normal, isn't it? Caterhams are, uh, are the mainstay of... Um, the Burke, or have been for well, since I've been doing it anyway. Yeah, we've got uh, then the Toy Show I have too. Actually, Sam Harrison's at the wheel of Sam. Your first Burke, I think. Looking forward to this. Yeah, it should be good fun. And I think you're in a car probably not as quick as those behind. You're gonna have a busy for a few laps. Yes, <laughs> I think we're slightly ahead of some that are gonna come past. So, so I think you've done single seater racing in the past. Yes, it mostly historics. Yeah. So it's a bit different. This. <laughs> How did you find the practice session out of all those cars around you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. It's slip and slide in the wet, so that's good. Well, best of luck. Hope you have a good time. Thank you. So that's uh, Sam Harrison, who's here. I think um, historic Formula Ford champion from this year. Lewis is at the uh, next row of the grid. Yeah, I'm here with 34. That's ES Motorsport team, and uh, we've got Bailey Edwards. Bailey, have you done the event before? Uh, yes, last year. And how did it go last year? Uh, hopefully it's going to go better this year because uh, my memory of this last year wasn't that good. So, yeah, hopefully it's better than last year. Oh, so you're starting the team off from ES Motorsports and uh, I tell you, the car looks really nice. Thank you very much. How's the season gone before this? It's been very much up and down, but it's uh, been a good year nonetheless, really. OK, good luck to you and the team. Mind you, with a Lotus, it's usually lots of trouble, usually serious. So uh, hopefully they can get to the finish. Back to you, Josh. So very shortly, we're going to be getting the cars out uh, onto the circuit. So the last few words, Lewis, about uh, the uh, teams, what they'll be doing in the pit lane at this stage, just before we're going to get racing underway. Well, they've been had a very busy morning because all the cars, and that can be up to six cars in each team, have to get qualified. So uh, the, uh, normal, uh, the normal procedure is just to do three laps for each car. Um, normally most of the teams know their way around here anyway, don't most of the drivers, so they don't really need to do any more than that. Um, now they'll be just sorting out the, um, the garages, which is, can be quite difficult. So you nominate who can start, in this case it's car B, and then, then you'll have the next car, which will be whatever it is, lined up. And behind that, you'll probably have another car maybe on slicks and not mm. on wets or something like that. that that's going to be very important today, isn't it? Because... At the moment, everyone's going to be on wet tyres, but there's going to be a point where they go on to slicks a little bit later on. 
Yeah, there will be a changeover point, and the team managers, that they're really an essential part of the uh, of the setup. If they make the wrong calls, you can lose masses amount of time. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Obviously, some of these cars, a bit further about the production cars, they haven't got so much lap trouble because they're on treaded tyres um, throughout. So the classes A and B, you'll see on the entry list there, on treaded tyres, classes C and D, uh, or on the slick tyres. And um, a little bit more information about how this works, because it's not the most simple race. Uh, Alpha Live have put together a little video, so let's see if we can take a look at that now. 70 teams, 300 plus drivers, and over 70 years of history. Here's everything you need to know to get into the Burkitt Six Hour Relay. The Burkitt Six Hour Relay is the UK's largest annual motor race, dating back all the way to 1951. Teams are composed between three to six drivers and cars, racing in one of the most unique relay race formats in the world. So what's the challenge? Teams must compete to lap the circuit as many times as possible within the six hour period, but of course with only one of their cars on track at any one time. Any closed wheel or non-historic car is welcome to enter, that means you'll see an incredible mix of cars sharing the track. From touring cars to smart cars, from radicals to Austin A30s, and of course everything in between. The Burkett Six Hour Relay is really two races in one. The first race is called the Scratch Race. This is a simple one. It's the overall victory handed to the team that completes the highest number of laps, just like any other race. The second race is called the Handicap Race, and this can be won by any team on the grid. But how does it work? Designed to create a level playing field and to reward exceptional driving, the teams are credited with a certain number of laps to be added onto their total at the end of the race. For example, it's kind of like having a 30 lap head start. This means that, in theory, all teams should finish on the same number of handicap laps at the end of the race. Those that outperform their expected results the most and finish on the highest number of gross laps are rewarded the handicap race victory. The overall scratch and handicap victory are not the only prizes up for grabs either. There are actually 12 awards that are available to win, thanks to class victories. All cars on track are divided up into four different classes. Class A and B are cars up to or over 2,000cc respectively, running on the 1A to 1C tyre, which are semi slick tyres derived from the road tyres like you might be familiar with. Class C and D are cars that are again up to or over 2,000cc or 1,000cc in bike engine cars. With this class running on the racing slick tyres, it makes it some of the fastest cars on circuit. And finally, cars with forced induction carry an engine capacity multiplier of 1.7, so a 2,000cc turbocharged car would be treated as a 3,400cc. So once all the handicaps are applied, each class winner and runner-up receive an award, in addition to the highest place 750 Formula team, the highest place BMW and all Porsche team. Also, no team may win more than one trophy, so you won't see the overall handicap and scratch winners taking more than one award. What makes the Burkett a true relay is what happens in the pits. Unlike a conventional endurance pit stop where a car would stop, swap driver, new tyres and so on and so on, in the Burkett we like to do things a little bit different. Like a normal race, you would still call your driver in off the track, and as the first guy is called into the pits, instead of stopping, it will drive straight past the team garage. Yes, you heard that right, past the team garage. As soon as that's happened, the second car is then released right behind the first one, pending that it's clear to do so, of course, and both cars would head straight down the pit lane. At the end of the pit lane, the first car peels off into the paddock with the second car then shooting straight out to the circuit to continue the race for the team. If there is a miscommunication and the team finds themselves with two cars out at the same time, any laps completed will not be counted and the team will have to make up for lost time. So that should bring you up to speed with the Burkitt Six Hour Relay. It's definitely an exciting action-packed race that is sure to bring some serious entertainment. Make sure you tune in to watch it all and to round off the 750 Motor Club season in style.
Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Silverstone <laughs> and the 76, 72nd, really, even of the Burkitt Six Hour Relay Race, organised by the 750 Club. My name is Ian Soman. Alongside me in the commentary box for the moment is Andy McEwen, and we'll also be hearing again throughout the day from Josh Barrett and Lewis Beals as well as we look forward to this six hour race on the 5.9 kilometer Grand Prix circuit that was inaugurated more than 70 years ago now in 1948. And uh, a great race in prospect. This is the weather forecast and look at that 19 degrees on Burkitt Relay Saturday. That's unheard of. It's uh, been raining overnight. The circuit's still damp, but I think it probably will dry out. I don't think we're going to see a huge amount of sunshine, however, but the uh, circuit should dry up as the day goes on, and that's likely, I would have thought, to uh, mean that for the scratch race on, as that plays into the hands of the likes of the uh, radical teams that uh, dominate at the front of the field. As you can see, the cars are forming up on the grid there. That's the number 16 of Mark Grice. Uh, we could see there in the Capture Motorsport car, there is the 51 car of uh, Jonathan Packer in the VW Golf uh, Area Motorsport in 48A. That's Scott Parkin for Darkside Motorsport in the Golf GTI. Uh, 3B there on screen now is the uh, Andrew Etheridge BMW uh, M3. And we get a few of other cars as we go down the grid. One of the uh, Ginettas there we could uh, just see as well. You can see just how eclectic this field is. We've got Caterhams, uh, not actually as many Caterhams as we've had in past years. Good number of BMWs of various shapes and sizes as well. And uh, we'll have the cars going off very shortly uh, to get this race underway. Uh, let's just tell you about how the grid lines up. It's a grid that's not based on qualifying times. It's been predetermined by, uh, by the officials based on the handicap, which is the main element of this race. So we do have the quickest teams towards the front of the scratch race grid. So on pole position, it is the 15 team, which is Raw Motorsport, Rob's Rongans. That's Chris Preen, John McLeod and Ben Stone. They're lining up on pole position alongside the 14 team, Doris NWH of uh, Roger Bromley, Mark Williams, Shane Stoney and Ryan Harp Ellum. That's the other car that will be on the front row of the grid, one board with the uh, area motorsport golf there of uh, Jonathan Packer, who lines up on the outside for row five. Second row though, the two RJ Motorsport cars, number 30, RJ Motorsport 2, Ashley Lindley and Morell, Matt Jones and Charles Hall, and RJ Motorsport 1, Alistair Smart, Charles Graham, and Wade Eastwood. Charles Graham not off the podium in six years of racing in the uh, in the Burkitt six hour relay race. Uh, row three on the inside is going to be the Prep and Lay G Sport number 12 car. That's the car of Russell Dack, Paul Wood and James Carden, Jason Wood, their BMW M3 mounted, and the proper British GTs, Team 9, Chris Everill, D Dylan Popovich, uh, Ross Everill, Stuart Dayburn, Ben Scrivens. And it looks like and sounds like from our commentary position that we are getting cars uh, released from the grid to uh, get this race underway. There we go, green flag is waving and uh, we can see the cars moving off behind the safety car then and it's effectively a uh, this is effectively the start of the race but the cars will then form around single file and then they'll be released from behind the safety car at the end of this lap but it'll be a single file rather than a full rolling start uh, my name is ian soman as i say and making his debut as far as the burkitt six hour relay uh, is concerned with us this weekend is andy McEwen. andy you've worked with us at the 750 club for, for many years but first time at the burkitt good to have you here yeah thank you for having me it's uh, one of those bucket list events that i've always wanted to cover finally got the opportunity to do so um, and i'm very much looking forward to it not fully uh, comprehending exactly how the race works just yet. I feel like it is one of those races, though, that as it evolves over six hours, you, uh, you start to get a slightly better understanding of uh, the specific rules and regulations, the handicap sort of plays out. Um, and it's going to be fascinating to, to learn on the go, uh, as well as enjoy really the very best of British club racing. You know, this eclectic mix of cars and drivers, uh, many of whom race with the 750 Motor Club throughout the rest of the season as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who can 
scooped out on top and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. Yes, indeed. So you can see that the uh, cars falling around behind the safety car at the moment, the Renault Megane safety car, and there are 70 teams. So there's the was 35 rows of cars uh, in all uh, on the grid. And it uh, is going to be... Uh, an exciting race ahead of us, that's for sure. I've given you the details of the first three rows. On the fourth row on the inside, you had the 16 car. That's the Capture Motorsport car, the Golf and Cooper TCRs. Uh, we'll tell you more about that team as the race goes on. And next to them was the 36, which was Get to the Chopper, the BMW uh, 3 Series cars of Ola Smith, John Coburn and Paul Bryden. Fifth row, then you got Darkside Motorsport. We saw them out there with... Uh, Scott Parkin up, up first for them in the Golf TDI and also the uh, area motorsport car next to them. The sixth row then, uh, 32, was Dayton Motorsport. Uh, and like Axel van Niederveen, Marco Anastasi and Maurizio Schiglio in the Ginetta G56 GTAs. And besides them, the number three car, the Triple A's racing, Andrew Raff, Andrew Etheridge, Phil Nib and Christopher Etheridge. Uh, you can see here as we look down the uh, Hamilton straight, the uh, start and finish straight up for the British Grand Prix, that the circuit is still dampish, especially offline. Uh, it's not, you know, got dry, I don't see a dry line as such emerging yet, but I'm sure Andy, as this race gets on and goes, goes, goes ahead, then uh, we'll see a dry line emerging as the race uh, goes on. Yeah, I mean, we've got 70 cars out on circuit, so that in and of itself will clear the water reasonably well. I'm surprised, though, just how wet it is. There's a fair bit of spray coming from behind the cars, uh, even at this uh, low rolling lap speed. Um, it has not rained since we've been here today, since uh, 8, 9 o'clock this morning. So, um, yeah, interesting that the track has retained a lot of that uh, moisture, and that'll make these early stages very, very tricky. It's the same as any endurance race. You're not going to win it in the first few laps, but touch a white line or a curb in these conditions and you could very much lose it. So if you want to follow live timing for this race, you can do that. So you've, some of you will be watching the live stream, but you can also get the live timing if you've got another screen maybe. Uh, head to the 750 Motor Club website, 750mc.co.uk, and there'll be a link on a banner to the live timing for the event. Also the live stream if you're here at the circuit and not already watching it. If you are following the live stream, uh, do let us have your comments as the race goes on. And the other thing to note for your comments is we have a prediction competition running today. Uh, so have a look at that the entry list is in the uh, details the event details on the stream and you can make your prediction of the overall winner and the handicap winner and a b c and d uh, handicap winners as well and we'll work out who is on top of that as the race goes on but as you can see the race about to get underway we've got um, some cars overtaking already it seemed before they'd got to the timing line which wasn't completely as expected anyway green flags now waving as we head down to the first corner and it looks like it's going to be the uh, Mark Rice car the capture motorsport car that comes through in the lead of the race for the first time at Cops Corner I think everyone else is more or less holding position and you could see as the cars got up to racing speed there is still quite a bit of spray Andy uh, indeed there is. Already we've had another lead change though. That's the number 15 Raw Motorsports uh, car that started on pole position blasting back through. Uh, yeah, Capture Motorsport having started seventh. We're in the lead not only before turn one but I suspect before the start line. So uh, I guess there'll be a discussion going on in race control about that. But it uh, looks as though they've all got cleanly through those first few corners uh, which is very, very important indeed. Right now it's very congested, very slippery uh, and as you said a little bit of spray if you're stuck in the midfield. Yeah, absolutely right. So you can see already quite a spread of cars around the lap. I think some of them are still just going past our commentary position here to start their race. So already about half a lap behind the leaders who are heading down to the Vale for the uh, first time in anger. And we've got two radical teams uh, side by side there for the moment. But early days, of course, we need to try and work out who's in all, all of these radicals at the, at the moment as well. So we'll try and uh, do that as this race goes on. Uh, screech of tyres, and that's the BMW that's got around coming out of Club Corner. That had just moved into fourth place ahead of Capture Motorsport, uh, and a quick spin there coming out of Club Corner. And uh, that car hopefully is going to get going again. That's number 36, and it is driver C. So that's Paul Bryden, who's had a rotation. Kept it out of the barriers, I think, Ian, but yeah. lots of trap position lost. Yes, so that's uh, an early spin being caught out by these uh, greasy conditions at the beginning of the race. Cars are heading down towards the final part of the 
lap here and it's almost like a 10 lap sprint between the two radicals at the moment certainly the car in second place is team 30 which is rj motorsport 2. now i don't think we've picked out picked out the start driver on that one we'll try and work it out in a minute and they are doing battle with the uh, 15 team are they not the raw motorsports rob wrongans at the moment and i think it's leon morell in the number 30 30 b that appears to be and he tried to get around the outside at luffield there uh, the grip of course in the wet conditions is often to be found around the outside of some of these corners uh, rather than the traditional racing line but it wasn't quite enough to get him the race lead and so he settles back in second position but you're absolutely right those top three absolutely nose to tail capture motorsport led at the start of the race of course uh, but they have dropped down the order slightly since then this is a brilliant battle at the head of the field though and Liam Morell looking quick in the early stages and a spin for car 42c now that is uh, Mike Nash in his BMW 330ci that looks like that has gone on just as they were coming on to the uh, Wellington straight I think so he's gone round uh, already dropping down the order uh, therefore, but it is the three radicals out in front. So the car in third position at the moment is the number 14, the Doris NWH team. That's the team comprising of uh, Roger Bromley, Mark William, Shane Stoney and Ryan Harper Ellum. And that's one that I reckon could be uh, pretty rapid during the course of this race. A strong driver lineup there. Uh, as we've got the three radicals still together. Not seeing too many predictions coming in yet on the predictions competition on the comments, so do get your predictions in. We want the overall winner on Scratch, we want the handicap winner and the handicap winners on classes A, B, C and D. Have a look at the entry list in the description for this uh, YouTube, YouTube stream and get your uh, predictions in. There's a scoring system uh, depending on how uh, accurately you predict your t team's uh, finishing position and the overall winner at the end of the race will get a 750 Motor Club goodie bag. I'm not quite sure what's in this goodie bag, but I'm sure it'll be well worth having. Um, and uh, you've also got to try and beat Andy and Josh and Lewis and myself, who've also made our own predictions as well. Uh, indeed, and I'm feeling pretty good about my prediction for the scratch win because I went for that number 14 team, the uh, Doris NWM squad, and they're doing reasonably well, well for the time being. So did I, Andy. Ah, great yeah. minds and all yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, we'll either be right together or very wrong together. We'll find out in... Uh, five hours and 51 minutes time I suppose but uh, those three radicals having a good battle at the front of the field and a good little BMW scrap going on a little further down the order you will find this certainly in the early stages uh, as the grid has been decided based upon the handicap system you should have lots of cars of very similar performance lining up together on the grid which gives us some good early scraps good to see the number 10 C car out there that's one of the sports specials cars from within the 750 Motor Club Sports Specials Championship it's Anton Landon out there in his Cyan Mark II which he raced at Mallory Park just a couple of weeks ago and there's another radical that's a little bit further back I think that must be the other of the RJ Motorsport cars I think that's Alistair Smart isn't it in his PR6 that's a bit further back maybe. Yes, uh, having lost a few more places on that lap, so too have Capture Motorsport actually, so this is all changing uh, further back. A penalty there for number 16 was that? That was the car that was in the lead at Cops Corner on the first lap, Andy, so okay. no surprise there. Another prediction. We've got one prediction right already then today, and uh, we sort of saw that one coming. <laughs> no so. points for that though, no uh, points. No, sadly not, but uh, they'll be on their way into the pit lane then, uh, having uh, been sat at the moment just outside of the top five. I think they lost a bit of ground on that lap. Meanwhile, back to the lead battle, and it's still as close as it was um, with the number 15 Raw Motorsports Radical leading the way but number 14 into second position now it's been a good opening stint this and now they challenge for the race lead around the outside into the veil that gives them the inside line for the right hand element of club and into the race lead will they go well they squeeze number 15 out wide and we do have uh, Ian I think that's our third lead change already yes and also our first bit of Lapry as well as the little Citroen C1 uh, within the first uh, what two or three flying laps of this race is lapped by the radicals so that uh, part of the track part of the race where the drivers do get a clear lap that's already uh, at an end unfortunately and these three radicals will have a bit more tr uh, traffic to deal with before the uh, before the race gets too much further 
so you're right, it is Leon Morel, isn't it, in car number 30. That's the car in third position at the moment. But they're soon going to get onto this gaggle of traffic, which involves quite a few MX-5s. And there's a good representation of MX-5s this year. We've got both the Mazda Misfits and we've got the Mazda Dudes, as well as the Red Rascal team as well, which have also been successful in the Burkitt in, on handicap in the past when they've been racing BMW M3s rather than the MX-5s that they're racing this year. Yeah, nice to see a few of the Mark IV MX-5s out there as well. More and more of those now starting to be built in the UK, which is uh, good to see. The current generation of Mazda MX-5, that stop-go penalty uh, still not been served yet by Capture Motorsport. That board will remain over the pit wall uh, until such a time as they do head for the pit lane. Uh, to Ian's point, you just saw in the background there those three radicals that are dicing for the race lead, and they're within a corner or so, I think, of catching this enormous group of map markers. Uh, and when they do so, I suspect we might see those top three split up ever so slightly. Absolutely right. Yes, I think uh, I think you're right. Um, just to say, live time for those of you just tuning in, you can find that on the 750 Motor Club website, 750mc.co.uk, and there'll be a banner for the live timing, which will help you to understand what's going on a little bit a little bit better. That will show you at the moment it's the number 14 team, Dom is NWH that are in the lead from 15, Raw Motorsports in second and 30, uh, RJ Motorsport two in third and we've got a spinner. That looks like the Mini Clubman, is it not? It looks a bit that shape, doesn't it? Yeah, gone off at Club Corner as well, and thankfully gets going. That's clearly a tricky part of the circuit this morning, isn't it, Ian? It looks pretty greasy over at Club, and uh, a reasonably high-speed second part of that corner in slippery conditions. It's catching people out. So, so that would have been Keith Izzard, I think, yes. won't it, in, yeah. the, uh, in the Clubman? It was indeed, uh, pointing the wrong way. But again, luckily not collecting anything solid, so he's able to get going again. See, fastest lap now has gone to RJ Motorsport 1, that's Team 29 with a 2.33.04. Uh, uh, although, yes, I'm not sure that's correct actually because I'm missing some quicker laps than that on our, on our timing screen now. So we'll keep, keep, uh, keep you abreast of what's going on. And a problem for Team 47, is that the bonnet that's flown up? It is, yeah. isn't it, on 47B. Uh, nice big number of letter on that car, thank you 47B. Um, that is uh, Matthew Stenning in his Honda Civic, MJ Motorsport Team 2. Now that has stopped uh, just adjacent to the wing there on the Hamilton Strait and uh, will that need an intervention do we think uh, Andy? Well it won't be easy to move from there there is a, a gate in the pit wall a bit further down that they could push it through but to, to get it there the marshals would have to go out onto the circuit and as we've already mentioned we now have a full spread of cars around the entire uh, Silverstone Grand Prix circuit so there is no clear track uh, for the marshals to dive out into so We'll wait and see. They'll be monitoring the situation in race control, of course. But should we get a safety car, that can have quite a bearing on the race, particularly the handicap race, can't it? Yes, absolutely. And it's actually worth explaining the handicap at some point in the relatively near future. Just to say that that is the 49E car. So that is uh, Rob Garifal out at the moment in the Chevrolet Lumina. Uh, and the first time I've seen uh, that car out, that's for the Very Random Races, which is a team that the 750 Motor Club Office put together of people who... Um, I don't know, maybe it's in kind of I essentially have no friends because uh, <laughs> Martin Short's in there as well. I'm sure he has lots of friends. Uh, and there's the 47 car that's gone th in through the, uh, through the pit, uh, gate in the pit wall there, so no need for safety car. But 47A, of course, is Martin Short, uh, very well known from a British uh, GT uh, racer and Le Mans racer as well. Uh, and they're in a team with Liam Bresitz and David Brown and Jonathan Barrett in there at BMWs and Mazda MX-5s. Oh, three wide there for <laughs> Rob Garifull, Um with the Honda and with the uh, also the MG ZR as well. Uh, that's the Team 46 uh, MG Motorsport Team 1 car. Uh, that's out there. Is that Mervyn Beckett that's out there at the moment? Possibly it is. If ever there was a, a shot to absolutely typify what the Burkitt is all about, it was that, wasn't it? The V8-powered Chevy uh, up against the, the Honda Civic and the little, little MG. So a great variety, and it was all for position as well. Uh, the damp and greasy conditions perhaps not favouring some of the more powerful uh, cars. And I'd be surprised if that Chevy Lumina had any traction control. So uh, I'd imagine things are a little bit dicey in the uh, Chevrolet in the early stages. But uh, if it does dry out, I expect some of those more powerful cars to start to come to the fore. So just to explain the handicap then, so at the start of the race each team has given a number of credit laps and those are effectively added at the end of the race to the number of laps that they actually complete and then there is a classification based on the, uh, the number of laps, the handicap credit laps plus the actual laps they've completed and that is the handicap award which really is the main part of the Burkitt 6 hour relay race 
and you refer to the fact that the safety car might have a bearing on that. Well, when the safety car is out, obviously you don't have an advantage by being in a faster car. Um, so the credit laps that are given, I'm, I'm starting to confuse myself, even though I was <laughs> are prorated for the period of time that the safety car is out to sort of kind of eliminate that uh, inequity that then is created by giving slow cars an advantage when they don't really need it because everyone is going at the same place behind the safety car. Follow that? I, I should be making notes as the day goes on. I'm, I'm anticipating a quiz at the end. Uh, yes, I think I'd more or less, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The good thing about Silverstone is that the likelihood of a safety car is reasonably low, isn't it? Because you've got lots of tarmac runoff area. Even if you do deposit yourself in a gravel trap or a barrier, there are live snatch vehicles. And as we saw there, the uh, pit walls even have gates in them. So uh, if you've got a mechanical issue and you can pull off in a safe place, that negates the issue for a safety car. And even if you were to lose control and go off the track, you're highly likely uh, to be caught by one of those big tarmac runoff areas. So hoping that that safety car doesn't happen. On the comments on, on the YouTube live stream, Mark Wallace has he driven one of those Zoom. It's quite quick and great V8 engine note. Basically a modified Holden Commodore road car, he says, uh, built for a race series in the Middle East originally. So uh, uh, yes. uh, thanks, Mark, for that. And uh, do keep your comments coming in, everyone, on the, uh, on the uh, YouTube live stream of this event, produced once again by uh, Alpha Live, out in force here at Silverstone this weekend for the Burkitt Six Hour Relay Race. Big moment there for the number 46 Honda Civic and Mervyn Beckett, who goes a lap down there to the uh, second place to RJ Motorsport Radical. Uh, but Mervyn with a good bit of car control there through Snow Corner. I think he's about to lose a place though. The two Honda Civics there uh, swapping positions. That's the 8A car going through. Uh, Chris Nyland in his red and black Civic gaining a position there as Mervyn Beckett was uh, rear grip limited, I think, through those uh, preceding corners. At the head of the field, Doris uh, NWH have pulled out our three and a half second lead another fastest lap last time around two minutes 19.8 uh, for the number 14 car and so that radical having not started right at the front of the field has picked its way through into the race lead and is now starting to pull a nice gap absolutely right so uh, already nearly 20 minutes into this race then and we can see uh, we've got caterums and the uh, the radical coming down towards us that is the doris nwh number 14 car that is still uh, in the lead then there's the second place car rj motorsports 2 and there is the third place car which is the uh, raw motorsport robs rongens that's uh, there in uh, in third position i think the c1's probably been lapped twice now i would think uh, and then probably the rest of these cars that are coming through now have already been lapped once during the course of this race such as the discrepancy in the performance uh, indeed so but i think the c1's got about a 40 lap per credit hasn't it yes. so uh, okay it's likely to be lapped more than 40 times but uh, that is the challenge here that faces some of these really quick cars such as the, the trio of radicals uh, to even have a chance at fighting for an, a, an overall handicap win they've got to be putting an awful lot of laps on some cars uh, some of whom are a lot slower but actually some cars that uh, have reasonably high number of credit laps are not going to be all that slow in these wet conditions so it's the progress or the consistency uh, for some of these slightly less powerful cars in these wet conditions that could keep them in contention could be end of the race yeah good to see uh, a smaller number of caterums than we've had in previous years uh, out here uh, there you can see the Chevrolet we've seen quite a lot of that in this early stage of the race aren't we not complaining as well no not at all uh, and then you've got a couple of the Porsches, quite a few teams from the Carmel Porsche Challenge uh, taking part as well. And good to see them out. The Carmel Porsche also runs with the 750 Motor Club during the course of this year. You can see just a couple of those Porsches uh, going through shot now down at Stowe Corner. I'll try and pick up on how they're faring as the race goes on. But nice little battle between those two, uh, two Caterhams at the minute. Is that the two breakdancers teams I think it is in 16th and 17th positions overall teams 5 and 55 by the looks of it uh, so uh, th I'm sure they're all very well known to one another uh, breakdancers 1 and 2 so team 2 is Wes Payne uh, Paul Herndon Michael Curley and the 55 team uh, breakdancers 1 is Alan Curtis Harry and Tim Steele Yes, so I think they've actually swapped positions. I think have, they have, yes. Not? Yeah, Wes Payne was ahead, but he's, uh, if I was behind, sorry, but he's just gone back ahead of the uh, the number 55 on that lap. So they can see Wes in his sort of um, 
uh, iridescent uh, 5A cage room and actually now started to pull a bit of a gap as they come out of the loop uh, and back onto the Wellington Strait. Uh, back on board with the uh, area motorsport car then and brilliant to be able to bring some live on board uh, coverage of the circuit and you'll really be able to see from this perspective in the speed differential between yeah. some of the cars yeah and there you can see that so we're heading through uh, Beckett's here aren't we at the moment with uh, with Jonathan Packer a regular in the 750 Motors Club uh, Club Enduro Championship uh, within Class B of that championship one of the, the the regular front runners within that category and here you can see his uh, oh, keeping pace with uh, Anton Landon Sana which is just a in front of us into the left, but he's easily going past. I think that's possibly William Horns' uh, Peugeot 106. We just saw going past to driver's right. And he's heading down the hangar straight now. He's uh, not catching anyone just at the moment. But uh, but that might change. And then you can see Anton Landon Cyana just ahead. Uh, and that car is in 11th place. Run, baby, run. And this is the Airbnb Motorsport car, 12th number 51 at the moment. And we're going to pass a Boxster. Uh, no, an MR2, actually, isn't it? De that, it is deceiving. I mean, they were designed that way, I think, uh, as we, we go past. So that was Team 16, actually, was it not? The No, not 16. I wanted to go for 19. No, I'll try again. <laughs> Carry on, Andy. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Anton Landon losing a place there to Jonathan Packer. Landon uh, outbraked himself a bit into Vale. I was about to make the point, actually, in that... Um, even we, we talk a lot about uh, difference between car performance out there. That's what the handicap system is all about. I'll get to that in a moment because there is a BMW compact stationary uh, coming through farm curve just on the left hand side there caught a glimpse of the uh, red BMW. So that hopefully will get going again. Uh, but yes, we talk a lot about the, the speed differential between cars. That's how the handicap system is made. But actually you'll often find situations such as this one, Packer versus Landon, where they're two cars that generate their lap time very differently. Clearly the Cyana was quicker down the straights, whereas uh, Packer had the advantage through the tight technical corners. But over a lap, their lap times are very similar. So you get those little battles that develop. Uh, and again, there you can see that, uh, in fact, that's the radical going through. Uh, but yes, yeah, e even uh, cars that appear to have a bit of a pace differential over the course of a lap uh, can be quite similar. Yes, indeed. A reminder, live timing, 750mc.co.uk. Uh, that is the 750 Motor Club website and there should, I'm just going to check this because some people are saying they can't find it, there should be a banner uh, that's oops, on the top but, let, but let's head down now to the pit lane for the first time during the course of this race and Lewis Beals has got someone to talk to Well here I am back in the pit lane and I've got uh, Brian Watson with me who was the team manager last year for the uh, Burkett winners you snuck up and took it right at the end for the RAF team. We did. It was, uh, as you know, we really love this event. It's all about going down to the last few seconds, and we won by 10 seconds, I think, last year. Yeah, I know. And I know I know you of old. You always put the fastest guy out last, don't you? We try and have a strategy that works for us throughout the six hours. That's all I can say, because anything else would be reveal some secrets. <laughs> so you're here with two teams this, this year to uh, defend your title. Yes, we are. We're defending the handicap winner's title and the, in, uh, the inter-services between the Army, Navy and RAF. Uh, that's equally as important, but obviously we're here to win both. Well, yeah, obviously, yes, and you're actually running in the, the second team, I believe. I am. I'm using my grey hair and experience to help out a development team. So we're running a team that we would normally run and a development team as well alongside it. Because our, our aim is to bring drivers through into this event, because it's a really good event to get uh, youngsters out into. Yes, because you get a lot of laps and uh, you get a lot of experience out there of uh, lapping cars and being lapped. Absolutely. It's a very fast event. It's really well managed to deliver the number of cars on track. And the way we build up through the Armed Forces Race Challenge, working with 750, who we work with anyway, it's a, a really good sort of end of season event that builds up nicely. OK, Brian, best of luck to you and the rest of the RAF team. And uh, I have to say, is hope you win the Armed Forces Challenge as well. Well, that's, a, that, that's clearly one of the priorities. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks very much, Brian. Anyway, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Lewis. And we are 25 minutes into this Burkitt six-hour relay race. And at the moment, it's being led by Team 14, as you can see on your screen. That's Doris uh, NWH. And uh, they have got nine laps under their belt. And they have been started by uh, driver C, which is Ryan Harper Ellum. So he started for them. So he will be very quick indeed. Uh, and second at the moment is Team 30, which is RJ Motorsport 2, uh, which is started by Leon Morrell. Third at the moment is number 15, Raw Motorsports, Rob's Rongens. Uh, 
and that's been started by uh, driver uh, A, which is uh, Chris Preen. So he is out there at the moment as we are watching the 26 car, which is the Mini Kiev Swan. Uh, Keith is it who had that spin earlier on in his Mini Clubman? Uh, he did indeed. Uh, top seven cars at the moment all running in Class D. Capture Motorsport in eighth are leading in Class B at the moment. This is all on scratch, of course. Uh, Class A is the Run Baby Run team, the number 10 squad. Uh, and another screech of tyres there, distracting me momentarily. Uh, the last of the classes, uh, well, of course, was Class C. There is only one entrance in Class C, so that should make your predictions at home uh, a little bit easier with regards to that class. Uh, and that is the St Winifred School uh, combo uh, down in 59th place overall. But the uh, only outright scratch trophy that is handed out is for the overall win within the classes it's all about the handicap for which ian uh, we should hopefully get was it half hourly bulletins it was certainly half hourly maybe hourly but we'll keep bringing it up to that live timing for people that want it if you go to 750 motor club website on your phone you'll see a banner which i think initially says live stream but scroll that banner across and you'll find the link to the live timing for those of you that are struggling to find it you've also got on your screens for those of you watching the live stream that the, the, the uh, live positions scrolling through as well uh, so there we are uh, you can see one of the BMW Z4 teams there that is uh, team I think that's 53A so I think that's uh, Kieran Power that we saw there in his BMW uh, Z4 at the moment uh, the other quick way to the live time is the resultslive.co.uk as well. You can find it via the resultslive.co.uk. Right, five hours and 32 minutes and 34 seconds left to go. Uh, classes at the moment on scratch, although it's really handicapped that matters. Uh, the first non-class decoy is that Capture Motorsport car. That had that penalty, though, for uh, an out-of-position start, effectively. That's Class B. That's the Class A cars at the moment is Run Baby Run, which is the Anton Land and Cyana out there at the moment and in class C we only have the St Winifred School choir team in that class which is in that class by dint of uh, Nick Van Tyler getting some slicks for his MX-5 I believe so so far it's been fairly calm we've seen a couple of spins Andy but no major dramas today yeah people uh, given the tricky conditions actually that's fairly impressive isn't it because uh, it's uh, very greasy out there. I think in these conditions, drivers often are less comfortable than they would be in full wet conditions. So, uh, yeah, that plus the fact they were all bunched up at the start and the uh, difference in pace between everybody. Uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised to see such a clean start to the race. But uh, as the race goes on and drivers get uh, a bit more tired and uh, perhaps they have the best out of their tyres, we might start to see uh, a few more slip-ups. But uh, right now, nice and clean. And everyone's sort of finding their position in the queue so to speak, it eventually will uh, slip into a position where you're running the same sort of pace as those around you, you get engaged in your own little private battles, and uh, as long as you're keeping an eye out for traffic, be that faster traffic or slower traffic, uh, you should be able to uh, to keep out of trouble. Uh, and I suppose some teams perhaps will be looking towards the first pit stops. How soon do we expect to see the uh, first uh, handover in the pit lane? Yeah, well, it, well of course, that will largely depend on... Uh, fuel tank capacity, that will be a big consideration for a, a lot of teams. Some might only be able to go for half an hour or so, some might be able to go for an hour and a half or more, potentially those that are more equipped for uh, endurance racing. But a lot of these drivers and cars are more used to doing sprint races week in and, and week out, 20 minute races, 15 minute races, that kind of thing. So this is quite a departure for them and unless they've modified the car to carry a larger tank, then, uh, then they'll have to stop possibly relatively often. Yes, and uh, that will, in, in and of itself, have an effect, I'm sure, on the end result. Those who have laps to gain back uh, don't want to be spending that much time in the pit lane, but I suspect some of those cars will be amongst those with the uh, smallest fuel capacity, so perhaps more uh, driver and car changes to be done. Uh, you lose comparatively little time, though, through a pit stop in the Burkett because you don't actually have to stop in your pit bay, service a car, get yes. one driver in, one driver out. It's all done a little bit more smoothly than that, in theory. Yes, that's right. So when you decide that the time is right to uh, swap your drivers over, uh, you'll bring in the car that is going to come into the pit lane that will drive past your pit garage and once it's driven past you can then get your next car out of the garage down towards the pit lane exit and out onto the uh, circuit first time we've seen that jaguar team today andy 
Indeed so, yes. The uh, number 20 squad running a little bit wide there out of the uh, right-hander uh, at uh, Village. The Growling Pussy team, Rodney Frost, Chris Boone, Lawrence Copper, Dan Stewart, Andrew Harper and Sam Clark uh, sharing their team of Jaguars. Good to see the Jags out there on track and uh, one of the older cars in the field, actually. Yeah, hairy moment for them, wasn't it? Good to say uh, that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, get that out of the way. <laughs> uh, down towards Brooklyn's, uh, they go. We've got the Ginetta in there as well. We've got the Area Motorsport Golf in there. And uh, one of the Civics as well. So a busy old circuit at uh, Luffield heading through towards Woodcut Corner to complete another lap. And there is the number 20 team heading towards uh, the end of its lap as well. And what position is that running in at the moment, actually? Uh, scrolling down yet yeah, in uh, 40, no, 39th, having made up a position on that lap, actually got ahead of the DH Racing uh, Civic on that lap. Uh, so the Growling Pussy is up to 39th. And it's Sam Clark in his Jaguar XJS who's just made that move and uh, looking to try and make some further ground. That's another car that will uh, prefer the drier weather that we hope is incoming. Rear wheel drive, lots of power difficult to get all of that power down. Behind him though, uh, another all Honda Civic strap, that is uh, 21A uh, holding trap position right now. Joe Jessup's Honda Civic uh, right behind 58B uh, which is the Army sports car racing car of Blair Thompson. That is also for uh, overall position. Uh, lots of Honda Civics out there, running to a couple of different sets of regulations but uh, all of them reasonably evenly matched. Now we're going to get a move here down towards Stowe Corner no, not quite close enough in the end. Yep, so you've got the uh, Tegiwa Type R trophy car of uh, Joe Jessup, who's one of the front runners in that championship this year, multiple race winner, and Blair Thompson, who campaigns his car usually in the uh, Armed Forces Race Challenge, racing for the Army Sports Car Racing Team, and we heard early on from the RAF team Whoops. as around goes the Jag, just in front of these cars, keeps it out of the gravel trap, unfortunately, so that's lost a, probably a couple of positions there for... Um, the Jaguar having made up to 39th on the previous lap, it does get back underway. I've lost perhaps three or four places by the looks of it. Uh, no real damage done. But yes, I was just saying that the uh, Army and the Navy and the RAF have got their own inter-service uh, competition going on as well and uh, pride at stake amongst the, uh, the various armed forces members and, uh, and veterans as well. Yes, uh, that part of the circuit really is catching people out, isn't it? it? It did appear to be the wettest area of the circuit when they were coming round on the uh, formation lap, I noticed, and uh, perhaps just taking a bit longer to uh, grip up down at Vale and Club. It's a tricky little change of direction, relatively low speed as well, so any cars that do have uh, a bit of downforce built into them are not really benefiting from it there. And uh, that perhaps explains why we're seeing a few of them slip up at that particular part of the track. but. Uh, often the way isn't it it's we talk a lot about the high speed corners being a challenge here at silverstone it's often those tight fiddly sections uh, that can be the most troublesome that's right yes uh, especially with so much traffic to yeah. uh, to deal with as well uh, so we are watching cars head down the uh, wellington straight into brooklands option on the full grand prix circuit here and it is the, the the same circuit same layout that's used these days as for the grand prix for a few years we use the historic version with the faster section of Vail, but it is now the same circuit as is used for the uh, for the British Grand Prix and most of the racing here on the Silverstone uh, Grand Prix circuit. Blue flags being waved by our marshals, and of course that's a very important part of the Burkitt Relay race with such a wide variety of lap speeds uh, as well. So many, many thanks to all of the marshals for their contribution to uh, to this weekend's uh, activities. Particularly, let's just take a moment to uh, pay tribute to Pete Harding, who's the Chief Marshal of the 750 Motor Club. Uh, he's been in it for a long time, he's been a Marshal for 51 years, and uh, this is his last meeting in his role as Chief Marshal of the 750 Motor Club, which he's been doing after 25 years. So, uh, many, many thanks for everything that Peter Harding has done for the 750 Motor Club over the years. He's uh, been a tremendous servant to the club, and I'm sure we'll still see him around, but uh, Thank you, Pete, for everything that you've done for the 750 Motor Club. I second that. Uh, right, we've had some shuffling around in Class B uh, since we last checked in on them. The last time we checked, it was Capture Motorsport, number 16, uh, who were leading that class, uh, that the uh, 16C car, uh, Mark Rice's Cupra. Um, 
It's now a class being led by Dark Side Motorsport in ninth place overall, number 48, second for Area, and third for Triple A's Racing's BMW. So down into fourth place in class now uh, for Capture Motorsport. So a bit of shuffling going on there in class B. Uh, meanwhile, what news from the pit lane? Well, guys, uh, yes, we're in, uh, I'm, I'm in uh, pit 4A, where the uh, Doris NWH team is uh, based. A little bit of a um, mix up with the drivers. Right, for, the, for those on the comms, Roger Bromley is B and D, Shane Stoneley is E, Mark Williams is F and A, and Ryan Harper Ellum is C, and they're all in SR3s. Yeah, it's rather confusing because uh, that they're sharing cars and two drivers have qualified the same car, if that makes some sense. But at the moment, we've got car A here, which is Mark Williams, all ready to go out and uh, take over the car that's currently running at the moment. So i uh, hand you back to the uh, commentary team, who have uh, now been fully updated on uh, what the, the letters for each driver is for Team 14. Thank you very much indeed. Lewis Beale's down there, and we'll hear much more from Lewis as this race goes on. We saw another of the Radical teams just go through. I think that was Alistair Smart in the RJ Motorsport 1 number 29 car. He's in sixth position overall at the moment, and actually shortly to be lapped by the cars in second and third, which I think have swapped around on this lap. I think they have. That's Royal Motorsport into second place, I believe. So the number 15 Radical, uh, which had been about five or six seconds behind RJ Motorsport two a couple of laps ago, uh, closing in very suddenly and managing to uh, get the place. Could be that maybe that's the, the setup on the number 15 Radical starting to come to the fore. Now it is drying out. If they went for uh, a slightly drier setup on that car, then uh, that uh, perhaps would explain the uh, the fact they're getting more and more competitive. That's a, a luxury you have in the Burke that you wouldn't normally have, I suppose, ordinarily in a wet to dry race where you're stuck in the same car. You have to gamble on one setup or the other, whereas here you can have one car on a wet setup, send them out for the first stint, have another one waiting with a dry setup and send them out, send them out onto the track if it ever dries out. Saw so a green light flashing on the exit of club there, which might have indicated that someone had spun just before the, the, the cars came into our shot, but it, the green flag or the green light has stopped flashing, so I think that incident has cleared, whatever it may be. Just a reminder, there's 22 minutes left of the first hour, so you've got 22 minutes left to get your predictions, and if you want to take part in the predictions competition on winner 750 Motor Club goodie bag and whatever contents that may include, we need from you the scratch race winner, the handicap race winner, and the A, B, C and D handicap winners as well. Here's the battle for second place though on screen uh, at the moment. At the moment it is the 15A car that is there in second place, which is Chris Preen, just ahead of uh, Leon Morel, uh, very much uh, championship contender and class championship winner this season in the uh, Bike Sports Championship. He's there in third position. They are about half a minute or so behind the leading number 14 team at the moment with Ryan harper Bellum out for Doris NWH. And so it's a battle between these two and they're then well ahead of the car in fourth position which is the Simon Green Motorsport car which I think at the moment is Kevin Clark out there for, the, uh, for, the, for that BMW and Mazda and Fiesta based team. Worth pointing out that as far as the handicap is concerned, number 14 and number 30 both get one lap credit, whereas 15 does not. So uh, they have that slight advantage over the uh, uh, their opponents within the Radicals in the handicap race. Now, uh, obviously over six hours, it looks quite likely that they might make that uh, that lap up. But uh, yeah, number 14 uh, with a one lap credit and seemingly uh, with a pace advantage as well. Uh, the other thing to, to note, of course, is that the handicaps may be revised and be visited as the base goes on. If the uh, handicapper, Charles Greenbridge, in charge of all of this, uh, finds that the... gauge the handicap, uh, you know, just one car from each team handicapping them all against each other would be tricky. Most teams have at least four, sometimes five or six different cars with different drivers in them as well. So it's not an easy task and uh, they actually do a very good job of getting it as close to perfect as they do before the race even starts. Uh, absolutely right. It's good then, just in the background of the shot to see a good number of spectators watching from the BRDC uh, grandstand. So if you're at the circuit, that's a very good place to to watch from head over to that that is open to the general public today 
So you can head over that. I'm sure we'll be packed to the rafters next weekend for the Walt Hayes Trophy here at Silverton, the big Formula Ford 1600 knockout event, which uh, I'm looking forward to as well, back here in my journalistic capacity. Uh, and here we've got a radical being lapped. So that's Alistair Smart, I think, going to be lapped in his PR6 by yep, the two uh, second and third place radicals have gone past him. Well, we're about to go past him now. Indeed so. That car started reasonably well on the grid, didn't it? But uh, dropping down slightly now. Uh, but again, I would imagine the handicap might well save them slightly. That's only one lap that they've lost, and we are 40 minutes into the race. So already teams will start to have an idea of how in contention they are uh, as far as the handicap result is concerned. If they've lost two laps and they have a 12-lap credit, for example, then they'll be feeling pretty good about their chances right now. Uh, but uh, as Ian was saying, that can all change as the race goes on. A 34-second lead then for the Doris NWH Radical out in front uh, from this reasonably tight battle that's going on for second place. It is still Darkside Motorsport who lead in Class B right now. And they've got a very healthy lead, actually. Area Motorsport back into second place within that class now. Uh, but it looks as though they are... Um, the best part of half a minute or more behind them. Andy, do you think this event is quite mad? Uh, just a little, yes. Do you think it'd be even madder if they let F1000 cars take part in it? Blimey. That's what Tom Gadd is suggesting, and he's an <laughs> F1000 driver. Um, yeah, OK, whatever. Uh, 42C um, is uh, Mike Nash. I think that's the second time we've seen him have a moment during the course of this race. Sorry to rub that in, Mike, but... Uh, <laughs> But there we go. Uh, also good to see the Craig Cook's watching along. Uh, hi, Craig. Good to have worked with you on Mighty Mini Commentary during the course of this year as well. That Z4 looked a little bit sideways, didn't it? Uh, yes, it's not the only one. They're starting now to explore the limits of Adesian. It's still having a moment coming around the next corner. Meanwhile, side by side for second place, and that's RJ Motorsport on the inside line, and they're radical, dicing through traffic, and they're back into P2, but they almost have contact with the BMW coming out of Woodco Corner. Uh, that was rather close, Ian. It certainly was, and it's these uh, sort of heart-in-the-mouth moments that uh, can make or break uh, the, the burkit for a team, really. Um, Clearly, uh, you don't want to have an incident, you don't want to have an accident. You do have that insurance policy if you've got some more cars in the garage, but nevertheless, it doesn't help if you have, have an incident. Looks like there's a different car out now for Team 10, which is Run Baby Run. Just trying to work out who that is. I think that's probably Colin Benham out now in his CB Fury. He's taken over from Anton Landon and those sports specials cars. Uh, can they do relatively short stints, Andy? Uh, yes, the Radicals having some real trouble getting past these BMWs because the Beamers are very quick down the straights and then they're very big, so they're sort of blocking the road through the corners. You can see there's not a lot to choose performance-wise down the hangar straight. It has allowed uh, Royal Motorsport to reclaim second position there, that moment for RJ Motorsport at Woodcote costing them. It's worth mentioning that those are the cars in fourth and fifth position as well, ah. being lapped by the cars in second and third place. Uh, and they're all in class D. Um, uh, that's based on, I think, slick tyres that they'll be running. As up the inside, there goes the number 30 car. So RJ Motorsport 2 has got back through, I think, ahead of number 15. So it's Chris Preen that's lost out there. They go past one of the more humble uh, BMWs. That's the car uh, that's shared normally in Club Enduro by Hazen Subiano, the Canic Racing uh, entry number 67. But yes, yeah, second and third have now lapped fourth and fifth. And so that means we've only got three cars, therefore, on the lead lap. However, Simon Green Motorsport number 56, who are running fourth, have 22 credit laps. So actually, you would expect them to lose some laps. Off there goes the number 30. That's another change for second place. That's about the third on this lap alone. And Raw Motorsport back into P2. They'd briefly uh, fallen back behind the RJ Motorsport uh, Radical, which slipped off at Village, but thankfully gets going again. But uh, yes, right now, as it stands, the handicap system suiting Simon Green Motorsport down to the ground. They've lost one lap in the first 45 minutes, but they can afford to lose another 20 or more as the race goes on. Uh, as for uh, number 12, uh, which is the uh, Prep and Play G Sport, if I say that one, uh, car running in fifth position, they've got 12 credit laps, so they're uh, actually really should be a, a little bit quicker than the 56 car with which they're battling. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, you've not just got to think about their positions relative to the Radicals, though. It's got everyone else who's yes. got a different number of credit <laughs> laps. Uh, and we'll get a handicap update at, at some point. As and when we do, we'll... Uh, We'll uh, let you know what the uh, the latest state of play uh, is on handicap, but uh, but probably not quite there at this point yet. And we're still very early into the race, of course, as well. So it's still Team 14 that are out in front by 43 seconds now. Ryan Harper, Ellum, 
at the wheel of the Doris NWH team. That's the three radical teams, therefore, on the lead lap at the moment. That is the 16 car, 16C. So that's still Mark Grice out there in the Cooper TCR. That car is now well down the order, I think. I'm at 12th position. I think it may have had to serve a penalty. I'm not completely sure on that. Did have that stop go. Yeah, it, yeah. So, uh, so that is fully dropped them a little bit down the order from there where they would have been. It was a rather bizarre start to the race as far as that car was concerned. That's the Capture Motorsport uh, Cupra TCR. Yes, I had forgotten about that penalty though. Um, so that explains why they dropped out of the lead at one point. Yeah. They were down to about fourth or fifth in class. Uh, they're now back into a class podium as it stands, but they were leading class B uh, before that uh, penalty, which brought Darkside Motorsport in ninth position uh, up into first in class. The squabbling BMWs come through and almost a big spin again down at Club Corner uh, for car 12A. That was uh, Russell Dack in the BMW, and he has been getting more and more wayward by the lap. Yeah, that's the Prep and Lay G Sport uh, entered car. And we've got here, oh, some, oh, is that right? there's a Boxster and an MR2 together there. That definitely <laughs> will confuse me, won't it? Uh, both of them together on track. Uh, and yes, that, that Russell Duck is quite low, isn't he, in that, uh, that, that BMW? I'm just wondering if the, uh, I imagine he started the race on wet tyres and it's now going away from those conditions, isn't it, I would think, as we, uh, as we come towards the end of the first hour uh, of the race. Yes, although it's not yet dry enough, I would say, for slick. So I think he's going to be stuck with these tyres and perhaps the next car that goes out on track will also be stuck uh, on wet tyres that are likely to overheat. These are the worst conditions, really, for those cars which do have a choice between slicks and wet, whereas, again, some of those in the other classes that run on treaded tyres, they don't have to worry about that. That's a headache that uh, only really applies to the cars that have the option of running on slicks. When do you change over? And it might at some point lead to an extra unplanned pit stop for those teams. Yeah, I'm not sure we've got to the position where we've had uh, too many cars come into the pits at this stage with sort of mechanical issues. We've certainly not heard anything from from Lewis Beals at this point. I can see one of the, a couple of caterers, as I say, that just come past our, our window here. Uh, and the uh, 56 Simon Green BMW was in as well, I think. OK, so that's the car which uh, Kevin Clark was in. So Kevin Clark into the pits after three quarters of an hour or so. So they get another car in place. So that was the car that's in fourth position. You can see on screen now it's it's dropped to, um, to sixth place. Up into fourth place actually has gone the 29 car now. Uh, of Alistair Smart, so although he is a, a lap down, he is uh, up into to fourth position overall. For those of you watching the live time of the live stream, I should say, you can see the different classes depicted by the different colours. So class D is green, it's uh, red for uh, class uh, B, uh, Dark Side Motorsport leading that class, and class A is the blue colour, and that at the moment is led by Run Baby Run Team 10 in 15th position overall. I'm not yet sure what uh, colour uh, class C is for the one and only entry in Class C. There we are, St. Winifred School. Well, they're, the, they're the dark blue square, and they're 58th at the moment. They are, and uh, there Scott Leach's Mazda MX-5 heads through with his distinctive blue-yellow livery with the tongue sticking out of the front of it. And uh, Scott uh, being passed by a couple of the quicker cars here, Capture Motorsport, one of them, uh, who uh, are still running third in Class B. Uh, but they are catching Area Motorsport, I think, aren't they? The number 51 car. Uh, so there you can see the Cupra coming towards us, but not that much further up the road is a Golf run by uh, Area Motorsport, who were my pick for a Class B win by okay. the time the day was out. They're running second at the moment, but I think about to come under pressure for that place. Yeah, looks like uh, that, that could be... The case, good to see these uh, MX-5s having a little scrap together. And yes, yeah, Scott Leach, that this must be the most instantly recognisable car in club racing, I would think, with the uh, with the tongue sticking out the, the front of it. And he's had that livery for years and years now, hasn't he? Um, and uh, I'm very glad he continues to race with it because it means that uh, that we can spot him coming up from a long way off. And he's just in battle with 70E at the moment. So uh, Paul Barnard in the uh, his MX-5. That's the car that we often see out in the Five Club Racing MX-5 Cup, part of the regular roster of uh, 750 Motor Club Championships. I think that's shared with Mary Barnard uh, for the purpose of today's uh, relay race. And they're making their way around uh, Luffield at the moment to complete another lap here. That's a, uh, an ever-brightening silver. So look at the 
looking at the sky there, there's a bit more brightness in it now. Feel a bit of warmth through our commentary box window as well. It's uh, actually forecast to get up to about 19 or 20 degrees later on, which for, for, for the end of October is really quite mis remarkable, isn't it? Uh, comments, there's not too many Clios taking part in the Burkett this year, but I think Ollie waned. Uh, he is, uh, is driving one. Uh, and uh, we're on board now with 31D, aren't we? So that is the Don't Hang About car of Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Ederson there. And the Rogue Arrive and Drive MR2. Yeah, we see Malcolm out in BMWs quite often, don't we? But uh, an MR2 for him this weekend. And uh, the MR2s always look a lot of fun to drive, don't they? And really, really well balanced. Uh, nice performance as well. They're decent power underneath the uh, hood. But uh, going through the high-speed right-hander there at, uh, at Abbey Corner, the car looked beautifully balanced. Gets uh, blasted past by the Radicals, who, by the way, have changed positions again now for second place. That's changing almost by the lap uh, with the RJ Motorsport 2 back ahead of Royal Motorsports for second overall. Uh, but uh, yes, the little MR2 going well, and that's a team, I think, exclusively of MR2s, isn't it? Uh, with some pretty experienced MR2 peddlers in it, so they should be uh, competitive within their class. Yeah, and Malcolm, of course, does a lot of driver coaching as well. Uh, uh, that's what uh, he, he's, he's known for, and uh, good to see him competing in the Burkitt Relay, as he often has done down the years. There's that area motorsport golf, the Jonathan Packer car. Uh, which is in 11th position beside Darkside Motorsport in Class B on scratch at the moment. There are a couple of places ahead of him. I think it probably is still um, uh, Scott Parkin that's out for, for the Darkside team. Uh, he started his golf uh, TDI. Yes, Scott uh, made his debut in the Fun Cup Endurance Championship a couple of weeks ago. Was very, very rapid at uh, Donington Park. So uh, Scott, a very handy peddler, uh, and that uh, explains why he's leading the class, benefiting, of course, from that penalty for Capture Motorsport, who on the previous lap were uh, about six seconds quicker than Area Motorsports ahead of them. The gap was 10 seconds at the start of the lap. So Jonathan Packer in that white and blue uh, Area Motorsport VW Golf that we just saw, uh, within another lap or half a lap maybe, might be under pressure for second place in class we've got a wayward caterham uh, down at the vale and uh, when it gets going we'll see the number it is 57 d uh, which would make that the chris buckley caterham seven uh, who has gone around down at the vale club area of the circuit yep so seven minutes to go of this first hour of the race uh, which is as yet touch wood been uninterrupted uh, by uh, by safety cars. There we can see another of the Caterhams. That's 23D. Uh, so it's Mazda 7, of course, isn't it? That's Martin Shelton's Mazda 7. Uh, and Mazda 7s, of course, have their own championship with the uh, with the 750 Motor Club as well. Uh, and there's also a, uh, a foundation uh, package offered with Mazda 7s for next year as well. So if you're in, interested in getting involved in that, it's a very good way of going racing. I think it'll be £25,000 for the car and everything you need for the season split between two drivers doing seven races each during the course of the year. So that's something that is well worth looking at as well. And there's Team 13 and that's Driver B. So that's Club Racing UK. And it's Dan Thackeray out there at the moment in the Civic. Yeah, Dan who narrowly missed out on the Civic Cup Championship a week ago, less than a week ago actually at Snetterton in what was a very dramatic championship decider. That car looking a bit more uh, neat and tidy than it did the last time I saw it when it was getting uh, biffed and bashed around the Snetterton 200 circuit a little bit. But Dan Thackeray uh, having a really good season of racing this year and uh, racing again here in the Burkett in one of many, many Honda Civics out on circuit. Dives up the inside of one of the uh, K-trips there down the Lewis Hamilton Strait, past the new hotel, which offers uh, some rather spectacular views of that part of the circuit. So I'm told, I doubt I'll ever get to experience that in person here. Oh. Well, is the 750 Motor Club uh, paycheck not sufficient for that? Uh, well, no, that, we do need to have that chat later, <laughs> I think. Uh, so, yes, that would be very interesting to, to see the, uh, to the views from there. I'm sure if you uh, are able to to book a room, you, you, you'll uh, enjoy and appreciate being uh, right at the heart of the action. Uh, yes, that's very much a new addition to uh, Silverstone in the last few months. So we are coming towards the end of the first hour. Here's some of the, uh, the leading cars on scratch coming through. Again, our second and third place cars, RJ Motorsports 2, uh, ahead of the 15 car, which is the Royal Motorsport Rob's Rongens car. Tris Preen uh, still out there with, uh, in 15A. 
Uh, and uh, they're, they're not quite jousting for position between each other. They've got some back markers between them. They've just gone past the uh, number 54 Alpha Giulietta being driven by Barry McMahon, who's an interloper somewhat in Z Cars 3, a team that's otherwise comprised of BMW Z4s. But always nice to have an Alpha on the grid, Andy. It is. I'm a big fan of Alphas, especially the Giulietta, actually. I almost bought one a few years ago, and uh, a very, very nice car it is indeed. Uh, Alpha shaking off some of their uh, reputation for being a little less uh, reliable than other manufacturers as well these days. So I'm uh, fully confident that car will run trouble free for the uh, rest of its stint. Uh, but yeah, Barry McMahon, very experienced Alpha pedal. He's raced a few different Alphas over the years and uh, moving into the, uh, the newer Giulietta of late. And there you can see it with the white, black and green livery just trying to find a way around the outside there of the 58B on the Civic of Blair Thompson. Yep, indeed. So uh, that's... Uh the Civics seem to sort of clump themselves together, don't they? they often seem to be found in uh, in twos or threes, having uh, little battles between themselves. Here they are as they come uh, through uh, Village and onto the uh, Wellington Strait and under the pedestrian bridge and into Brooklands that they will go once again past the Brooklands Grandstand and the BRDC Clubhouse. The 58 car, as you say, is for uh, Blair Thompson. 58A, uh, sharing that uh, team with uh, Thomas Sykes and Alex Rivett and Douglas Inglis and Ben Gundry. And into the pits there comes 28A. That will be for a driver change. That's Motion Motorsport 2, Samuel Dennis coming in and he'll hand over to either Justin Roberts or Matt Higgins. Uh, yes, quite a lot of cars from that group uh, heading for the pit lane. Of course, we're almost at the one hour mark, so uh, many teams will have set that one hour target as their um, first pit stop for the race. They'll perhaps be aiming for uh, four pit stops, five pit stops even, uh, throughout the course of the, uh, the six hours of racing. We're about to get that change for second in Class B, Capture Motorsport of Court Area Motorsport now. Uh, that's the number 51 gold for the number 16 Cupra and uh, those two virtually nose to tail actually as they came across the line uh, last time around but the, uh, the leader in that class still dark side motorsport I think has the best part of a lap on those two in fact there is the golf coming out of Luffield and well where is the Cupra has it gone through already I suspect it may have done here it may well have done. Uh, two ye yellow flags down there at Cops as well. Two minutes, by the way, to get your predictions in. If you're thinking about it on the uh, on the YouTube comments, get your predictions in shortly. Otherwise, they they won't count. We will not be eligible for the 750 Most Club goodie bag, whatever it is that's in it. Green flag on the exit of Cops. I can see ah. a vehicle heading towards the scene of the incident. So it looks like someone needs to be recovered, and that will mean there's a team in the pit somewhere thinking. I wonder where my driver's gone. He's not come round yet. Shall I get another car out in his stead or her stead? Um, and that's the decision you have to make when you're the team manager. You take the gamble on getting another car out and run the risk of having two cars on track at the same time. And if that happens, none of those laps count. Neither of them count. So uh, you lose ground because of that. Yeah, I would argue it's, it's better to err on the side of caution, though. Even if you end up losing a lap, the yeah. chances are you know roughly what lap times your car should be doing. If it's more than 30 seconds or so late, then uh, there is a very good chance it's not going to come round at all. So, um, yeah, difficult to know there. It's a big old circuit. They don't exactly have spotters at every corner. And uh, so difficult to know exactly what's happened should your car be uh, late on arrival at the finish line. We just saw a glimpse of our race leader, the, the lesser sighted race leader, really, in the course of this race. That's the Doris NWH car, Ryan Harper Ellen. There he is, just heading through uh, through the veil now, leading this race by seven seconds shy of a minute as things stand, uh, with uh, five hours uh, gone, or five hours to go, one hour gone, uh, very nearly. Uh, as we come up to the five hour mile, let's do a quick rundown on the top ten on scratch. We'll give you the handicap positions in a bit, but it is Doris NWH uh, leading in car 14. 24 laps in the book. They lead by 53 seconds as car 65B has come to hold. That was that's, a, that's not the car that was at COPS, so that's the a car of Sam Callahan, unfortunately, that's come to a stop uh, down there, the former X Factor star. Uh, but to carry on with the top 10, 14 Doris NWH, 30 RJ Motorsport 2, 15 Royal Motorsports, Rob's Rongans, 
12, Prep and Lane, G Sport. Fifth, number 29, RJ Motorsport 1. Sixth, number 36, Get to the Chopper. Seventh, number 48, Darkside Motorsport. Eighth, number 32, Data Motorsport. Ninth, number 56, Simon Green Motorsport. And tenth, number 16, Capture Motorsport. And with that, I'll leave it with you, Andy, and then it'll be Josh Barron. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ian. Go and take a well-earned break, and uh, we'll be hearing from you again later on in the race. Just uh, caught a glimpse of that Capture Motorsport car, just to clear that up. They have got ahead of Area Motorsport now, and they are going very quickly. Two minutes 32 uh, was their last lap, lap time. That's quite a bit quicker uh, than most of the cars ahead, so uh, should be able to gain a few more places. But they have. They're into eighth place overall now, uh, and their gap to... Uh, the class leader's dark side motorsport around about 15 seconds or so. So that gap uh, likely to uh, keep on creeping down, you would say. That Cupra looking strong. There is Jonathan Packer about to go another lap down to the race leader uh, who heads through Maggots and Beckett's now on uh, an increasingly drying circuit. Um, lap times not necessarily indicating that now because of traffic, but the fastest lap of the race set by Ryan Harper Allen uh, was a 2 minutes 17.95. Uh, set a little bit earlier on, but to prove the point about traffic and how it interrupts your race, his previous lap was a 2.25, so about eight seconds slower uh, than the fastest lap of the race that he set earlier on. It's very, very difficult, near impossible, really, uh, to be consistent in a race like this. It's something that Lewis Beals was telling us about before uh, the race began. The, the race will likely be won by the team who is most consistent uh, in the traffic, and it's about banking those laps, logging those laps, not losing five seconds here, six seconds there in a group of traffic, uh, and of course, crucially, staying out of trouble. Uh, Andy McEwen now in the commentary box, Josh Barrett alongside me uh, for this uh, next stint. And Josh, uh, whilst we've been covering all of the action on track, I'd imagine you've been soaking up some of the atmosphere out in the pit lane. Yeah, well, after I did my grid walk, I met um, a mother and her child who are here at Silverstone for their first ever race meeting. Wow. So uh, hopefully they're enjoying uh, their time here. They were amazed at all the access you can get uh, on a meeting like this. And there's lots of spectators who went to COPS, watched a bit of their. There's a lot of people, there's 50 odd people around this Cops, this Cops Corner, so it's great to see um, for the, those of you watching here today at Silverstone. I uh, hope you're enjoying this uh, unique motor race, uh, which has so much history. How are you finding it, Andy? Uh, yeah, I think I'm following it. We're, we're an hour in and I'm not completely lost yet, which is uh, which is good news. Uh, so we've got a slow Lotus, that appears, coming out Look. onto the Lewis Hamilton straight, Josh. Looks a bit like Ben McCauley's uh, car. Yeah. Or possibly, but it's certainly not going the speed it should be, is it? Um, that car. So, yeah, 43B possibly, if it is Ben, uh, regular in the Road Sports uh, series. That's one of the 750 Mo Club Random Racers uh, team's cars. Let's uh, head downstairs, though, to Lewis Bills, who's down in the RJ Motorsport garage. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm down here in pit 7C with Alistair Smart. Alistair, you started the race uh, for the RJ Motorsport 1 team. What are conditions like? Uh, very greasy for me. Um, I've got quite a light, uh, ran a cool, the PR6. So uh, cornering, very greasy, very slippery. Uh, drying line out there, back straight, had a dry line emerging. So not long, I don't think, for dries. So well, that was your first, didn't you? going to do a second one in the dry, hopefully? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the PR6, that's the centre-mounted seat car, isn't it, from Radical? Yeah, correct. Centre-mounted, um, slightly lighter than the uh, heavier SR3s and SR8s, um, but very good in the, in the uh, twisty stuff. Uh, but the power circuit here is suited to the bigger cars. So, uh, not, 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 the, not the greatest stint, but uh, you think you could do better later on the dry? Well, it's a long race, and we had Lady Luck on our side last year and managed to win, so we'll see. We'll see where we go. And who's in the car? Who's out for you at the moment? Uh, Wade is out there at the moment, quick driver, uh, so I think when he gets in his stride, uh, he should hopefully catch up the uh, groups in front. OK, Alistair, thanks very much, and good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Lewis Beals, uh, roaming around the pit lane for the entire race, I believe, trying to uh, find out the late-breaking stories. Been reasonably quiet down in pit lane so far, Josh. Uh, a handful of pit stops, of course, as we got to the end of the first hour, but uh, so far, reliability doesn't seem to be a huge issue. Sam Callahan, uh, one of the only ones that we've seen, really, stopping out on track. And even if you do have a reliability problem, there's more cars in the garage to carry on. But something that we've noticed over the years is teams bring less cars. There's sort of three or four cars for most teams nowadays. 
uh, compared to the six cars. That means you've got to have better reliability because generally are a bit more uh, reliable than they used to be. That bad of a second continuing, isn't it? You've been talking about that for most of the race, and that looks like they uh, are about to put a second lap, aren't they, on that RJ Motorsport car? We just heard that Wade Eastwood uh, is out there now. Uh, when I was before I came over, Andy, the majority of teams looking like they're going to put wets on the next car. Uh, although Raw Motorsport, I noticed, had wets and slicks, no <laughs> tyres on the car. But otherwise, generally, and we heard there from Alistair, he said he thinks at the moment it's still wets, but that switchover is going to happen pretty soon. Um, so you've got that battle there, which is uh, Leon Morrell, isn't it? The uh, champion of the Bike Sports Championship last season, who's uh, just ahead of the Raw Motorsports uh, team. And uh, they're working their way um, towards the end of the Grand Prix loop. But they're a minute behind the leader. Uh, that's Ryan Harper Ellum, isn't it? You can tell that Ryan's a works radical driver, can't you? As he's pulled away a minute. He's been racing in LMP3 cars this year as well. Um, so he's showing all this experience, Andy, in these tricky conditions as the radical calls go either side of the traffic. Oh, blimey, that was close coming through Brooklands, and they continue to go either side of the traffic. The number 30 car running, second place, remember, uh, on that outside line. Uh, one of the uh, stories we've been following is that the number 15 radical of uh, Raw Motorsport that was anticipated to be the quicker because that's been given no credit laps, whereas all of the other cars out there have at least one credit lap. So the other radicals, uh, for example, 14 and 50, 14 and 30, excuse me, benefiting from the handicap. But of course, Ryan Harper Adams in that leading car who might be the quicker driver, although he's got Shane Stoney in that team, who's a former Burkitt winner. Uh, you've got Mark Williams, he's quite new to racing, then Roger Bromley, who's returning to racing. Um, after being a team manager for the team um, for the last year or so. So potentially Ryan Harper and the quicker driver, but that's quite a, that is a very good team of drivers uh, for sure. So Raw Motorsport, you say it's got Chris Preen in, I think, at the moment, who's pretty quick himself. He finished sixth this year uh, in the Radical Challenge Championship, which is very competitive. Uh, you've got John McLeod in there, Ben Stone as well. Um, John McLeod, a former winner of this event. So... Uh, interesting how the handicap is put there. But for the Radical team, they generally don't care about the handicap. They're here to win the race on scratch. So they're normally not uh, too bothered about how that um, goes. But that battle of a second continues, doesn't it? Between Leon Morel, they're in a yellow flag zone here, I think. So they can't pass the traffic just yet. Um, but that battle continuing between Leon Morel and Chris Preen. But uh, we ride on board you know, with uh, Jonathan Packer, potentially still in a yellow flag zone, which makes me wonder if uh, we've got more than just yellow flags at this point. Yes, because that did look rather like safety car speed. I'm trying to spot Marshall's <laughs> post. No, safety car. We are going safety car for the first time. So I turn up and it goes wrong. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, an hour and eight minutes in and uh, racing stops, unfortunately, but Josh. But to, to note for this race, the safety car doesn't have to pick the leader up. The safety no. car will go out there whenever is safe. So depending on which part of the train you're on, you might gain or lose. But equally, if you're the back of the train, you're back of a 70-car train. So it doesn't make such a big uh, difference, really. Uh, but this is a good point to come in and make a pit stop. And I suspect those who haven't, which include our top three, will probably do that. So the uh, teams will be having their second drivers... Uh, ready in their cars and then I suspect the pit lane will get uh, quite busy and, and of course with a team that's presumably got a car stuck out on track they'll be looking at sending uh, their next car uh, onto the road pretty soon and just looking at the screens there yeah 39 uh, 25, so 25, the three Amigos have had a problem, the Whit Tubble winners yeah. of this event, they've dropped right to the back, so they're out of handicap really already, um, because they've got, they got some quicker cars this year, and their last lap was 11 minutes, so that suggests to me there hasn't been a car out on track for that team for 8 minutes or so, uh, which is a real shame, that was a team that had been started by Paul Hinson, and then David Drinkwater and Adam Reed. part of that, they were the winners uh, in 2019 and 2020, he says. Um, I think no, that's <laughs> that's right. But the uh, the double winners of the uh, the Burkitt relay, uh, therefore having a problem early doors in this race just a, an hour in. But uh, now everyone, as we say, will be bunching up behind uh, the safety car, and therefore the hard-working marshals um, will leap into action. And the Burkitt relay always well supported by 
a regular team of 750 Motor Club Marshals, a Silverstone Marshals as well, and I'm sure some others uh, always like coming to this event because as a Marshall hander, you've always got something to do here because there's so many cars going past you constantly. Exactly, you might as well just stick the blue flag permanently in your hand because uh, traffic is such a key factor in this race. But uh, yeah, Marshalls do a great job. They've normally got some slightly uh, more inclement weather than this to deal with. So this is a, a practically tropical day for the Marshalls here at Silverstone uh, for the 2022 edition of the Burkett. And there is the Renault Vagan safety car. So only now, uh, to your point, Josh, as it headed out onto the circuit, and you we'll see, see who it does pick up. There was a big gap there, wasn't yeah. there? So obviously they thought that was a good point to uh, to take the safety car out in what was a uh, safe uh, position. Well, they just look like they're waving cars through. So after I said that they won't pick the leader yeah. up, um, potentially they're going to try and do that, which uh, doesn't generally happen at this event, but perhaps uh, a change in the regulations for this year. Indeed. So Triple A's racing would have been the car that they picked up, but uh, that uh, car, as you said, getting waved by, and they're going to continue to do so until they pick up the race leader, who we anticipate will likely pit uh, this lap. So uh, it won't be the easiest of uh, jobs to try and uh, pick up the correct radical that does lead the race. And uh, we'll see whether or not that is still the, should still be the number 14 radical, where it is exactly on track. I'm not so <laughs> sure. Yeah. And ah. In fact, I can tell you exactly where it is. It's in the pit lane. Ah. It just came in past our commentary box. So, uh, yeah, the, the job now of picking up the race leader becomes even harder. So, uh, a noisy pit lane uh, now suddenly springs into action uh, with uh, four hours, 48 and a half minutes left of the 2022 Burkett six-hour relay here at Silverstone. The race leader pitting, and I would anticipate, Josh, that they will not be the only ones. Yeah, and that was Mark Williams then who uh, headed out in uh, one of the two radicals that he and Roger Bromley are due to share. Uh, but they said that one of the cars is on the very last leg, so they're hoping uh -oh. not to use that. So really, they're hoping to do the event just uh, with the two cars. But Mark Williams then uh, will claim the lead. He finished eighth this season in the Radical Challenge, um, in a, but getting quicker and quicker all the time. And uh, at a point now where he was uh, looking forward to racing here at the Burkett Relay. Uh, in a, such a different environment, Andy, to race in a, in a single make series. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he's used to close quarters racing, I suppose. There's plenty of that going on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's that speed differential. And, and at different parts of the circuit, you may be battling for uh, someone uh, for position, uh, perhaps even within the, within the same class and on a similar handicap, in a car that is uh, way quicker down the streets, whilst you have the advantage through the technical section. So, uh, yeah, difficult stuff out there. Uh, certainly a bit of a baptism of fire for those making their Burkett Relay debuts. Uh, right, the leading car we mentioned had pitted. That was the uh, Team 14 Doris NWH squad. Uh, Ryan Harperell has jumped out of that radical and I think he's down in the pit lane now with Lewis Beals. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm down here with Roger Bromley from Doris NWH. Roger, start us off with Doris NWH. Come on, what's the, what's the story behind the name? Well, NWH is really straightforward. That's Mark, Mark who's out now in the race car. That's his race company, it's his waste management company. So that's a dead straightforward one. Doris is my uh, my sister's pussycat who is now no longer with us. And uh, Doris, about 19 years old when she left us and uh, was a superstar. We loved her very much. She's been on all of my helmets down the side here. So. So it means a great deal to you. Roger, you were just telling me that's the first time you've uh, been back to the big circus for six years. It's not a bad start, is it, in the lead? <laughs> Ryan sets a very, very high bar for me. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? It's a long time. It was an SR8 here in 2016, I think. That's the last time I was on the big circuit. So very, very different. I was doing a lot of playing catch up yesterday and testing. Well, yeah, because the SR8s were the V8s. We're now on to uh, the SR3s, a little bit slower. Absolutely right, yeah. The big, big V8 engine, stonking car. We had a great time in that over sort of three or four or five years. Had won a championship as well. But uh, the SR3, I think, is a, as an all-round car, is, by, is, is actually a better... It might not be as quick, but it's a stonking car, really good. Yeah, I, I'm, I think I was reading it's about 15 odd years old, isn't it? Uh, it's a uh, radical up from Peterborough. I've done a marvellous job with that car. Um, what's it like in the wet? 
I mean, it, I just think it's the best car you can buy for the money. I think it actually came out in 2000 or 2001, so it's actually 22 years old, that car now. And, uh, and it's wonderful in the wet. I mean, it's just very, very drivable. I mean, if I can drive it, seriously, anybody can drive it, can't they? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I think you've done a pretty good job there. And I think we're just seeing the... Uh, so who was that? That was Ryan, wasn't it? Ryan, Ryan was in the car, and there he is just uh, debriefing with the uh, acting team boss to, today, uh, Chris Stoney, who is also an ex-racer. He used to race against Chris who's Shane's dad and Shane will be out next. I wonder if we can grab hold of Ryan. Did you think we could just grab hold of Ryan? Ryan. We're in the middle of an interview, here we go. We've got uh, Ryan Harbour Ellum. Ryan, you just jumped out of the lead car. I, I know, really jumped on you. But to what conditions like? Uh, it's really tricky out there, to be fair, at the moment. The circuit's really in that crossover point. The guys going out on slicks are going to have a real hard time heating them up, but the guys on full wets are going to cook them pretty quick. So if you, are, if you are online all the time, you could get away with it, but if you go offline and try and overtake, which is obviously pretty important in one of these, it's, it's tricky. I would imagine that you spend a lot of time offline trying to pass it because you're the fastest car. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that was a real, real sort of big decision when the team were asking me what call to make. And um, yeah, hopefully we've uh, we've got it right. The safety car should help us give uh, give the car out there a bit of time to figure out the circuit and then get back into the groove. I, I know it was Mark went on brand new wet. So do you think that's the best? Do you think it would have been better if it had been scrubbed in a bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, ideally, we'd are you, have wanted. Are you paying? <laughs> <laughs> ideally, we'd have wanted something like an Inter, um, but unfortunately, this is where we are. And I guess it's it's one of those being such a long race, we're better being on a slightly slower tyre and staying on the road than uh, than being outright fastest and risking maybe going off. Yeah, that's the, that is the key, isn't it? You've, you've got to keep doing the laps. But anyway, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Uh, same to you, Roger. Good luck on your stint. Bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Well, there we are. That's the uh, that's the um, information we got from the Doris NWH team, who were leading or were leading the uh, Burkett Six R Relay race after the first hour. And I hand you back to the commentary team. Yeah, thank you, Lewis. They are still leading according to the timing screen uh, by only five seconds now over RJ Motorsport 2, the number 30 car in second and Raw Motorsport uh, in third position, car number 15, uh, after having made a pit stop. Now, what I missed in all of that, Josh, is whether the 30 car came in because there's suddenly a big gap uh, between second and third, isn't there? Yeah, last we saw it, just before we heard from uh, Roger Bromley there, I noticed Leon Morel was still out there, so I presume he has not pitted. I would assume they're going to try and see if the fuel tank will last long enough for them to then to go on to slick tyres at the next pit stop. But uh, we await to see. Obviously, the safety car is going to help out with that, but certainly the, uh, the Royal Motorsport team have pitted, it would seem, wouldn't it? Because there's a very large gap now between second and third. We heard there uh, from Roger Bromley, who was talking about racing on the short tracks, and that is because he's a Prisca Formula One stock car driver. Uh, that and Radical seems like the two most diverse categories you can race in, but that's uh, uh, what Roger has done. He mentioned winning the championship he, um, about 10 years ago. I think it was he won with Sean Balf in the Radical uh, Cup, as I think it was known in those days. And uh, yeah, then went back <laughs> to his roots, uh, racing on the short oval. So we can see the leader there, Mark Williams, he's just uh, tucked up there behind one of the 116 Trophy cars. And I can't see Leon Morel's car, so not as they've done a... And also he's come in. I wonder if he's come in this time and therefore yeah. he's, he's dropped, uh, presumably, to the back of the train. So we'll have to see when they come around next time. Once we're back up to racing speed, it will become a bit more obvious, I think. But this is the point that you were talking about earlier with Ian, Andy, where the handicap sort of goes out the window and uh, the uh, the handicappers will have to re-look at it and see if they need to adjust it at all, particularly as the safety car period hasn't been sort of one lap and back in. It's what, been 10 or so minutes already. Indeed, there will likely have been an update to the handicap anyway around the one hour mark, I'm led to believe. So uh, it is likely that things uh, are going to keep on changing right down until the final hour, but by which point hopefully they'll have uh, a good idea of where everyone ought to be. But it's... Uh, we have, Andy, the handicap at one hour. Ah. So leading the way is 68. 
which is Red Rascal, which is the Mazda team of William Hayden, Peter Williams, Lee Phillips, Russell Clark, Kevin Dengate and Tim Dore. In second place is the RAF team, Team 2, uh, which is Rob Stark, Ollie Wayne, uh, Lloyd Huggins and David Watson. And then in third position is 22, which is St Winifred's School Choir, which is the team of uh, Chris Van Tanner, uh, John Glover, Nick Glover, Alex Hughes and Jez Banks. So after one hour, the handicap results are generally um, un unrelevant, really, because if you've got your quick car in to start, therefore it's not such a uh, a drama, really, in comparison um, to if you've then got to have your slower drivers in later on, or in the opposite way round, if you have a quick driver taking over um, later on in the stint. And some teams have much quicker drivers at different parts of the race, but the safety car is uh, coming in so therefore we can get racing underway after about that 15 minutes or so of uh, intervention so for those who are at the front of the queue are going to have some clear track but i think it's not the quickest cars andy right at the front of the queue so they're going to have quicker machines working their way past that is definitely the case i'm reliably informed by the way by ian soman who may not be on commentary for this hour but has been uh, ferreting away in the pit lane to uh, find out what's been going on it was tire wall damage that led to the delay uh, who damaged the tire wall and which tire wall it was i don't know but that's what the uh, the issue was so there's a car that presumably is looking a little bit worse for wear but now uh, we've got to try and sort all of this out unlike at the initial start of the race where as josh said uh, we had the fastest cars at the front of the grid uh, this is a very very jumbled order now so people keen to try and gain track position as soon as they can so the two cars we're watching here are stuart dayburn in the lotus Exist gt4 and andrew hawes in the mini cooper s so that's uh, team 9 and 17 which is proper gt uh, british gts and bad boy tuning so they're two of the cars here wake, working their way uh, through there, I think, past uh, some of the Toyota MR2s. So they work their way here up uh, towards Stowe Corner as the rest work their way uh, down. In this group also you've got 33D, which is Finn Jones in the Volkswagen Golf, the FSR tuning uh, team, just ahead of Barry McMahon, who uh, Andy and Ian were talking about earlier. Last year's Alfa Romeo champion, but not in this car. Um, this car... Um, which uh, he's, I think, raced once this year at Brands Hatch at Festival Italia. Uh, but Barry McMahon back in it here for the Burkitt. But now, Andy, we get a proper look at the gaps up front. Uh, indeed, once they come through at the uh, end of this lap in particular, we'll have a, a good look at the gaps. At the moment, Doris NWH are being shown as 34 seconds up the road, so they've retained <laughs> most of that 60-second or so lead that they had before the safety car. And it's Royal Motor back ahead of RJ. Yes. So therefore, presumably, Liam Morrell did come into the pits like I thought he might have done, but that lap later, and I think that's potentially lost them quite a lot of time there because they were nose to tail with RJ Motorsport, where they're at least 20 seconds uh, behind at this point. Uh, looking there at the Matt Mills Mini Cooper S, as well as the BMW Z4, which is Jack Wood. So a couple of the more production-based cars, which, to be fair, the majority of the grid, uh, probably 60 or so of the 70 teams, probably are production-based cars nowadays in this race. And they've got the race leader, Mark Williams, in the Radical S um, SR3, working his way through in his first flying lap of this race. So he got himself sort of built up, didn't he, during that safety car period, ready for what was coming up next. Uh, indeed so. Um, yeah, interesting uh, strategy there, as you said, from RJ Motorsport, staying out that one lap longer. As you correctly said, during the safety car period, you'd think if they were staying out, they'd be waiting for the track to dry out, so they'd stay out a bit longer. They'll be limited on how many laps they can do with one tank of fuel. Of course they will. I wonder if they've taken the gamble anyway, stuck them on slick tyres. We'll watch their lap times with interest once they start getting up to speed. Remember, the fastest lap of the race, set by Ryan Harper Ellen, was a 2 minutes 17.95 but that was in wet conditions. And that was a stop-go penalty board for the car in second place. Oh, no. So the black flag you saw going out, I'm pretty sure, said 15, which is Royal Motorsports. So we um, will await to see if we learn what that uh, is for. We obviously know those pit stops have just come, so there's a question mark whether that went right. And there's been a lot of yellow flags out, so there's two real possibilities um, what that could have been. Meanwhile... We watched there uh, the Toyota MR2, which is John um, Jim Mew, a regular in the MR2 Championship, and the um, Jack Wood BMW Z4 that runs side by side. 
Um, so you've got two uh, fairly modern sort of small rear wheel drive sports cars and they're all being caught by one of the uh, TCR cars there that looks like Colin Gillespie who um, acquired this car this year with um, Capture Motorsport. Uh, so he's working his way through. Then you've got the second of the RJ Motorsport cars, um, but that is two laps down. So we heard from Alistair Smart earlier, didn't we? That Radical PR6 is not a friendly car in the wet conditions. Uh, so interesting they put him out to start as he had Radical SR3s in the garage of Charles Graham and Wade Eastwood. But that team have got a lot of work to do now, Andy, because two laps take some time to work out. Uh, however, we'll come back to that in a moment because we can head uh, back to the pit lane with Lewis Spills, who's uh, down there. Thank you very much, Josh. And uh, as always, the Burkett always brings along some personalities, and none bigger than Martin Short. <laughs> Martin, <laughs> um, I think on the Burkett website there's a, a roll of honour, and you're on it. So uh, congratulations. Alan de Cadenaya isn't, but uh, of course... He didn't get to fourth, did he, in Le Mans? I think, I think he did. I think he might have got to third. I think he deserves it far more than I did. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, come on, 750 Motor Club, you need to sort that out. But I didn't know that, and thank you, Lewis. I think that's the fifth time that you've told me. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, that's the first time we could do it on, sir. So. Anyway, congratulations. Good to see you here. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big, sir, it's a big um, sort of coming back to your roots, really, isn't it, Martin? Uh, yeah, I think we did it a couple of years ago um, with the Rover 2 and 6 with my eldest son Morgan. Um, we got a car that I bought a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, this Chevy, because it just had a Mosler en a Chevy engine in it. I just thought, oh, that looks like a lot of fun. What can I do with it? Oh, Burkitt, brilliant. And um, so uh, I asked my mate Rob here to come and join me. And uh, we started 49th and Rob took it up to 15th. So. Hand over to Rob. I will. Rob, you started the car, you know, uh, Martin, Martin's car, and uh, he, he was a bit worried you were going to come back, you know, damaged. Absolutely, so was I, because I know what he's like. I've seen him at Le Mans when people have brought his cars back here with damage. So I was very, I'm too scared to damage it. But I can remember, was it this one year I was turned the telly on there, I was watching on Eurosport, and suddenly this Pescarola whacked the barrier. That was the Delara. Oh, that was the Delara? Yeah, yeah, that was after I got Sebastian Bordade and he broke the rear suspension, but we didn't know. And uh, yeah, we were lying fourth. That was our very first Le Mans and we were, it was uh, seven o'clock in the morning and we were lying fourth overall, which was extraordinary. And uh, Sebastian hit the left rear wheel of the car, pitched me into uh, the gravel. We came into the pits, checked the car, seemed all okay, went out again got to the Porsche curves and the left rear upright broke. The, a bolt on it had got a cr hairline crack in it and just went straight into the uh, uh, concrete walls at the Porsche curves. It's like an aircraft crash. But like a true professional, I, I still tried to start the car and the marshals are screaming at me, going, no, no, there was, I looked behind me, there was nothing left. <laughs> it all gone. <laughs> Well, at least you haven't damaged it that badly. Absolutely, no, it's mint, it's perfect. I've gone round it with Martin, as you would do handing back a hire car, and we've looked at every panel, <laughs> and video. it's immaculate, <laughs> so it's all good. Well, Rob, come on, tell me, what do you do as a day job? Um, well, uh, I, I work for McLaren, uh, and I'm very lucky. I get to shake down the, the Heritage Formula One collection. So I think it's about 60 cars now from 1974 M23 to 2013 um, uh, V8 Mercedes cars, the newest car we uh, will run on Heritage, and pretty much everything in the middle. So I'll be very lucky. Wow. Wow. Is that what you say when you jump in one? Uh, well, yes, but then, I, but then I was even luckier when Martin phoned me and asked me if I'd drive this Chevy with him, but the Burkitt uh, here this weekend, and it's been brilliant fun. Yes, because yeah, you you also won the LMP3 championship in Europe some years ago. Yeah, 2018 we won the uh, LMP3 and ELMS, and and that was the last race of that season at Portimao was the last race I competed in prior to today. So, so we're going to try and try and carry that luck into this uh, into this event. Well, from 49th to 15th wasn't a bad run. Anyway, thanks guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of the rest of the day. Thanks, mate. Appreciate nice it. Nice to see you. Take care. And what's interesting there, Andy? They're talking about a car that they got two weeks ago and never been raced before. So therefore, the handicappers have nothing ah. to relate those lap times too. So either that can work in your favour or work it uh, out of your favour, but having two drivers like Rob Garrafull and Martin Short driving it, 
probably means it's going to go quicker than, than most people could make it go. It's a big, uh, it's a pretty big car, but uh, Martin wasn't sure where to race it. I'd suggest Club Enduro would be a good place to start, <laughs> um, possibly, because they're a very similar type of car uh, that we've, uh, we've had in that over the last few seasons. Uh, anyway, great to have those uh, pair here and in, in a grid, Andy, that the, the experience goes from people who have raced at Le Mans to people who are in their first season of racing. Exactly, that's the joy of the Birkin, isn't it? The joy of British club motorsport, actually, the 750 Motor Club in particular, really does cater for drivers of uh, all experience levels. And, uh, yeah, we've got some drivers racing today who have not been racing for that long at all. And uh, talk about jumping straight in at the deep end. Uh, this cannot be an easy race to make uh, uh, your first appearance in. Uh, had a change for the lead in Class B, by the way. Darkside Motorsport back ahead of Capture Motorsport now. That move happening on the previous lap. Uh, so Capture Motorsport, I think you said that was now Colin Gillespie uh, in the Cupra. We've got uh, one of the MGs off. That's 64B. And that is Mark nice. Bellamy's ZR170. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, latest cars to uh, run out wide through Village and Farm Curve. Uh, but yes, that uh, change for the lead in Class B. That's shaping up to be a very entertaining battle, at least for the scratch battle uh, in Class B. Anyway, between Capture, uh, Area and Dark Side, those three cars running 6th, 7th and 8th overall. Yeah, Mark Bellamy we just saw as a double Cockshoot Cup champion in the past. And I'm sure if I didn't mention that, I would have been told I should have done. <laughs> so we got that in. Um, so Mark Bellamy, though, having a, a bit of a moment. Great to have that team, though, here from the MG Car Club. Uh, we saw Jason Burgess start that in his ZR, but uh, Mark Bellamy in a similar car out there now. There's uh, the, one of the RAF teams. This is David Russell, last year's winner of the Burkitt Relay. He's out there in his BMW 328i. He's uh, had a lot of success this year in the Armed Forces Racing Challenge. And uh, the man then from the RAF goes down the inside there into Abbey Corner. You could tell it's October because it's quite bright now. It hasn't rained since nine o'clock, but the track is not drying out at really any kind of rate, despite there being 70 cars uh, out on the circuit here. And just behind uh, David Russell on the road there is Rob Hardy and his Porsche 944. Um, so two pretty different cars there. It'd be great to have these front engine Porsches that are part of the Burkitt pretty much every year. Uh, meanwhile, see we've had a change for second place, which does that mean Royal Motorsport have come in for their drive through penalty possibly? Uh, because we saw that was uh, showing on the start and finish line, didn't we, a moment or two ago? I suspect they probably have. It was a slow lap last time as well compared to the others. The leaders, by the way, the top two, uh, both lapping very similarly, but they are over a minute uh, apart now, nearly a minute and a quarter, actually, the advantage uh, for the uh, number 14 team. But they're both in the 219s, those top two. Still a couple of seconds away from the outright fastest lap. So, uh, oh, there is the 15 Raw Motorsport car, which... Uh, I tend to agree with you. I think must have been in yeah. to serve that penalty, Josh. And it's uh, John McLeod who is now out there. Yes, it is. John McLeod then uh, in the number 15 Radical having served a penalty. And uh, once the timing screen updates, I'll give you the gap. He is about a minute now behind uh, second place. So the top three pretty equidistantly spaced out now. Uh, but to the point I was making, they're not yet getting down to the sort of pace they had in much wetter conditions earlier on. So either they're on wet still and are struggling with the drying track or they're on slicks and the track isn't yet dry enough for them. But uh, whatever it is, the pace is not yet getting down to a full dry time. So this car's lost a lot of time, hasn't it, with whatever that penalty was, because that lap was about a minute and a half slower than the other two. Yeah. So Royal Motorsport, that now looks like it's John McLeod out there, the three-time winner of this event uh, in 2014, 2017 and 2020, is now in the car, but uh, almost a lap down now, I think, on the top two. So they've got a lot of work to do. But we just had confirmation that it was Paul Hinson that was off yeah. uh, around the circuit, and that car is done. So that car will not be coming back. So that means the three amigos are down to two cars with four and a half hours to go. So David Drinkwater and Adam Reed are, are the two left. So the double former winners of this race on Handicap, uh, we already think they're probably no longer in contention, but they've got a 
difficult uh, day in from here as John McLeod works his way into Abbey Corner. It's just lap Maxine Nichols who was telling me just before the race started this is the last race she's going to do with a pink car. She's having yeah. a change of colour scheme for next season. Right, OK, that's uh, a shame. It was always a distinctive car, wasn't it? Easy to pick out in a, a pack of swarming MR2s. But, uh, yeah, Maxine, another uh, long-time competitor in the Toyota MR2 Championship. That uh, camera there down at Abbey Corner really does show the difficulty here of tyre choice and uh, making your way through the pack on a circuit that has what I would call a dry line there. I'd say that's bone dry uh, on the run into Abbey Corner, but as soon as you go up the inside of anybody, which you have to do frequently in this race, uh, you find yourself on the wet and slippery part of the circuit with very little grip. This is another car that's having its first ever race today. This is Johnny Hayes in a BMW M2, uh, which is a car that's been converted from a road car, I understand. Uh, rather than the factory BMW motorsport cars. So Jonathan Hayes thinking about doing road sports in this car for next season. So uh, hopefully this uh, goes successfully for him. He finished second this season in the Class C within Club Enduro with three victories. But uh, a new, much more powerful car here um, that he's having a first run in. And we just got a look of him uh, going through there. And just behind him on the circuit is Jamie McHugh, who's out there in his Porsche 968, another front engine Porsche. Yep, comes out of uh, Luffield Corner towards the end of another lap. Again, you can see that dry line there. But still, lap time's not uh, representative of that, really. So I suspect those leading radicals are still uh, on their wet rubber. Very wide line there coming out of uh, Luffield for uh, Clive Watson in his BMW 330i. And uh, he just relinquishes a couple of positions as well as we get another brilliant look uh, on board here as uh, one of the cars heads out of the pit lane past the safety car and back out onto the circuit. Now, who do we think this might be uh, then? Heading out onto the pit exit and a very damp line as they come out of the pit lane. And again, this will give us... A great view of what the track conditions are like out there. Three maggots and Beckett's looks dry online there, doesn't it? This is uh, the Vote for Pedro team, which yeah. has got... Uh the Genetta G20s of Neil Primrose and Luke Plummer. Neil Primrose, the uh, drummer for Travis, who's done a lot of racing with the 750 Motor Club over the years. So I presume this is the G20. It's a very high uh, modified uh, G20 if it's the one that Neil's raced in the past. Uh, so perhaps we we'll get an outboard shot of that as well. But he's just working his way down the uh, hangar straight. But great to have these onboard cameras. Uh, with Alpha Live again this year at the Burkitt as the race leader there, Mark Williams, just turns his way through the complex and he's now 70 seconds ahead of RJ Motorsport 2, who is lapping a little bit quicker at the moment, a couple of seconds on that last lap and a PB for the car in second place. So there's quite a lot of PBs coming in, despite obviously all the traffic everyone's in. So therefore, conditions perhaps slowly but surely, Andy, get in a bit quicker. I think they are, aren't they? Um, interestingly as well, the RJ Motorsport 1 Radical, which I think I remember uh, was started by Wade Eastwood, was it not? Yes. He's in it now. Anyway. Oh, he's in it now. Okay, so he is going quickly. Wade Eastwood uh, now in the 1 minute 90, uh, sorry, 2 minute 19s as well. So among the fastest cars on the track, whereas that car did not have the pace uh, in the opening stint of the race. So they um, are some way behind the top three, but the uh, number 29 car perhaps starting to uh, drag itself back into contention. On the handicap, they had... Uh, two credit laps, so one more than their teammate car, and uh, they need it because that first stint was not all that rapid. Got two minis out together. There's not that many minis on the whole uh, race, and they managed to get themselves together on the track. That's Charles Newton Derby, I think, just ahead of Robert Rees uh, on the road. Robert Rees has done the Burkitt before, but in a radical, so this is a little <laughs> bit different. He's got cars uh, all around him uh, there, including the uh, BMW of Clive Watson in his BMW 330, a regular in the car club uh, races. And I presume that's the diesel Jaguar that's just behind, looking at all of the smoke that is emitting from the back of it, Andy. Yes, that did have me concerned for a moment. It, uh, the smoke looking not so black in the um, sun that's sort of glinting off the still damp road at, uh, at Luffield. But yes, uh, black diesel smoke from the growling pussy team as they come out across the line to complete another lap then. And uh, keeping pace quite nicely actually with the cars just ahead. But uh, finding a way past them is not going to be that easy. That car looking a little bit leery, isn't it, as it... Uh, comes down through Maggots and uh, Beckett. That's uh, Andrew Harper uh, in 20E. 
uh, the auto reserve parts liveried car and uh, he has got the Mini in its sights and should have the torque down the hangar straight uh, to have a go at making the move here. And in a silk cut esque livery as well, which is uh, perfect for a Jaguar here at Silverstone uh, with all those victories they had here in the 1980s in that type of uh, colour scheme. Probably going a little bit quicker then than this car will go today. But again, great to have this variety here at the Burke. It's what it's all about. And it's probably double the size in length, isn't it, than the Mini that it's chasing afterwards. But actually, they're quite similarly paced uh, around the circuit. Yes, they are. Uh, just uh, keeping one eye on that uh, Class B battle that's been uh, intriguing me all race long, actually. Dark Side Motorsport pulling out a nice lead now from Capture Motorsport, but uh, third and fourth getting themselves quite close together now. Only a couple of seconds between Area Motorsport's uh, number 51 Golf and the number three Triple A's racing car, which I think is Andrew Rath. Uh, no, it's not the Europa, is it? It's, uh, I'm not sure who's out in that car. It could well be uh, Phil Nibby in his, uh, say, at Leon Cupra. But uh, that gap down to a couple of seconds now. And Area Motorsport, who at one point were contesting for the lead of Class B, uh, now finding themselves slipping further down the order. Still no way through yet uh, in the uh, Jaguar, although I think he might have just made the move uh, into Abbey Corner there. Finally getting past the Mini. And just there got a shot of the Genetta G20, the uh, Neil Primrose car, yeah. looking nothing like the cars did <laughs> when they raced in the Challenge Series all those years ago, a very highly modified car, a very quick car. Meanwhile, and we pick up that battle that you were mentioning. There we go, perfect timing, and it is the Cupra that's going to try and find its way through. This for a podium place then, uh, on scratch anyway, uh, within Class B, as we get a new fastest lap from RJ Motorsports 1 as well, the first 2 minutes 17 that we've had so far. A defensive line there taken by the Golf, that's 51D, which means it is Rob Baker. Uh, but he's just been passed uh, by his Phil Nip, who you thought it might have been. But in a, a TCR-esque say it should be probably a bit quicker than a Volkswagen Golf. But uh, I think that means all the first four in the, the Class B, like for the production-based cars, are all cars from Club Enduro, which is yeah. an interesting uh, proposition there, because you've got the dark side uh, guys who are out with their Audi and their Golf. Uh, you've got Capture out in their TCR cars. You've got Phil Nip here in his TCR car. And then he's just uh, got past and put in away quite quickly um, from the Volkswagen Golf there, which I think was actually Jonathan Packer, um, who's at the wheel of that very similar looking car to Rob Baker's. Uh, but uh, Area Motorsport have been producing these Volkswagen Golfs that absolutely dominated their class within Club Enduro uh, this season. And Jonathan Packer was the winner this year at the opening round at Donington Park uh, in that championship. But he has lost that place. Uh, on that lap, so that's for eighth position uh, on, in the scratch positions, but each of the class awards are all on handicap, so that'll all be worked out. We can ride on board now, though, with Jonathan Packer, uh, who we were just talking about there, Andy, into Beckett's. Indeed, through the left, through the right at Beckett's, he's got some uh, traffic ahead, and as you can see, the sun now starting to create a bit of an issue because it's glinting off the wet tarmac. He's got a slightly damp and greasy windscreen as well, uh, and uh, that makes visibility less than ideal. Nips up the inside of the Nissan Almira there, which has just come out of the pit lane, and uh, heads out onto the hangar straight, uh, and a chance to relax, rest the left arm, get his helmet secure, uh, <laughs> and uh, make sure that he's uh, going to go into Stoke corner as safely as he possibly can hard on the brakes and then turns into the uh, the right hand up this front wheel drive vw golf uh, looking very very well balanced indeed as he heads around the silverstone grand prix circuit well balanced yes uh, but not as quick as the cars ahead of him he's already losing touch with that triple a's racing cooper yeah uh, which is uh, interesting isn't it about five seconds slower on that last lap um, so Jonathan Packer perhaps finding these drying conditions not to his liking. But another fastest lap there from Wade Eastwood. Does this more confirm that car's on slicks? Because I thought when I went down there that team had a slick car ready, although Alistair Smart didn't really suggest that was the case. <laughs> but that car now is lapping at least three seconds faster than those in front, at 2 minutes 16.17. I guess, Andy, they had to take the gamble because they've lost those two laps early on. Yeah, it was worth doing, wasn't it, really? Uh, they, they had lost that ground in the wetter conditions earlier on. And if they can do another half an hour on slick tyres, perhaps before the others come in and change onto slicks, they could gain a ton of time. Their last lap was nine, uh, sorry, no, was seven seconds quicker than the race leading car. Uh, now, okay, a lap time is over two minutes. It'll take an awful lot to get those laps back. But again, this is where the handicap system comes into play. They perhaps have a slightly better handicap than some of the others ahead of them, and they might just be able to get themselves into contention for the handicap win. So some good lap times now required, and that's exactly what they're pumping in. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's right, Andy. Great to have that onboard camera then with Jonathan Pack and see. Uh, he actually had quite a, a clear bit of road, surprisingly, while we were watching that. But here is uh, the fastest driver on the circuit then, Wade Eastwood, who won this event in 2019 uh, on scratch and is back again this season in his SR3 RSX, the uh, radical sports cars that uh, the RS stand in for Rockingham Speedway, which of course no longer uh, in use, but that's where Radical developed all of their cars. The uh, manufacturer from uh, Peterborough in Cambridgeshire, uh, about an hour and a quarters uh, away from here from Silverstone. So uh, a local uh, manufacturer and we're having these four teams mainly made up of SR3s. And we, as we heard, those cars originated about 20 years ago, but they have developed them and uh, this is one of the later generation of cars. So Wade Eastwood goes through uh, to complete 39 laps for the team. And on that particular lap, as we wait for the lap time to come through, we can tell you that it, well, we wait <laughs> and wait. <laughs> yes, there is a small delay I've noticed <laughs> on our timing screen, unfortunately, but it looked quick, didn't it? And, and and there it was, it was oh, too. <laughs> wow, <laughs> two minutes 11.5 uh, there as off over the grass, that is 66C and that will be Andy Chapman and there is smoke emanating from the back of the Seat. So uh, that lot. looks like a mechanical failure. Now he's heading into the pit lane, but it's the wrong pit yeah. lane that's down at the wing. Uh, so that car stationary on track. This is where the benefit of live streaming comes in because now there's no doubt for the team if they're watching, <laughs> they know the car's stopped and they can send someone out straight away. And the other good thing is he's found a, a good bit yes. of track where it won't cause a problem to the, for all the other competitors. So we can carry on maybe just under local yellows for a little bit. Uh, possibly that isn't even necessary because it's behind the barriers. But going back to that lap time, that is over 10 seconds faster wow. than all those in front. And I think that immediately means the overall leaders are in because a much lower lap, I presume right. that's why. So I think the Doris uh, team are in. I think we heard that Shane Stoney uh, should be going out for them, surely. Uh, on slick racing tyres, so we'll uh, wait for confirmation uh, of that, but I suspect that will be the case. Shane Stoney, who started his uh, car racing career with us at the 750 Motor Club, he won the Sax Max Championship back in the day, uh, and he's a former winner of this event in uh, 2020, but that means their lead is down to 40 seconds, so the RJ Motorsport 2 team, interestingly, not coming in. Here is the leader, so let's get confirmation. Yeah, it is Shane Stoney then in 14E in that car, so if we think, Andy will be on slick tyres. I tend to agree with that. The body language of the car is a bit more darty and twitchy now than it was earlier on. That would suggest he's on some slicks that aren't uh, quite up to temperature just yet. But uh, that was some, some good reaction, actually, from the, uh, the Doris uh, NWH team. They spotted these quick lap times coming in for the number 29 car. And immediately, or within a lap or so anyway, they responded. And they've sent their car out, it seems, now on the slick tyres. But these early laps will be uh, nervy, won't they, for Shane Stoney, as he tries to pick his way past the back mark because he won't yet have the heat in the tyres and of course he's having to go off that drier line to make the passes and now he's got something dragging on the back of the car has he? Yeah I wonder to start with if it's just excessively fueled but it looked potentially worse than that didn't it? Have you noticed something? There's something dangling down uh, just to the left hand side of the car at the rear what it is I couldn't see <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping he's, that's he's out, serious. He's out lap, Andy. He's a 2.16. Wow. So that's a pretty quick <laughs> on cold tie from the pit, from the slow pit lane, basically. Yeah. Uh, but potentially not all well for the leaders. So they'll be watching this. Uh, hope they've got the live stream on in the garage. They'll be having a look if they think that's uh, OK. It's not slowing him down at this stage. And it's not evident uh, much evident through that uh, part of the track that he's got a problem behind is the volvo this is a great car if we get a chance to look at it it's in full british touring car livery it's actually a former volkswagen built car um but in scandinavian the scandinavian touring car championship it's driven by chris camp but uh, the the smoke or the steam or whatever it is still emits uh, from the back of the radical but he's still going quickly uh, it's not slowing the car down. It seems to be through right-handers. It just does make me wonder if it's how much fuel they've got in the car. 
Uh, let's see if we can see this Volvo. Here it is, the Chris Camp car. It's been racing in the Armed Forces Racing Challenge uh, this season, the former Scandinavian touring car. And uh, in the full Volvo Works livery, Andy, that I'm sure you're so familiar with. Indeed so. That uh, brings back some... Uh early childhood memories um, of uh, late 90s touring car racing. Fantastic uh, looking car and uh, looks to be going reasonably quickly, doesn't it? Here it comes towards us now. And uh, there's something to be said, I think, for, uh, or admittedly this isn't a 90s car, early noughties, but that boxiness of uh, Scandinavian saloon cars looking really good. Right, uh, in comes the Ginetta. Uh, now we're going to get some real activity now, aren't we? Because we're coming towards the end of our number two. So if you are in a car and you feel that you're no longer on the correct tyres for the conditions, this isn't the worst time to come in. Maybe try and get another lap or two out of it uh, and then come in. Uh, to get those tyre changed. This car heads straight into the paddock. Remember, you don't pull up outside of your garage to do the pit stop. As soon as you pass the garage, the team send the next car out and uh, the driver who's just completed a stint heads round to the back of the pits. See uh, cars are making their way out of Cops Corner up uh, towards uh, Beckett's and then here down the hangar straight. Uh, it's another lap done by Shane Stoney. Again, a bit quicker, a 2.14, but not as quick as Wade Eastwood. Uh, has been doing on his fully heated up tyres. The lap record, I reckon, for the Burkitt Relays, a 2.044 from last year, which was Simon Freeman in the, in the bigger Radical SR10, the uh, Ford EcoBoost engine car. But we're only seven seconds away from that, on far mm. from a dry circuit, and uh, in very much the early stages of a, a drying circuit. Even actually here in De Stowe, there's hardly a dry line, is there, um, for the competitors to use. But there is Stoney then turning into... Um, into that part of the circuit and is this the uh, that's Royal Motorsport so they're a lap down now I reckon the car in third place yes I think you're right their lap times two minute thirties at the moment so they've clearly not changed tyres yet uh, they're going to try and stay out there and save the extra pit stop but because a pit stop doesn't cost you a huge amount of time with this uh, relay format that we run seems like an interesting strategy to go for. I think if you're hemorrhaging time the way that they are, it makes far more sense to come in as soon as you can uh, and get onto the preferred tyres. But uh, what do I know? There's a reason I'm a commentator, not a team manager. <laughs> and I'm sure they know what they're doing. But they're certainly losing time out on track as it stands. See here Chris Stone in his Honda Civic, part of the MJ Motorsport uh, team here, making his way through in yet another Honda Civic. I heard you and Ian talking about Hondas earlier. It's become such a popular... Uh, racing car hasn't it in the uh, in a great variety of series i think chris stone's uh, done some racing in the tegawa type r trophy that's uh, been so popular over the last couple of seasons and he works his way through club corner with a pretty slow mazda mx5 that he's going to get past yeah, I'm trying to decide whether that's a problem or they were just staying out of the way. They've merged back onto the racing line now, which tells me that the car's running OK. Uh, was just a little bit off the pace coming uh, out of Club Corner. So that car, uh, the Mark II MX5, mm. I think that is, isn't it? Don't uh, see them very often. Do no, you? you don't, do you? Lots of 1s uh, and 3s. I noticed there was a Mark III out there earlier on. I mentioned earlier on, too, it's nice to see some Mark IVs. But yeah, the Mark II, for whatever reason, sort of passed us by over here in Europe. Don't see many on the road, and you see even fewer of them out on the racetrack. So good to see one going. Admitted not all that quickly but driver perhaps just getting up to uh, up to speed with the ever evolving track conditions and that was Nick Glover who we saw uh, just a moment ago Ooh. see uh, the BMW which is the best non-radical isn't it in this race in fifth place the prep and play team this is Jason West who uh, has had lots of success in things like thunder saloons over the last few seasons so that's a quick car uh, that as I say is in fifth position overall uh, is in Class D, so therefore they can use full race and wets or slicks, which means it is going to be that bit quicker than the other production-based cars. Uh, but even so, Andy, doing a good job. And actually, just coming up to lap, Phil Nib, who's uh, in eighth position overall. So it's not going to be long before I think uh, Jason West has put a lap on the, all the field behind him. Uh, yes, that uh, seems to be the case, doesn't it? Their, um, the BMW comes out of uh, Village and uh, running inside the top five overall, as you quite rightly said. Uh, Class B lead battle now getting closer as well. Dark Side Motorsport and Capture Motorsport. Three seconds between them. So, strange, in the first stint of the race, Dark Side seemed the quicker of the two. Capture, of course, lost time because of their stop-go penalty uh, for jumping the start. 
essentially. Um, but even after that, they didn't seem quite as quick as Dark Side Motorsports. Scott Parkin was at the wheel in the first stint, uh, but that now has changed around in stint number two and capture starting to come right back at them. The lap times that time around, uh, well, actually completely disproved by theory <laughs> because two seconds quicker that time with Dark Side uh, traffic, I suspect, playing his part there. And uh, we see there Jason West just lapping Stuart Thompson, who is this year's sports specials champion. He got seven class wins during the course of the year in his MK Indy. So he just turns his way there through Cox Corner. He's uh, in Team 10, which is Run Baby Run, which is full of sports specials uh, team cars. And he's just being lapped there by the car that's still got the fastest lap of uh, Wade Eastwood. But interestingly, Andy, he, we haven't got close to that 2.11 as he gets very... Oh, yes, and I think he's a bit frustrated by the traffic there. Um, but Wade Eastwood hasn't beaten that 2 minutes 11 we saw a few laps ago now. Uh, no, that was uh, John Hobbs. And um, what have you spotted there, There's Josh? There's a bit of something on the road, oh, yes. isn't there? Only a small bit of something. Uh, <laughs> yes. Technical but insight here <laughs> on Alpha Life. <laughs> yes. Uh, I can tell you're not a mechanic, Josh. Uh, <laughs> yes, whatever it is, it's supposed to be attached to a car, and it's not. So someone's missing a bit of bodywork. Hopefully nothing too significant. Uh, the uh, 29 car comes through. I, I suspect the reason that we're not now in, uh, seeing those fastest laps come in is exactly what we just saw. He's in traffic. Uh, you might occasionally get a clearer lap than you've been having and uh, you're then able to put in a, a proper lap time on, on the slick tyres. But in traffic, of course, you're going to lose a little bit more time, especially on slicks, having to go on to the, uh, the darker side of the road. So uh, he heads down towards Abbey Corner and is still a good chunk, a minute or so, behind Royal Motorsports number 15 car uh, that runs in third position. Lead gap uh, continuing to uh, go out because it was a very slow lap again last time, was it not for RJ Motorsport 2, a 248.8 suggests a pit stop. Yeah, I would say so. I think you're right there, Andy. So finally, it would appear um, we've had that uh, pit stop um, from RJ Motorsport, the Josh Smith uh, run team. So we shall see who uh, comes out uh, for them next. But uh, certainly in this first couple of hours, uh, they, the Doris NWH team, which are in their third stint, pulling well clear. Best part of a lap now, I'd suggest, Andy, ahead of the rest. They are, aren't they? They're looking extremely strong. A minute and 29 was their gap. That will now go out, though, as you said, because RJ Motorsport have just uh, brought their number 30 car into the pit lane. I wonder whether they'll hang on to uh, second place yeah. or not. I think they've just come through and just set a personal best lap yeah, on that outlap, a 2.14.7. So immediately uh, going quickly. So that's a gap to watch, but it's a minute and a half, basically, uh, between the top two. If we see one of the uh, 116 trophy cars there, which is Toby Partridge, and he's just about uh, to be passed by one of the Type R trophy cars, which is Mitchell Hale uh, in the motor Motion Motorsport team car, just getting past a Too Fast, Too Furious BMW 116, and they head into Abbey Corner once again. Indeed so. Uh, worth pointing out as well, those four radicals we're talking about at the front of the field, all on slightly different handicaps. It's actually two laps credit for the number 29. So uh, the 29 car may be fourth on the road, but it's actually ahead of the other three radicals right now on the handicap. But of course, as Ian was making the point earlier on, all of the other cars also have their own handicaps. And in theory, it should all be very close at the end of the race. That was all very close at uh, Village Corner. 31C getting elbowed out wide. That was Maxine Nichols. And uh, she bounces her way back onto the road having nearly been assaulted uh, by the uh, Honda Civic there. So the latest handicap uh, positions as you were mentioning that is the Mazda Mitzfits team so yeah. there's 69 who lead the way which is Simon Walker Hansel, Stephen Reese, Alex Wilkinson Hughes, uh, William Picard, Dicko Favo and James McCann. Uh, in second place is team one so RAF uh, team flywheel are up there now that's Chris Slater, Alex Smith, Simon Frowen. Um, and David Russell, and then in third place is 41, which is the Mark IV MX-5 racing team, uh, which is made up of Ben Taylor, Paul Sheard, and Andrew Pretorius. That's the top three as we ride on board with Maxine Nichols as she comes up across the line. Uh, indeed so, and our ro race leaders on the road still not factoring anywhere near the front, are they? So they are uh, some way back with multiple laps to be gained uh, as uh, they're only being credited with one extra lap whereas there are some cars out there being given a 30 nearly 40 lap head start that was a car 
which is the wrong way, I think, in the gravel trap coming out of Cop's corner, hopefully having not quite made the barriers. A 209.69 now from Wade Eastwood, because we mentioned he hadn't done a quicker lap. <laughs> yes. He's just gone a couple of seconds faster, so that's another better lap, and that's another 10 seconds faster than the Royal Motorsports car in third place. So from the best part of two laps down on that car, he's now only 75 seconds, so Wade Eastwood is pulling that gap back uh, very much so to those uh, in front as into the pit lanes come Johnny Hayes in that BMW M2 that we were looking at earlier so therefore they will bring their next car out on onto the circuit but uh, I think Andy's coming towards the end of your stint so what have you made of the first two hours of this race? Uh, thoroughly enjoying it yes it is madness and I still have no idea who's going to win the race which is sort of the point of the handicap isn't it it's all going to uh, come good right at the end but uh, the first two hours have gone by very very quickly and actually this is uh, one of the cars I'm really fascinated <laughs> by this class B battle is getting really really close so uh, I'm going to step aside now we'll have a, a quick commentator change but my eyes will still be glued uh, to the battle at the front of class B and I wonder how close it'll be uh, when you next hear from me in another hour Thanks, uh, Andy. So great to have Andy McEwen uh, here with us at the Burkett this year. We've got Ian Soman coming in uh, in a moment. Let's uh, have a look at the overall order on Scratch as we've looked at the handicap. Leading the way is number 14, uh, so that's Doris NWH. So that's the team uh, of Roger Bromley, Mark Williams, Shane Stoney and Ryan Harper. Ellum in second place is Team 30, which is RJ Motorsport. With, um, team two, which is Ash Hicklin, Leon Morrell, Matt Jones and Charles Hall. Uh, then in third place is 15, which is Royal Motorsport, which is Chris Preen, John McLeod and Ben Stone. Then in fourth position is 29, which is RJ Motorsport 1, made up of Alistair Smart, Charles Graham and Wade Eastwood. In fifth position, number 12, which is the prep and play team of Russell Dack, Paul Wood, James Card and Jason West, the BMWs. Then in sixth place is 48, which is Darkside Motorsport, which is made up of Scott Parkin, Ryan Parkin and Dan Sylvester. In seventh position is number 16, which is Capture Motorsport, uh, the TCR cars of Will Beach, Andrew Shepard, Mark Grice, Sylvain Gintoli and Colin Gillespie. In eighth position is number three, which is Triple A's, which is Andrew Raff, Andrew Etheridge, um, Phil Nibb and Christopher Etheridge. In ninth position is 51, which is Area Motorsport with uh, the team of Luke Handley, David Vincent, Rob Baker and Jonathan Packer and completing the top 10, number 32, which is Data Motorsport, which is Axel Van Niederveen, Marco Anastasi and uh, Mauricio Skiglio. But we welcome Ian back to the box. Thanks, Josh. And uh, having been outside, it is most unburkit like <laughs> weather. I mean, looking out of our contra box window now, the skies are pretty clear, blue skies, and it is warm as well. It feels more like, I don't know, um, September than the end of October, if, if, if not even a bit more summery than that. It's uh, very pleasant out there and long may that continue for the remainder of this race. Obviously we have had that one safety car period while, uh, while I was uh, off duty temporarily, but uh, hopefully no more of those. It was unfortunate that we had that about 15 minutes, wasn't it, of caution period while the uh, tyre barriers were, were being repaired after Paul Hinson's uh, BMW from the Three Amigos connected with it. That's a shame for that team because there's only two amigos, Adam Reid and Dave Drinkwater, left. And they lost about four laps, I think, as well. So that's yes. uh, going to put them out of any handicap contention, I would think. Yes, that's a, a great shame for them, having been so successful with a couple of handicap wins in the past for that team. Have a look at Nigel Brown there, who uh, told us it's his 38th season this year, which is uh, quite extraordinary, isn't it? And I think he's been at the Burkett most of those years as well. So great to have uh, him here. He was just on road there with Finn Jones and his Volkswagen Golf. Yes, I mean, he has been racing in kit cars and sports specials as it's been for about the last decade now. Uh, as you say, for, for nearly 40 years, drive from Birmingham. And uh, he's a typical 750 Motor Club stalwart. He's got into racing that category and he's never come back. What have you spotted? There's yellow flags into Cop's Corner again. We saw the live snatch there a little bit earlier on, so we'll see if uh, similar uh, happens this time. Just out of shot, I think, as Nigel Brown, who we were just talking about, heads into that part of the circuit. Yes, uh, Dave Goddard, uh, one of our commentary colleagues, commenting on the live stream, he's saying, Sylvain Gintoli, the ex-World Superbike champion, yes, <laughs> the very same. Uh, hopefully we'll hear from him during the course uh, of the race. Uh, so, uh, someone who's experiencing the Burkitt, certainly. 
for the uh, first time. Let's head down to the pit lane. Uh, Lewis Beals has got one of the drivers from the Red Rascal team. Well, the Holly Burkett relay race is a handicap event and the leader up until ooh, uh, for about the first hundred minutes was Red Rascal's William Hayden. William, ah, you did a good first, didn't we, a Mazda? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit sketchy, to be fair. Um, the first hour, I'd say, was a bit scary, really. There was no grip whatsoever, so I was just holding on, basically, for dear life. Um, whilst everyone else was spinning off, I was just keeping the car on the track, just keeping banging in consistent laps, basically. Um, and yeah, I was pleased to find out when I come in that we were first. I didn't think I was going that well, but just like I say, with these endurance races, just keeping consistent is key. So as long as you're consistent, then you know you're going to be somewhere up in the lead. Well, I noticed there are six cars in your team. Were you doing about an hour each? Yeah, that's the plan. So six drivers, three cars. So we're going to do an hour each. And then obviously, if we have any issues, then we'll be ready. I'll be back in the car right at the end just to do the last stint if anything goes wrong, basically. But um, Fingers crossed we have a clean race and we'll uh, see ourselves on the podium at the end of it. Well, that's the main thing. And um, Peter Williams, did you say, was out now? He is now. He's out now. He's just banging in clean laps. Unfortunately, he's a little bit slower than me, so we've dropped down to sixth, I think, now. But um, still, it's like I say, as long as we don't have any dramas, bang the hours in, we'll see where we finish, basically. And the Mazda, is it fella reliable? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like all these other fancy cars. The Mazda's simple. Four wheels, a motor, none of this electronic ABS and all traction control of that. It's a piece of cake to run, so all you've got to do is chuck some fuel in it, bang the right setup, and it's easy. I take it the right foot is the traction control. It is. It's, uh, you've got to have a very delicate right foot, especially in the conditions that we were had at the start. It was uh, very scary, to put the least. So you've got a nice and feather of the throttle, and uh, yeah, you're, you're all right, basically. OK, William, thanks very much, and good luck for the rest of the day. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Thank you very much. So that is it from Radical Rascals here down in uh, Pit 9A, not as in the Program 11C. Anyway, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much indeed, Lewis. So uh, into the third hour of the race now, and certainly good to hear from Red Rascal, who were leading the handicap at one point in the race. They uh, have won with different cars, BMWs in 2018. Uh, it was and also on the podium in an early year as well, but it's a team that has evolved over the years. Also involved in that team, Peter Williams, uh, Lee Phillips, Russell Clark, Kevin Dengate and Tim Dahl. See the uh, dark side team here, which is Dan Sylvester out in the Audi TT. I uh, understand the team have got two T uh, Audi uh, TTs with us uh, this weekend, uh, which uh, we normally just have the one, don't we, in the Club Enduro Championship. And that uh, they are still ahead of Capture Motorsport, who uh, Andy was talking about uh, through that stint. And it looks like it's still uh, Colin uh, Gillespie uh, in that car. So it feels like a Club Enduro race there, doesn't it, at the front of Class B on the scratch results? It does a little bit, doesn't it? There's uh, a few... Club Enduro representatives getting themselves uh, together and it's good that we have the representation from a lot of the different 750 Motor Club Championships as well as drivers from uh, other categories that race uh, elsewhere. Uh, all very welcome to take on 750 Motor Club membership and join to take part in the Burkitt Really Yellow flags there halfway along the Hamilton Strait so someone has presumably gone off at Abbey. That's a static camera we have there, so we can't uh, have a look to see exactly what might have gone on. But someone, it looks like, has gone off uh, to Abbey, the right-hand, which is the first corner on the uh, when the races are being run out safety of the car. wing. And now we have the safety car as well. So possibly, <laughs> actually, it wasn't an incident at Abbey per se, but uh, flags out for the uh, for the safety car being called into action. We've not seen Josh. What has caused that yet? No, that's right. It happened at the beginning of hour two, and now it's happened at the beginning of hour three, uh, when the safety car periods uh, have occurred. So we'll await to see if we get some information. The safety cars come out. Earlier on, it was interesting, Ian, because the safety car started waving people through, and then it stopped, which I right. thought was a bit unusual, because normally we sort of just get the safety car out on track, don't we? And then that, where, it's, where it comes out, it comes out. Yes, in the Burkitt, we don't usually tend to worry about picking up... Uh, the leader uh, as such because it's quite difficult to do that <laughs> probably is as good a reason as any for, for, for not doing that uh, so 
Uh, safety car out for the time being. We'll see how long it's going to be out for. It's the second time it's appeared during the course of this race, which is still being led at the moment by Team 14, Doris NWH at the moment. And they're a minute and a half at the moment, roughly ahead of everyone else, although that might be confessed by the safety car. Second place at the moment is uh, Auto Motorsports 2. Uh, number 30, third, 15, World Motorsports, fourth, number 29, uh, RJ Motorsport, one, and Prep and Lay, G Sport, fifth overall in number 12, uh, as things are done. I think th all the first four cars now are on the lead lap. I think we're down to three on the lead lap at one point, but good stint from Wade Eastwood in the uh, RJ Motorsport, one, 29, has got them back onto the lead lap, I reckon, now. Um, but possibly only just, and I think it possibly the case as well that we might have some teams uh, pitting for uh, driver and car changes at the moment because uh, a safety car might be a, an opportunity to do that, Josh. Yeah, it looks like RJ Motorsports might have done that because Royal Motorsports are up to second. So we saw that positional change, I think, last time in the safety car period where they made pit stops at different times. Um, but uh, I think, in fact, Ian, the, the Doris car so far ahead, it's only two on the lead lap at the okay. moment. But now RJ Motorsport 1, who were two laps down, are only one lap down. Yep. Um, so there's uh, Raw Motorsport, so they're in second place. Thank you, Paul. But as you say, this might bring that gap right down, because it looked like uh, the uh, Doris uh, team were also in that uh, queue. Uh, there's bits of something. Is, is <laughs> that like the thing that you could see in the road? That, that, that was Beckett. That was this Beckett. Is, this That's isn't Beckett. No, it's not. So there's... A bit of is that is it a bit of a bit of turf attached there as well, is there not? By the looks of it, yeah, uh, what what whatever that is. Answers <laughs> on a postcard <laughs> or in the comments on the uh, the YouTube live stream, please. <laughs> um, and there's a mini there which has got some trim hanging off it on the right front. So I wonder if that's had an altercation with another driver, another car out there. So one car that hasn't come through recently in is 64, which is the CMC Motorsport team, the MGs which uh, last we saw, that was Mark Bellamy, but the team that's also got Cole Green, as well as Jason Hughes, um, Jason Burgess and Tyler Ballard. But down in the pit lane, uh, in the Rotec Racing Garage, I think is Lewis Bills. Thank you very much, Josh. Yeah, we've got uh, Rob Lyons here. Rob, um, you said you haven't been out yet, so uh, you've missed the wet weather. Do you think you're going to catch some dry? Yeah, hopefully it's going to be uh, dry for the rest of the afternoon. Sun's out, blue skies. Uh, our team's struggling a little bit, but we're, I think we're, we seem to be coming down a bit. Um, the safety car doesn't stay out too long. Hopefully we can get out there and uh, put some good laps in. So what's the, uh, what's the issue with, um, with the team then? You've got problems? Uh, I think it was just the wet weather, to be honest. Um, difficult conditions this morning for our first driver, um, sliding around quite a bit, but um, we, we did okay. We definitely pulled, pulled forward a few places from the start. Who started? Uh, James Darzell, who's in my car as well, we're sharing today. <laughs> so uh, you, yeah, when are you going out? Uh, I think after this one here, so I might, I'm going to be last out, but um, I was just glad that James brought it back in one piece so I can actually get to have a drive today. Well, that is always a thing if you've got, if you've got two drivers in a car. If, if one has an accident, uh, it can shorten everybody else's uh, enjoyment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and mechanical breakdowns as well, because the car's not been tested whatsoever. We've just turned up today and hope for the best. So it's all going OK so far. OK, Rob, and uh, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, that's uh, Rob Lyons down here in the Rotec Racing's BMW Trice Team 62. That's the action there. And back to you in the commentary. Thanks, Lewis. And there we can see, I don't think that was necessarily the cause of the safety car, but it's happened since then. And that is one of the pair of TTs that has, uh, has come to a stop. So that is from Team 48, is it not? Darkside Motorsport. Yeah, that's right. Last week we saw it was Dan Sylvester, wasn't it? Uh, at the wheel, this car that on scratch was leading Class B by a small margin over Capture Motorsport. But interesting, it's when the safety car comes out, it seems that that car's uh, had the issue here. Yeah. Um, which uh, up to that point uh, hadn't been a problem. Now, RJ Motorsport 2 have just lost another place, uh, which... Now, is that part of a radical? Uh, always my next question. Oh. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, it, it, <laughs> we're hearing 
But it, there's a car stopped at Abbey was the problem. That car hasn't come through, has it? RJ Motorsport 2. Mm. Yeah, its last lap was a quick one. I think it was Charles Hall in Liam Morrell's car. And that looked a little bit like the colour of yes, the Morrell Radical. It did. So uh, we'll wait and see uh, if that car does reappear. But they've dropped to fourth place now, which actually means the Doris team's a lap ahead of the rest. So yeah. Doris NWH lead by a full lap for the first time. So that's Team 30, so possibly if Lewis can hear us, he might want to head down to the RJ Motorsport garage, RJ Motorsport 2, to see what uh, what the mood's like there, because we think it's possibly their, their driver, Charles Hall, that's uh, been the initiator of this safety car period. Uh, now we've got three marshals on the case, so the Audi is moving. It took more than one to, to, to get it away, but um, the question... I guess the question is, what do they do with the next hour? Ah, well, the cavalry is on the way. Yeah, and you see more bits of car are being carried by the marshals in the background at Abbey Corner. Yes, there. Th they're building a radical, I think, aren't they? <laughs> uh, for, for that marshal's post. Yeah, I'm sure that is the problem because there's eight minutes now between fourth and fifth. So that suggests that uh, RJ Motorsport 2 haven't been around the circuit for the last eight minutes. Yeah. So I, that's uh, a, another drama for one of the uh, contenders here. And uh, there's been a few. There's that Mini. That's got a bit of trim uh, off uh, the uh, the side of the car as well. So it's, it's a busy place, isn't it? Even the full Silverstone Grand Prix circuit with 70 cars. I guess making it more tricky now, Ian, because we've got this dry racing line, but damp off line makes actually overtake it even more sketchy than it probably was earlier when everything was damp. Yes, uh, absolutely. It's tricky, isn't it? Because the drivers will need to judge the grip as they go are going past. Uh, slower cars as well and so we will uh, keep an eye on that we've got the handicap positions after two hours they've just been published so that was about f what, 15 minutes ago but uh, Josh do you want to yeah. give us the rundown on the handicap positions after two hours so it's still Mazda Misfits leading 69 that's on two bulletins that they've been ahead so that's the Simon Walker Hansel Stephen Rees Alex Wilkinson Hughes, William Picard, Nico Favo, and James McCann, team of Mazda MX-5s. In second place is Triple A's Racing, Team 3, who are one of the ones quite high up on the overall as well. So that's the Lotus uh, of Andrew Raff and the BMWs of Andrew Etheridge the, and Christopher Etheridge and the Sayat there of uh, Phil Nib. But some dramas there in the pit lane. You yeah, you? that was the car that, right in the early stage of the race, the Matthew Stilling car that had its uh, bonnet flip up and uh, damaged the... Uh, the screen, so it doesn't look like that car's going to get back out into the race, unfortunately. Okay, continuing down in third place, number one, the RAF team flywheel, the team of previous winners of Chris Slater and his Peugeot, the Honda of Alex Smith, the Ford of Simon Flowen and the BMW of David Russell. In fourth place is 58, the Army sports car team of Tom Sykes and his BMW, Blair Thompson's Honda and the Madsters of Alex Rivette and Doug Inglis. In fifth position is 21, which is DH Racing, Danny Hobson's team, uh, which is Joe Jessup, Dan Chapman, Jeff Humphreys, and Joe McMullen in their Honda Civics. In uh, sixth position is 54, the first of the Z Cars team, uh, although it's got that Alfa Romeo a part of it, Barry McMahon, but also the BMW Z4s of Darren Duke, Steve Wood, and Chris Murphy. In seventh place is 59, which is the Royal Navy team. Uh, which is Adam um, Dewis and his BMW, Sebastian Unwins, a similar car, then the Mazdas of Gareth Moss and Simon Vernon. In um, eighth position is 34, which is TSR, the Volkswagens of Mark Jones, Rob Ellick, Tony Rogers and Finn Jones. In ninth position is 55, the Breakdancers team. Uh, which is the Catrums of Alan Curtis, Harry Err and Tim Steele. Oh, and then completing the top 10 is 43, which is the Random Racers team of um, Andy Gay's BMW, the Lotus of Ben McCauley, William Hornsey's Peugeot and the BMW of Ed Christie. And in the meantime, the race has got back underway. So green flags are waving. I think it was that debris, certainly um, maybe a car that needed to be cleared up there at Abbey. So safety car was only out for around about 10 minutes that time uh, something like that and we're, we're back into uh, into racing again we've just given you the handicap positions after two hours we'll keep you updated on that every uh, half hour or so uh, as far as scratch is concerned yes Doris NWH team 14 now well out in front uh, of this race from the 15 car 
and now the 30 car, which is the one that we think was involved in that safety car incident, that's dropped down to fourth then, because up into, uh, into fifth, I should say, up into fourth place has gone number 12, which is the Prep and Lay uh, G Sport team. Uh, but we're going to go back down to the pit lane once again. Lewis Beals has got more for us down there. Thank you very much, Ian. Yes, we're down here in the Mini Kievs 1 and 2. From 1, Team 1, we've got Kevin Fulbrook. Good afternoon, Kevin. Good afternoon. And also, we've got Paul Clothier. Hello, Paul. Hello, hello. <laughs> right, we've just been chatting here while we've been off here. But, Paul, you, uh, you were just telling me how difficult the conditions were this morning. And uh, how many spins did, uh, did you record? Um, I think there was probably four, <laughs> maybe five, <laughs> potentially six. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's very, very slippery out there, very slippery, and uh, way above my talent. So what's the, what's the, what are the issues with the minis? Uh, lack of talent. <laughs> I can't say they're poorly prepared, because Kevin prepares them all, so the, the car's fine, it's me. Definitely. Kevin, yeah, you're being more serious. The, um, we were just talking about safety cars. We are talking about when the really wet year was 2018, no safety cars. We had one safety car last year for a very brief time. We've had several now. Conditions aren't good, are they? No, the conditions aren't good. It is really, really slippery out there. And sometimes you're going at the corner, you'll lean on it and it's all good. Do it the next time round and it's gone. It is really, really slippery. It's starting to dry up now, but it, at the moment it's really tricky. And, and, and especially if you have to lap traffic offline. Yeah, definitely. As soon as you've done that, your tyres cool down so quickly here and then you just end up spinning in the next corner or losing grip anyway. What's it like when you, uh, when you have a safety car? Um, situation what are the things you've got to look out for as a driver the speed of the other cars because when the safety catch up with the back train of the safety car they, they just suddenly all close up really quickly and you've got to be sharp on the brakes because they just suddenly come to a dead stop um, and you've got to sit there and warm the tires up as much as possible because it once soon as you go you, you just feel like you're going to end up slipping again if or spinning again as you get to the first corner so uh, yeah, yeah, Paul. So um, we were talking about heating up the rear tyres, which is which is which is the I take it the problem with the front wheel drive cars. Pretty much so. I think the, the tyre pressures were okay, um, but when I came in, the rears were actually warmer than the fronts. So I think we need to just increase the front tyre pressures by a little bit, and maybe not, maybe not the back of back uh, a bit, but uh, we should be fine in a, in a, for the next stint. So what well, we're talking about, uh, who's actually in the lead, one or two? Uh, we are. <laughs> so that's two. Two. They're up the twos. <laughs> Kevin, that's, that's not good because, you know, you prepare the cars. No, it's not good, is it? No. I mean, especially in last year. Last year we came second, so it, it just depends. We spun out from the first, first lap on here, so that knocked us down a long way. We we're trying to come back, and now we've just had another bit of damage as well in another car, so we're, it's not good to our luck this time. Yeah, yeah, second last year in the handicap, but not looking so good. Not so good this time, no. It's, it's the Burkitt. Anything goes, isn't it? You never know what's going to happen to you, what's going to happen to any of the cars. OK, Kevin, Paul, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Bye. bye. OK, and back to you in the, com in the uh, commentary position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, meanwhile, conditions certainly are drying out, Josh, because we've just seen a, a couple make that three in a row. <laughs> fastest laps. The two we had seen have gone to Team 29, which is RJ Motorsport 1, but now the best lap of the race has gone to the race leading team, Team 14. Yeah, that's right. A 2.06 uh, free, which is uh, less than two seconds outside the, what I reckon the lap record is, which was a 2.04.45 last year from Simon Freeman. But that was in the Radical SR10, which wow. is the, uh, the bigger engined car. So well, with this year, we're looking at those four Radical teams. I'd say that's the highest quality of driver we've had in the Radicals at the Burkett, yeah. possibly ever. So uh, having quick drivers uh, in most of those cars... See Ash Hicklin's out there for RJ Motorsport 2 now after that problem that the uh, team car had a little bit earlier on. And who, who do we think is in uh, Team 14 and Team 29 at well, the moment? Is it still Wade Eastwood out there for yeah. 29? Might be, and it was Shane Stoney who we last saw in 14, unless they changed in that uh, safety car period. See the Capture Motorsport Golf here, which I think is 16B um, at the moment which is the car driven by Andrew Shepherd, who we saw racing club enduro this year in the Lotus. So he's uh, converted over now to a TCR car, as so many people have done. But uh, the Volkswagen Golf here, and that's the car that he shares with Sylvain Gintoli, the uh, world superbike champion, to so just con get that confirmed as that car comes closer. I think it's B at the moment, isn't it? Yes. So that's uh, Shepherd. 
Andy Shepherd at the moment driving the Motul liveried car. Right, on to more important matters, Josh. The, the latest in the prediction competition. Um, sadly, not too many public entries, so it's really between <laughs> between the four of us in the comm team and Luke, our, uh, at the Alpha Live Supremo, uh, to give him his official title, and, uh, and Samantha Stoney as well, who's also joined in. I have to say, at the minute, we're joint leaders. <laughs> 90 points apiece, you and I. It's almost like we've been doing more 750 more club meetings uh, well, than yeah. the rest. <laughs> There's a danger, people will think we know what we're talking about. <laughs> Andy McEwen and Samantha Stoney both have 80 points. Lewis Beals has 60 points, and, and Luke Austin, only 50 points. Is that why he produces the coverage rather yeah, than Obviously, it ah, it. <laughs> it's a spinner. Uh, and oh, it's a mini. <laughs> Fancy that after the interview that we've just heard. And that is Mini Kiev's two. And he's at 27D at the moment, which is Matthew Shears, I think, if I can read all that way away on my uh, entry list. And he has got a black cross on a yellow background on the back of his car. So Mini is obviously not the most easy cars to drive around Silverstone at the moment. Quite glad mine's not going anywhere then. <laughs> but uh, hopefully they're enjoying themselves nevertheless. Uh, th there's the other one with quite a bit of damage actually, isn't it? So this is, it's not going well for Mini Kevs. Yeah, cause it, it, at first it looked like it was just a bit of trim, wasn't it? But that's had a heavy dint in the door, hasn't it? The 26 C. John car. Wyatt uh, at yeah. the wheel. Yeah. But yeah, that's he's, we ha they said they had contact, but yeah, that was quite a bit of contact, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Unfortunately for them, but the car's still running. So they uh, continue on their way. As they've got a bit of clear track ahead. Sounds like there's a V8 car out there by the sounds of the uh, Alpha Live uh, sound effects. Certainly does. We can hear the uh, <laughs> effects mic very clearly at this uh, part of the circuit. That is a heavy dent in the door, isn't it? I'm sure we'll have felt that. Will uh, the driver, John Wyatt, 26. Hopefully, his name's in big letters on the side of the car, which yeah. makes life easier for us. Exactly. Uh, and I can see just in the background of shot, there's at least one radical about to uh, about to come through. Looks like there might have been hit clean. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. And he just uh, looks like around them as well. Is that um, BMW that I spotted uh, earlier on in the uh, assembly area, uh, which uh, looks uh, quite uh, exciting? Slippery surface flags down here. Yeah, here it is. It's 36C, I think. Oh, and Ashley Hicklin has lost it in Team 30A. That's uh, Ash Hicklin that's gone round in the Radical. He's got his car and his team back up to fourth position, um, ahead of Prep and Lay, but uh, has spun out and he's going to lose time and possibly the position again there. He tries to uh, get back into the race. The, uh, the BMW that I was mentioning he was around was Paul Bryden's M3 Solution F. The uh, former Northern, Northern sports car champion, quite an uh, exciting BMW. Not uh, so exciting though for Ash Hicklin, having that uh, spin. Ash Hicklin, who uh, this year was a double winner in his class here at Silverstone uh, in the Bike Sports Championship, as we can go back on board uh, here, going through Beckett's. Well, I think it's Matthew Welford in his Toyota MR2. Yeah, uh, in the Don't Hang About. Uh, entry, and he's uh, just heading on to the hang straight by the looks of it, uh, to, uh, to continue uh, in his car. So that's Matthew Welford in Team 31A, uh, and uh, he, uh, just having a look at his back, is this the first time he's done the, uh, the Burkitt relay? Oh, and we've now lost an MX-5, it's a Mark IV, it is I'm afraid. Andrew, Andrew Batorius. That's 41C, yep, Andrew Pretorius. Uh, he has lost it, I'm afraid, into the gravel at the Vale. We saw the slippery surface flags, we saw the swim from Ash Hicklin, so obviously this part of the track in particular is difficult. But the marshals uh, are going to try and get that car out, but those rear wheels are well They're going to get a well the gravel, aren't they? <laughs> That's the problem they're going to get there. Andy Pretorius, he's been racing in the Track Attack Race Club, he's been racing since 2015. Uh, mostly with Max 5 and the Armed Forces Race Challenge and he's hoping to continue to race in uh, uh, Mark 4s next year but let's head down to the pit lane once again and I think it's Team 31 we're going to hear from with Lewis. Thank you very much Ian. Yeah, we're just passing. I saw Maxine Nichols. Good afternoon Maxine. Good afternoon. 
How's, how's your day gone? Lovely. What's going on with the weather? It's well, been a while. I, it's been a while since we've seen blue skies at the Burke, I think. Yeah, it, it can be tricky here at Silverstone, can. can't it? it? It can, definitely. Do you know what, though? It is still slippery out there in places. Um, just sort of two, three laps before the end of my stint, I was like, yes, it's drying, it's not so greasy, and, and it was my time over. <laughs> yeah, so I hear you're not going to race with pink next year. Do what? I, th I thought you were not going to race with pink. I'm not, I'm not. I'm going to use um, like a Tiffany blue. So it's going to be back, black and Tiffany blue. It's fading really bad and it's too, too much of a girly pink now that I need to uh, change it. Still going to run with the, with the MR2s? Yeah, definitely. Um, it just feels like home, really. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely be back. Haven't done terribly this year, but um, unfortunately I had a little bit of an incident uh, on the start at Alton Park, which messed up my championship a little bit. But I've had, a, I've had fun. I've had some good races. Okay. So you were telling me you were stacked up behind the safety car and doing the end of your stint. Not a good place to be. No. Um, so I realised we were third and then there was me and um, my opponent, Jim, and we're very similar pace at the, at the last few races and uh, our teammates were bang on next to each other. So they came in at the same time and we left at the same time and we had a slower car in front of us both and obviously once the safety car had come in everybody that had bunched up just went hell for liver and uh i felt like i was going backwards yeah that's the that is the that's the difficulty isn't it here at the burkett because yeah. uh, the safety car just picks anybody up it does and i looked around today and i thought there's actually i felt like it was a more level playing field with um some smaller engine cars but i tell you it didn't feel like it out there <laughs> I came in and I was like, they were like, did you enjoy it? I was like, it's soul destroying. <laughs> but hopefully my uh, second session I might get in the mix of things. So, Okay, Maxine, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the nice weather. Oh, we will. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, back to you, Ian, in the studio. Thanks, Lewis, and good to hear from Maxine. Still, that Andy Pretorius uh, MX-5 Mark IV is stuck in the gravel trap hopefully that's not a metaphor and uh, that means that the safety car is back out yeah perhaps uh, though i think they can do live snatches uh, or traditionally at the Vale. i think with those cars spinning and we saw the slippery surface flags uh, probably not the uh, the best place to do that under local yellows so therefore safety car is necessary uh, again we had two in quite quick succession this time and you can see the field starting to bunch up behind the 750 Motor Club safety car. And interestingly, they've picked up one of the cars we were talking about doing well in the handicap, which is the Red Rascal team of Lee Phillips uh, at the wheel at the moment. So potentially not helping their, their cause. But uh, like I was saying to, uh, to Andy, and because there's so many cars, if you're the back of the train, it's not exactly a great place to be either. That's right. Now, did I see 44B, I think, in the second uh, slot, which should be Toby Partridge uh, there in the uh, Too Fast, Too Furious team of BMW uh, 116s? Is that uh, Adam Reed's yes. Free Amigos car with some damage? Yes, he's been grouched on the front, hasn't he? So he's had, uh, had some dramas as well. So uh, that team's already lost Paul Hinson. Uh, former MR2 champion during the course of this race and obviously they're twice handicapped when as I don't think they're going to be doing that today. Both Hinton and Reed have put this six-cylinder engine in their cars for this year and it's potentially not worked uh, out as well as the standard four cylinders had in these uh, two successful seasons. No, that's right. Ford uh, 4K there as well, which is uh, good to see that out. Sort of almost at the opposite end of the, uh, the scale from some of the radicals that we see. Of course, the uh, situation here will be that uh, they'll try and find a gap in the traffic to get uh, this vehicle recovered. But uh, when you've got 70 cars, and you can see the, the, the leading cars there, they are past the, uh, past the wing, uh, it's quite difficult to get the gap in the traffic to get the recovery. Because you know, also you have Marshall getting a broom ready there, so maybe, maybe there's some debris or something that he wanted to, to sweep up off the circuit as well. Yeah, they would have noticed uh, all those cars going off there, so perhaps just checking the track is okay. 
Uh, nothing's been uh, put down. But I guess that's the slowest corner really on the lap, isn't it? Coming from the high speed sections. So a part of the track where you have to get the car slowed down. So Team 14 still uh, out there in front of this race. More than a lap clear of uh, everybody else. That's the Doris NWH team. And then it's uh, Raw Motorsports second, RJ Motorsports one and two. Third and fourth, respectively, then Prep and Lay and G Sport fifth. Then the first of the non Class D cars, so it's then the Class B cars that are up next. Then you've got the Triple A's racing, team, si uh, team three, that are in sixth position. That's Rath, Etheridge, Nib and uh, Etheridge, so Andrew and Chris have Etheridge there. They are in sixth place overall. Yes, yeah, so they've moved up, haven't they? Because they were behind Capture and Darkseid. Yes. Uh, who Darkseid didn't lose as much time as they might have done with that uh, problem. But no, because, they, again, presumably they out. saw the stream. Yeah, sure. And they saw their car stationary, and very quickly they'll have, uh, have got another car out there. And traditionally, Darkseid have their own live stream as well, don't they? Which, uh, yes. which would help even more. Uh, uh, absolutely right. So uh, they'll be very quickly getting their cars uh, back. Of course, they went well race. last year, didn't they? And then the car broke with about half an hour to go, if you remember, the uh, the Volkswagen. So Darkside looking uh, to improve on last year. That, now the snatch tractor is down there at uh, Vale. As you can see the marshals that Ian mentioned with the brooms. So while we're... While we're under the safety car, let's head down to Triple A's racing, who we were here, uh, talking about with Lewis Bills, who's in the pits again. Yeah, thank you, guys. I'm down here in Triple A's racing. Andrew Rath. Andrew, you were supposed to be down in your Lotus Europa, but um, not, you had troubles, I believe. Yeah, a bit of engine trouble. Um, spark plug went missing yesterday. So I've jumped in to say I qualified that this morning, and uh, luckily I've got a teammate who's willing to share his car. So, uh, yeah. So you're showing with Philip Nib. Yes, that's right, with Phil Nib, yeah. And Andrew Etheridge and Chris Etheridge are sharing the BMW, which is behind us right this moment. Yeah, that's it, the blue red M3 right behind us. Um, that's going to go out next. Obviously, he's running got two cars. Phil's going to try and extend this stint as long as he can. And uh, we'll crack on with a BMW and try and do the same thing, and I'll jump in a set at the end. Oh, that's good. That's good. Anything happens to one of the cars, that's going to be tight, isn't it? Very tight. We are trying to keep on so our nose is clean and so we'll behave ourselves but uh, it's going all right at the moment but it's, it's only just past halfway so you yeah, know at the two arm at the two arm mark you were second in on, on handicap so mm, right. you're doing something right yeah clearly yeah <laughs> well i've mainly sat in the pits and watched at the moment so obviously that helps <laughs> so at the moment so phil is out at the moment yeah phil nibs out at the moment he's uh, doing really good times his fastest lap times he's just done so he's getting quicker and quicker which we like and um, just needs to continue it really. Solid stint will be good to go. So the BMW will go next, then you? Correct, yeah, that's it. That's the one you well, that's, that's probably the easiest way if there's only two cars. You don't have much choice really, <laughs> is it? I'll sort of stand around waiting, yeah. Cool. Uh, have you done the bucket many times? Yeah, we did. We finished last year. I think we got third in Class D last year. So we had a good run last year. We've done it four or five years in a row. Uh, we've sort of the same drivers, different team personnel, but yeah, I've had a good good run at it this year. I think it's, it feels good so far. And we had a good result last year, so we enjoy it. It's a good good way to finish the season. Okay, Andrew, thanks very much for that, and best of luck for the rest of the day. Okay, take care. Cheers, cheers, guys. And uh, thank you to Andrew, and uh, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much indeed. So this is where the incident was that caused the safety car there at the Vale, and you can see now that is uh, some cement. The line of cement just has been put down on the. Uh, on the circuit, uh, and so that's possibly what caused Ash caught first Ash Hicklin, and then Andy Pretorius out. Ultimately, Pretorius it was that got stuck in the gravel trap there. So hopefully, um, we will be green flag racing at the end of this lap, Josh. Yeah, looks uh, looks that way. So therefore, the Mark Four MX5 racing team may have lost uh, some time with that uh, drama there. The uh, the other drivers in that team are Ben Taylor. Uh, and Paul Sheard, so just the three of those uh, latest generation of Mazda MX-5. 
I actually saw Brian Chandler last weekend. He said he was supposed to be doing it, but he managed to get out of it, <laughs> he said. Um, so he'd left uh, just the three uh, team cars there and uh, one of them uh, in the gravel, but shouldn't have much damage, should it? So one that cars back into the, uh, the paddock area, I would think that should be able to run again before the end if that's uh, needed. So the safety car lights we expect to go out, and it's still the two, probably two of the slowest cars right at the front, isn't it? Because you've got the Mark 1 Master MX-5 and uh, the BMW 116. So they, like Maxine Nichols said earlier, they're going to have cars coming past them at some rate, I suspect. But uh, that's uh, all part uh, of this event. And for some of the radical teams, they're towards the back of this queue, so they'll be working their way through. I think the only one towards the front is Ash Hicklin, who's the one trying to play catch up. I had a comment on the YouTube feed saying, Is that Jimmy Broadbent on commentary? And I'm tempted to say yes, because that would probably help our viewer numbers. <laughs> uh, right, uh, three hours, 22 minutes of this race left to go, and the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap. It's the third safety car intervention we've had during the course of this race and we'll go back green flag racing uh, again uh, for how long who knows um, but uh, certainly that uh, fluid that had been dropped down at the veil will have been dressed now and uh, we'll be able to go back racing again under normal conditions and we will see no doubt some of the quicker cars like though the radicals uh, coming through the uh, queue of traffic here uh, I think we've seen Hickens car through but no more. There's a big sort of gap in the in the line there, isn't there, Josh? Yeah, there was uh, for whatever reason. Perhaps some cars making their way into the pit lane. See uh, here, that's the BMW that's in fifth place, isn't it? The Prep and Lay uh, team, and that looked rather like uh, James Card's car, I'd suggest, which would be 12C, very experienced front-running BMW driver. As uh, the field work their way then onto the hangar straight and James Card coming through the order in the, the best of the production type cards. But as I sort of noticed earlier in, they're one of the few of those teams that have elected to run slick or racing wet tyres. Most other car teams are in Class B, aren't they, for the List 1 tyres? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Good to have these uh, big BMWs, quick cars, not that much lower than the Radicals really, are they? Especially at the start of the race, they got, I think, up to fourth at one stage. Yeah, no, in, in those conditions they would have, uh, have come into their own uh, a little bit, relatively speaking, compared to the, uh, compared to the Radicals, I think. But uh, they'll probably fall a bit further back in the, in the dry, but as you can see from this shot, it illustrates it quite well. Offline, it really is quite damp still, isn't it? There's a couple... There's almost like two lanes of dry line, isn't there, down the uh, down the Hamilton Strait underneath the uh, the glass footbridge there. Yeah, so many different lines are being taken, and obviously that means it probably dries the track quicker than it would do on a normal race day. Then we're going to go four abreast up towards Abbey Corner, which, uh, yeah, I think the, the guy in the Gulf thought well, that wasn't a great idea and uh, backed out of it, which I think was pretty wise. No, I, think I'd, uh, I think I'd agree with that. So, just uh, watching cars at the moment come through the uh, the village section. There's the uh, the leader in, which I think is now Roger Bromley at the wheel by the looks of it, in the car that Mark Williams drove earlier. So the uh, the ex uh, Brisker Formula One stock car driver and radical champion leads the way on his return, as he was telling us earlier. And uh, it's something is totally different to what he's done in the past. Yeah, and it's uh, it's great to have him uh, on the grid and uh, enjoying taking part in this race and, and doing very well in it as well by the looks of it. Here's a good little scrap going on for, for track position at the moment. It involves the number 33 Golf. That's one of the TSR performance cars. In fact, it's car A as well, which is... Uh, now they changed their numbers around it. That's Tony Rogers out in that car at the moment. He's just trying to get past Nick Charlier in the Honda Civic for MJ Motorsport, but couldn't. And they're soon going to have a couple of radicals uh, come past them. That'll probably happen on the way uh, down towards Beckett's, uh, I would think. And it's Roger Bromley going around the outside of the pair of them. Uh, he's got the Honda, but the Volkswagen, he has to duck in behind. And then the second of the radicals 
is uh, which one. Couldn't uh, quite work it out. But it looks like we could have a lap now between first and second, then lap between second and third. Uh, but we're trying to get confirmation. Oh, it's the Raw, is it the Raw car? Yeah, so this is Raw Motorsports trying to get back onto the lead lap, isn't it? Yep, indeed. And up the inside into Stowe Corner relatively easily. Uh, so you wonder if they knew that that was uh, not for track position. Roger Bromley in the 14 car that's uh, leading the race. And we work out who's out in the 15 car at the moment. Very hard to see the letters on these uh, on these radicals. They're not the, as big as the letters on some of the other cars. So it's hard to spot which one's which. I think it could be Ben Stone. Because yes. that looks a bit like his car that I would have seen racing last month at Donington in their championship finale. Uh, he went quite well there. So Ben Stone, another quick driver uh, in 15C. And now they, Roger Bromley's trying to get back that lap again as they go through the loop uh, section of the track. And there's the car that's in third place. So, yeah, there's a lap between first and second, and a lap between second and third now, Ian. Yeah, so it's fairly well spread out in terms of overall positions then on scratch, but anything can still happen. Of course, it only takes a problem for a car and then another pro car problem for the next car in quick succession to throw a team strategy into chaos. We've seen that happen before in the Burkitt six hour relay race, of course, but uh, yeah, first three cars now all on different laps at the moment. There's the 15 car picking its way through traffic now ahead on the road temporarily of the number 14 car of the overall race leader on scratch who is about to come through and complete his 63rd lap. Looks like there was a stop go penalty board out uh, there but didn't quite uh, work out who that was for. Looked like they just lapped, I think it's Ryan Parkin who's gone out in the Volkswagen Golf for Darkside Motorsport, the team that run in at 8th position uh, currently. But the uh, leaders have gone through but as Ash Hicklin got to the front of that queue he's lapping over 10 seconds faster than the three in front uh, in the 208 so the traffic makes so much different to the lap times uh, here in this race but it looks like Ben Stone is pulling clear of Roger Bromley so therefore he's got what two minutes two and a quarter minutes to try and uh, claw that gap in so I guess Roger's not too concerned about that at this stage as he turns his way through uh, Stow Corner. He was telling me earlier in a clear lap in testing he was pretty close but the race craft after having a few years away and actually doing nothing like this before yes. in a single mate radical series you don't uh, lap cars terribly often. Uh, it's a totally different thing isn't it compared to drivers who have done the Burkitt before like his teammate Shane Stoney. Yeah that's uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, right it is uh, an event uh, completely unlike uh, any other and uh, a unique challenge and it's always interesting that drivers you think oh they've had quite a bit of experience they've been around a while but they uh, that they are coming out to, to do it for the first time Rob Garifal uh, another case in point see uh, Tyler Ballard uh, no Jason Burgess isn't it in that ZR Jason Burgess goes through uh, who finished second this year in the Class A of the MG Trophy, was a seven-time race winner there. Uh, he's just gone past the uh, Porsche of Daniel Craigo. But down the pit lane, uh, Lewis Mills has found the Army Sports Car Team. Thanks very much, guys. Well, I'm down here with Blair Thompson from the Army Sports Car Racing. Fourth place on handicap, uh, Blair. That's a good run. Yeah, not too bad. Um, we had a good first stint. Um, I was out in the first stint of it, um, just picking our way through the field, really. Um, got past uh, a couple of veteran teams and um, the Navy team, and then the RAF were in front of us, and I took my opportunity to get past them. So when we went past them, it was just maintaining that gap. And then safety car happened, and it was all about trying to um, maintain it as best as we could over that. Um, but we've got rear-wheel drive cars now. Um, but the idea of putting me out in a front-wheel drive car was to obviously deal with that in the wet so yeah. yeah yeah who's out for the moment for you so it's uh, Dougie Inglis uh, that's out at the minute um, and then he's going to do another little bit uh, probably another 20 minutes or so and then kind of come in and switch to BMW uh, it's out next so yeah so a little bit of um, a, a little bit of playing around with who's go where 
uh, coming into play. A bit of tactics. Yeah, we had to shuffle around this morning because it was uh, wet and greasy. Um, put me out first because of the front wheel drive car and then we've um, stacked it so um, got the MX-5s and then the BMWs um, coming into the rear uh, so it's you know, faster cars picking up the hopefully dry track um, hopefully we can pick up again the place back up on the RAF and then hopefully pip into maybe third or second depending on the, the handicap position so yeah Yes, because there's, there's just, a, just a little bit of rivalry between the RAF, the uh, Navy and the Army, just, just a shade. Yeah, ah. just a shade, yeah. I mean, they are really successful, obviously, the RAF. Um, they've won this, you know, a countless number of times. So it is important to beat them, but it's, uh, it's a good, good banter and good, good rivalry within, the, you know, within the paddock. So it's good, good. And are, are all the crew in the, uh, are all your crew from the Army? Uh, in our team, yeah, so the Army Sports Car Racing one, it's uh, all serving soldiers. Um, we've got a veterans, uh, army veterans team as well that running today, uh, but that's actually, uh, it was going to be an army veteran solely, but it's now changed to armed forces, so we've got a couple of other guys in there as well, but uh, yeah, good competition out there as always, so yeah, it's great. Okay, have you got another stint scheduled or not? Uh, potentially at the end, uh, so it depends how the other two cars do. Um, one of the 330s potentially carrying an issue, so uh, we'll just wait and see how that pans out and then if there's space to get me out in a second stint, then great, I'll jump at the opportunity. OK, Blair, thanks very much, and uh, best of luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, and back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. And what have we got? Uh, three hours, 11 minutes to go, so coming up towards the halfway mark. Still uh, under green flag conditions here at Silverstone at the moment in this 72nd running of the Burkitt uh, six-hour relay race. And... Uh, under clear skies now, it's drying circuit, but still damp offline. It is still Doris NWH Team 14 that are leading the way by a lap, uh, pretty much from anybody else. Just under a lap, but uh, uh, that's the uh, leading team. It is Radical Team's first, second, third, and fourth at the moment. Uh, and then the fifth place team is Team 12, Prep and Lay G Sport with their BMWs. And then sixth is the Triple A's racing uh, squad of BMWs and uh, the uh, Seat Leon as well. So three hours, ten minutes to go, Josh. And uh, it's still uh, obviously a wide open race as far as the handicap is concerned. Yeah, that's right. We're just waiting for our latest uh, bulletin. I'm sure I'll be coming through shortly. But uh, that is going to run and run, isn't it, right to the chequered flag. But uh, ever so busy out on the circuit as it always is here coming down the uh, down into Brooklyn down the Wellington Strait yeah, as far as I can tell it looks like there's still 70 teams running out there I don't think we've lost anyone completely yet uh, even the team in 70th position Semprini Racing uh, they have continued to rack up laps although they've done 49 laps to the leaders 65 so 16 laps behind at the moment. I guess that's what you'd kind of expect, wouldn't you? Because there's some cars, I think, with at least 30 credit laps. And we're almost halfway through. Here is uh, Ash Hicklin, who's now caught the back of the train of cars after setting those quick lap times. The driver in fourth place. And just behind are one of the Genetta G56s. Uh, the team of them with, um, I think it's Data Motorsport, is it not, who are running those. Uh, yeah, the Alec and Axel Van Niederveen, Marco Anastasia and Mauricio Skiglio uh, team. They're running in the side of the top ten on scratch. And great to have those cars here, brand new cars basically. Uh, they run within the Genetta GT Academy. And that car's just uh, fighting with some of the Catrums at the moment, including Barry White there and his Catrum Supersport, who's at the front of that little train of cars. They're three pretty quick cars uh, there together, but the Genetta and the Catrum, uh, both British sports cars here, but very different types of car. Yeah, absolutely. And Genetta, having recently announced they will be uh, taking their championships to support the British GT Championship uh, primarily for next season. Uh, a problem for another Mazda there. John Stack. It's John Stack in 56E, but he's got his car going again. That's a car with the uh, Italian Tricolori. Striped over the uh, middle of the car. That was down at the Vale that he had his issues, but he's back into the race once again. 
Yes, the Gillettes uh, switching from the Toka package to run with Village GT for for next season. Uh, and I suppose that does uh, have some logic behind in it. There is a ladder of progression towards British GT there. Yeah, and the Ginetta G56, what those cars are based on, Ginetta, I think, already announced they're going to run a number of those cars with the V8 GT4 car in British GT next year. This is Malcolm Ederson in his Toyota MR2, the Don't Hang About team, the team run by Rogue Motorsport. And he goes up a gear, then back down a gear into Abbey Corner. And then thinks about going back up a gear, thinks about it, thinks about it. No, he's not going to go up a gear. <laughs> no. Uh, so there's uh, there he is at uh, Village round the uh, hairpin. He goes. We go back on board with him now. And as he goes through this complex, which uh, shortly will bring him back onto the Wellington Strait, back onto the national part of the circuit, the northern end of the Silverstone campus. That's the 13 car uh, out there as well, and that is the Club Racing UK team. That's Cameron Bell out there at the moment in the Page and Kirk backed car. Back on board with uh, Malcolm, who's signalling, I think, for someone to pass him on his left. Do you reckon they can see it? I don't know. There's a <laughs> car there, and it is the, I think that's the Scrivens Ginetta, is it? Uh, the Eiffel Ginetta, is it not? Yeah, the V8 car. We uh, could hear earlier. We yeah. See it now. So I think should think that's one of the quicker cars on the circuit at the moment. Uh, that's in the proper British GTs team, isn't it? We were talking about British GT earlier on, and you can hear the V8 uh, engine that's uh, in that car, not standard, um, as it accelerates through Cox Corner. Other cars, you hear their tyres more than the engine. That's right. That's right. Here's the Ginetta. So it's just the radical, I should say, coming through. Good to see still quite a lot of British sports cars in this race. I mentioned the Ginettas, the Catrums, Radicals as well. Yep. Tyler Ballard is out there now, isn't he, uh, in his MG ZR. He was a race winner this year in the MG Trophy, and he just uh, lapped the Purge over there of William Hornsey. Uh, I think that was. He was a hot hatch regular. I can see that Run Baby Run, we just saw that on, on our timing tower there, they're back up to 15th position, they're, they're just fallen behind, that's the team of sports specials drivers, that's team 10, uh, I'm not sure who's out for them at the moment, was it, was it Nigel Brown last time we saw? Uh, there is 18F, uh, and that is the Clio of Justin Ross, is it? Uh, in, the, uh, in the Clio? Had a little moment up there but, uh, at yeah. uh, Club Corner. Yeah, that's the ex Dan Gibson car, isn't it? That, that's uh, right. Race formerly in the Clio series. As a great uh, mix of cars come through here into Stoke Corner. At the front of it is Sarge Sofashari and his BMW, who I think in the past has worked on the 750 Road Club Rescue Unit. He has indeed, and normally races this car in the BMW Car Club Racing Championship with the 750. Uh, motor Club. Not sure where the Honda was going there. A different line. <laughs> um, not quite sure what uh, what that was all about on the way into Club Corner. Either way, probably going to get past the BMW before too much longer, is he? Going to have the inside line. It's Team 46. And who's out for them at the moment? If we, can we work I that think out? it was Nick Charlie, eh? Yes, yeah, it was a few moments ago, wasn't it? Yeah, 46C. The Catrums uh, mixed in here as well. Yeah, in there you've got uh, Tim Steele in the Catrum 310R, which is sort of the highest rank of Catrum motorsport ladder before you get to the uh, the British Championship cars, which will be racing here at Silverstone on the British two Touring Car Package next year. That's right, yes, that was announced in the week, wasn't it, that there'd be uh, a guest slot to uh, the BTCC. So taking up some of the slots vacated by Ginetta. And they're changing clubs as well for this year, which is interesting. Yes, uh, moving uh, to BARC from BRSCC for 2023. So, coming up to the midway point uh, of this race. See the sun glinting off the, uh, the damp circuit in this Burkitt six-hour 
relay race. Hello, if you've uh, just joined us on the uh, the live stream produced by uh, Alpha Live. And uh, you're very welcome to join us here. And if you're at the circuit as well, enjoying the great British weather at Silverstone for this uh, six hour relay race, hello to you. It's good to hear from Josh that there was some, some sort of a race meeting for the first time. And what a meeting to choose. I uh, hope they're enjoying their day. Yeah, I understand that uh, the child came to the museum on a school trip recently and enjoyed himself. So his mum thought, let's go racing uh, properly. So I hope they're having a good time. I showed them around a little bit while I had some time off uh, earlier. Then he's got a 750 mode club badge now to wear to school next week. Yeah, half term over. So... In terms of the, the race and what's going on at the moment, I mean, it is in a bit of a holding pattern. Have we got the two and a half hour bulletin yet? No, we've not. I just had a look for that a moment ago because we'd like to give you the update on the handicap positions uh, before too much longer, but they've, uh, they haven't as yet uh, appeared on, uh, on our uh, downloads. See, uh, Phil Nib, it's still going in that Sayer. That's a long, long stint he's had. And he's got the car up to sixth position uh, on scratch. And he's a long way now ahead of Capture Motorsport, uh, who he was behind not that long ago. So he's done a good job here. And they were well up on handicap when we last saw them. One of the uh, Z4s there. Which one is that? Couldn't quite spot the number. I think. The Genetics probably a bit easier to work out. That's the G20, so that'd be Luke uh, Plummer, I think it is. Uh, in the, the more standard, I think, G20. And the Z4 tries to come up the inside into Village. But um, Lewis Fields is down at Capture Motorsport there in the pit lane. Thank you very much, Ian. It's uh, Sylvain Guinteri, who's uh, running with Capture Motorsport in car 16. Sylvain, World Superbike Champion in 2014. Welcome to the Burkett. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, actually. Um, we, uh, we're having fun trying the, the TCR car for the first time. So um, it's, been, it's been great. We had a bit of a test day yesterday, um, gone really well. So yeah, lo loads of fun today. Yeah, well, so uh, the lines, are the lines on a motorbike, uh, a race bike and uh, a race car similar? Well, kind of. I mean, we were talking about it yesterday, actually. The, the TCR car, because it's four-wheel drive and the way you brake and kind of like tipping the car in with the like trail braking, that is very similar to what we do with the bikes. You know, brake hard immediately and then trail brake to the, to the apex. So, yeah, in that respect, there's actually quite a lot of simi similarities. Um, but then again, you know, you got, you got a bit more, bit more weight, um, a lot less uh, horsepower or power-to-weight ratio anyway. So, um, it's a, it's a bit different, but it's, uh, it's great fun. Yeah, great fun to be on four wheels, trying to uh, try something a bit different. And um, I've, not, I've not ridden on track on four wheels for, for a little while, so it's, uh, it's great to pick uh, you know, the reflex back up. Well, that's good. And um, yeah, because TCRs are great looking cars, aren't they? And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's good to see you here. So uh, the, the Burka, obviously, it's a bit of a unique sort of race. Anything, do you have anything like this in France? I don't think so. I think um, the first time I heard about the event was uh, my best mate was uh, entered the race, so we decided to go at it together. I think it's great because you know you can get together with your mates, share the drive, enjoy the day, and um, the handicap system makes it so all the cars can be competitive. So yeah, it's a, it's a unique race, and um, the way the way it works, uh, in my opinion, is that you can come with your mates, have a lot of fun, enjoy yourself on track. Well, that's the main thing, isn't it? I take it you must be sharing with Andrew Shepard. Yes, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Andrew's been a, a good mate for many years now. He's just going into cars as well, and um, hopefully we can do a little bit more next year as well. Are we going to see you out uh, do, to do some more um, four-wheel racing? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I still race in the, the World Endurance Championship uh, motorbikes, so I'll still be doing that next year. Uh, but it's only four events, so. Um, if I can find some free weekends, um, because I, I, I also do the, uh, all the races, uh, MotoGP races as a consultant for BT Sport. So if I can find some free time, I'll definitely be back. So uh, yeah, you're, you're a busy man then. Yeah, yeah, really busy, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Del Massa, congrats. I have to compliment you on your English. It's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. But I've been here 20 years, so there's no, no merit really. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the English is almost like second nature now. 
All right, Silvan, thanks very much and uh, enjoy your session. Thank you very much. Thank you. And back to you in the studio. <coughs> Thanks very much to uh, Lois Beals, and we've got uh, Andy McEwen back with us uh, in the commentary box. Josh has gone off to uh, to take a break. And if you enjoyed your hour's break there, and are you ready and ready to go for another another couple of hours in the box? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it was nice to get outside and enjoy the sunshine. Actually, it's it's a really very pleasant afternoon here at Silverstone, which is not something I expected. So uh, yeah, uh, been enjoying my day immensely. Had a wander up and down the pit lane, chatted to a couple of drivers. Uh, and everyone that I speak to says how much they're enjoying the event, whether it's their first one, whether they've been uh, doing this for 10, 15 years. They absolutely love coming and doing the Burkett. There is no other race like it. Um, and now that we're starting to get to a properly dry track, they're really able to stretch the legs uh, of their uh, various cars. And that's what they want to do. You know, you don't get the opportunity that often to race on the full Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Uh, and so given the chance to do so in the dry conditions, they are uh, only too happy to do it. So, uh, yeah. Good race shaping up. The handicap uh, starting now to play out as well. And uh, having just moved into the second half of the race now, uh, I look forward to seeing exactly what that uh, running order looks like, uh, hopefully in the next few minutes. Well, we've got right now the two and a half hour position. So let's give you a rundown uh, on those. This is the handicap positions, everybody. So it is oh. now in the lead, Team 1, RAF Team Flywheel. So that is the team that won last year as the car 32B is off the road. That's Marco Anastasi in his Gillette G56 DTA, the Data Motorsport car. Marshall running over to see uh, what's going on. Where on the circuit is that? Uh, that is on the inside at Club. He was slow coming out. There was a screech of tyres, I okay. heard, and then he was slow coming through the first part of Club and pulled off the road. OK, let's carry on with the handicap positions. This was at two and a half hours. So first number one, RAF team flywheel. Uh, and they have 61 laps. The first six teams all on 61 laps. So second 59, Royal Navy Motorsport. Third number 69, the Mazda Misfits. Fourth number three, Triple A's Racing. Fifth number 68, Red Rascal. And sixth number 44, Too Fast, Too Furious. Then a bit further back with 60 laps to their name, though that takes you all the way back to about 20th position. But seventh number eight, Motion Motorsport one. Eighth number 35, Cat Dads and Their Lads. That's Carmel Port, Dads and their lads. Ninth, number 33, TSR Performance. Tenth, number 54, Z Cars 3. Eleventh, 23, Four Corners. Twelfth, number 30, 63, Rutec Racing's BMW Compacts. Thirteenth, number 11, Lock Stops and Two Smoking Tyres uh, in thirteenth uh, place. Fourteenth, number 20, Growling Pussy. Fifteenth, number 58, Army Sports Car Racing. Sixteenth, 62, Rutec Racing's BMW Triers. Seventeenth, 31, Don't Hang About. Eighteenth, 22, to Winifred School Choir, 19th number 28 Motion Metasport 2 and 20th number 49 Very Random Races but it is as I say at the moment in the handicap race RAF Team Flywheel, Team 1 that are in the lead, that's Chris Slater in the Peugeot 306 GTI, Alex Smith in the Honda Integra, Simon Froen in the Ford Fiesta and David Russell in the BMW 328i and as I say uh, Chris Slater was part of the team as was Simon Froen and as was uh, actually, those are the only two survivors from that team, that winning team from last year, that, uh, that, that won last year, that are leading here at the moment. And uh, certainly Chris Slater was also part of the team that won in 2017 as well. And we just saw him actually about to be lapped by the little Ginetta G20. So the uh, little Peugeot leading the way just came through to complete another lap. And uh, that number one car, just to give you some idea, is running 19th in the scratch race. Uh, but that is still good enough at the moment to lead the race outright. He's 19th and he is... Uh, nine laps off the lead, uh, but of course had uh, a pretty reasonable credit. Yeah, 29 credit laps. So, uh, in other words, for the number 14 car that leads on the road right now to beat the number one car on handicap, they have to lap them uh, at least uh, another 19 times or so, which is not going to be that easy to do, uh, given we are now into the second half of the race. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. So, long way to go, of course, as we've said earlier on. If you get any more safety car periods, then that will be factored into the number of handicap credit laps that are that are given as well. So a glimpse of David Drinkwater's BMW Compact there, Hot Hats champion for a fourth successive year and one of uh, the two surviving Amigos. We started with three of them, but we've lost uh, Paul Hinson during the course of this race. And David Drinkwater has gone so well in Hot Hatch for the past few seasons. And there you can see, I think that's still Phil Neb out there in the uh, 
Cooper as well, but there are yellow flags at this part of the circuit, and that is where we saw the Ginetta off the road. It is just uh, on the inside there, yes, so uh, that's going to take a little bit of moving as well. The grass, you would imagine, will be a little bit damp and boggy. Uh, it won't be that easy to, uh, to push the car out of the way. Uh, right, every time I glance at the screens, there seem to be radicals close together on track. This is the, uh, the number 15 radical that runs second in the race on the road, and there, number 29, uh, which runs in third. But there is a lap between these two, I believe, Ian. Uh, so whilst they are together on track and together on the timing screen, it's not necessarily quite as close as it looks, but important here for the number 29 car to try and get one of these laps back. Uh, sits in the slipstream down into Stowe Corner. Uh, chooses, though, in the end not to dive to the inside line, and so they stay single file uh, halfway around this, uh, well, the 73rd lap for number 15, and that is the 46C car off on the grass here. Nick Chartier uh, in the Civic. He's rejoined the circuit, and back in the place he goes, having taken a bit of a shortcut there in, in doing so. Uh, 29, is that now Charles Graham? Is it 29B car now? There we go. Uh, is it still Wade Eastwood that's out there? Just... Uh, just a good opportunity there to check on the uh, on the letter on the side of that car. We'll try and keep an eye out for that. But that, as you say, Andy, is the car that's trying to get a lap back on uh, on its position. There's one of the Salikas from uh, Seven Motorsports coming through. Uh, that's the Team 38, Stuart Donovan. Sarah Hobson, Wayne Cockrell and Lee Mabbott in their Toyota Salikas. Good to have uh, have uh, them with us during the course of this race. We've seen one and off during the regular 750 Motor Club season. They, the uh, recovery process ongoing down at uh, Club Corner. So Marco Anastasi, who's been racing in the uh, Ginetta GT Academy Championship this season, has um, unfortunately had to, uh, to pull the car off the road. These Ginetta... G56 is proving very, very popular uh, this season, and uh, that one unfortunately suffering what seems like a, a rare mechanical issue. Josh is on the uh, walk out in the paddock, and he has spotted that car 64A, that's the MG ZS of Carl Green, is quite badly damaged there in the uh. paddock, so that uh, possibly involved in one of the incidents in the one of those. Ooh. And that's the wing that's just fallen off the back of that lay on, I think, or something yeah. like that. What, let's see the rear of that car as it comes through. Yeah, it's the the wing or part of the wing that has <laughs> become detached it's now sort of grown horns hasn't it as it uh, gets gets on the power and uh, the, the elements of the wing flap up that's most bizarre isn't it so that's the 50a car isn't it so that's the est performance car of jamie hayes the Seat super copa and you can see the damage to the wing but uh, yeah very odd how that's just sort of fallen apart disintegrated down the hangar straight it would seem yeah, you could argue that the rear wing wasn't providing a huge amount of downforce on a car like that, but it's certainly not now. Um, any downforce it was producing will be uh, sorely missed, and uh, that is a failure, I think, rather than contact damage. Certainly for the, the part of the circuit at which it uh, it seemed to go would suggest that it was a failure on the, on the wing itself. Early on in the race, RG Motorsport 2, Team 30, lost time. And that was because Leon Morel had an oil pump failure. Ah. So it wasn't an incident as, as, as such. It was he was involved in. It was an oil pump failure. They're fixing the car now. So that's another report from Josh Barrett, who's getting the news from uh, down in the pit lane as to what's been uh, going on uh, earlier on in this race. It's uh, good to have this uh, insight of what's going on there now. We can see that. Uh, is that going to be for the pits, do you think? Yeah, well, I don't think it's affecting the performance of the car particularly. Um, I know they're going to carry on, aren't they? So, uh, yeah, I, I doubt the driver may not have even noticed, actually, unless he spotted it uh, uh, in the mirrors. Um, it certainly shouldn't be affecting the handling, actually, as much as you would imagine. Certainly, if it were a, a Radical, for example, that had uh, had a failure of a rear wing, you have Radical relying heavily on aerodynamic grip, downforce through the corners, uh, then it would be more of an issue. But I think they'll carry on unless the clerk of the course spots it and doesn't like what they see. Uh, and then we might end up uh, with the car being called in uh, for a uh, change. But if, if the team uh, feel it necessary, they could bring the car in, couldn't they? And just send somebody else out uh, in its place uh, for the, uh, the next little period whilst they get that sorted. But uh, for the time being, it doesn't really seem to be uh, affecting things too badly, does it? Uh, you're right, it's uh, still uh, sort of circulating 
at a reasonable speed. See Martin Shelton's uh, Master 7 going through, the grey car with the pink roll cage. And there's the Lotus out there as well. We pick cars as they come up into Vale. That's 18A that we're looking at at the moment. That's uh, Dave Charlton in Mrs. Mansell's Misfits in his Sayat Leon. And uh, yep, he's just heading down the uh, Hamilton Straight now for another. Probably just worth giving a quick update on the top 10 on Scratch as well, because we've not done that for a little while. So for those of you at the circuit maybe who need an update on that, it is number 14. Doris NWH leading, 75 laps in the book. Second number 15, Royal Motorsports, uh, 74 laps. Third number 29, RJ Motorsport, 173. Fourth number 30, RJ Motorsport, 2, 72 laps. Fifth number 12, Prepham Lay G Sport, 70 laps. Same as number 3, Triple A's Racing. Seventh number 16, Capture Motorsport, 69. Eighth number 48, Darkside Motorsport, 69. Ninth number 51, Area Motorsport, 69 and 10th number 36 get to the chopper also on 69 laps with two hours and 47 minutes to go uh, and within the back half of that is your class b uh, lead group the uh, class b now being led uh, by triple a's racing who have just moved actually into the top five overall ahead of the prep and play g sport number 12 squad so triple a's racing one of four teams to have had a stint at the front of uh, class b uh, and they have uh, developed at this point in the race a pretty decent lead actually over capture motorsports Within that class, Darkside Motorsports, they've had uh, um, a pretty troubled race so far. The Audi, which we saw stop on the Hamilton Strait in I can't remember, the second or third safety car period now, uh, that had an ABS failure uh, and uh, it wouldn't restart when they tried to reset it. And now the Golf within that team, that's got a turbo boost problem as well. So Darkside Motorsport team of Scott Parkin, Ryan Parkin and Danny Sylvester with the, with the different two different cars that they've got. Um, not going particularly well. And there is a slippery surface rug, which is now, just as I say, that being withdrawn. Uh, slippery surface, or more likely debris yes. from the, the failed wing, wing yes, on the uh, Seat, I suspect. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact it's got in means the debris has been moved. Whether a marshal moved it or whether it just got knocked out of the way by another car, I'm not so sure. I suspect probably the latter. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's cleared the track anyway, so that's one less thing for the drivers to worry about. Uh, so that's a slightly close moment. 65E, uh, the Porsche there trying to nip up the inside. That was uh, uh, no Gary Campbell. Uh, in the Porsche 944, trying to find a way past 56E, which is the, I think, only Mark III Mastro MX-5 uh, of Aldo Ritti. It's Aldo's second stint in the race. I know uh, that car was out uh, during the second hour of the race, I think. So Aldo Ritti uh, turning straight across the Porsche there, uh, not quite realising that he was up the inside of him. That's here the uh, fourth-placed RJ Motorsport 2 car, uh, running uh, reasonably well. This car, as you said, has had its issues, but when it's been running well, it's been among the fastest cars on the track. It's lost that fastest lap, I noticed, since I last was uh, in the commentary box, but uh, it has got the potential uh, to run every bit as quickly as the other radicals ahead. Yeah, we had uh, a few fastest laps in succession, and ultimately it's the Doris NWH team. We think for Shane Stoney, 206.31. But we've not seen improvements since then, probably because we've mostly been back in green flag running and they've all back in traffic. Whereas I think probably they did, some of the uh, radicals managed to get one or two clearer laps when they could uh, get really good lap times rather than have to think too much about cars that they needed to overtake. Indeed so. Three safety cars already during this uh, 2022 Burkett six hour relay race at Silverstone. Uh, but now that the track conditions are a bit drier, hopefully realise as I say this I shouldn't be saying this but hopefully that's the last we'll see of the Renault safety car we certainly avoided it with Marco Anastasi's uh, Ginetta there are lots of places you can go off here at Silverstone that will not uh, result in a safety car but uh, one or two of them finding the uh, rare points of the circuit where uh, it did need a safety car intervention to get them back underway there is uh, Chris Slater coming out of uh, Luffield corner Chris uh, is in fact heading for the pit lane this is the car that uh, well 40 minutes or so ago uh, was leading on the uh, handicap race and he brings the little Peugeot uh, into the pit lane. Chris Slater, an avid sim racer actually these days, uh, uses that to get better uh, with his real racing. That is a car in a gravel trap, Ian, and that's the 65E car that I'd just seen um, uh, of Gary Campbell having that close moment with Aldo Ritti and he's now in the gravel trap, I think potentially down at Stowe Corner. Yeah, that's the Porsche 944 uh, of Gary Campbell that's uh, stuck there, I'm afraid. And I'm not sure that the marshals, they're going to have to they're gonna try and dig him out, but with their bare hands. 
All credit to them for trying. Let's see if this works, though. It may need some uh, outside intervention to uh, to make it all work. See, I told you not to say that thing about the safety cars here. That was foolish. Oh, oh. Well, here's the <laughs> two radicals again, which are still together on the road, aren't they? Um, albeit a lap apart, effectively. And it's the 15 radical that is ahead on the timing screen and then getting back ahead on the track Ooh. as well, or maybe not. Staying around the outside of the 29 car, uh, which is the uh, Arden Motorsports 1 team. And all of a sudden, yes, the car that was trying to make the move has fallen behind a couple of back markers. Uh, I, I nearly had contact with a couple of back markers. That was very sketchy going into the uh, uh, braking zone at Village. The Radical, of course, capable of braking a lot later than the... Um, big heavy saloon cars around it and uh, that uh, almost ended in contact but actually not a huge amount of time dropped through that uh, sequence of corners for the number 15 car which uh, heads back down the uh, Wellington straight now in behind the uh, Ginetta G50 the only G50 Ginetta uh, in the race don't see many G50s actually racing anywhere these days having long since been replaced by the 55 and nowadays the 56 of the inside of the Ginetta they will go and uh, 9B, that was the Ginetta, uh, the uh, Dylan Popovich Ginetta G15, which uh, will allow the two rapid radicals through. And now another opportunity then uh, for the 15 radical to make a move, this time to the outside into Cop's Corner. Risky place to try and overtake here, whether it's for position or not, but it looks like it might just work very close together at the apex. Uh, and let's hope they both came out on the other side in one piece. Yep, so we are watching them head down towards uh, Beckett's once again. And yes, they're both still there, aren't they? The two, uh, two radicals, they're picking through a Lotus and a Caterham, which waves them through. Always one of them through anyway. And uh, the 15 car uh, follows through. But as I say, these are not battling for position. They're effectively about a lap apart and uh, a lap, well, well over a lap behind the leading to car number 14 as well. Yellow flags, and that'll be for Gary Campbell's car, I think, won't it, at, uh, at Stowe. But that is being covered under single waved yellow flags at the moment. We're going to pan around to see the car. No, we're not. Um, but we see the, uh, see the cars as they head down towards uh, the Vale once again. And they're getting past there, the number 13. Is that the Fatbro yeah. uh, uh, Civic? down at Club Corner. Yes, uh, Club Corner no longer under yellow flag conditions. I noticed they got the Ginetta uh, onto a uh, flatbed truck, so Marco Anastasi and his car uh, en route back to the paddock, but provided the team have uh, noticed that he'd gone missing, they should have uh, already sent somebody else out in his place. That uh, uh, team uh, comprised of uh, a group of Ginetta G56 Academy Drivers, Axel van Niederveen, Mauricio Schiglio, and the aforementioned Marco Anastasi, Data Motorsport, uh, will have lost a bit of time, but hopefully uh, not a huge amount. There goes the 15, still running in second place. Now, lap time-wise, all of that battling in traffic really costing them time. They were a, a full uh, 14 seconds slower than the race leader last time around. So, And the same was true of the 29 car as well. So they really were delaying each other and being delayed in traffic. And uh, it, you only take one or two laps like that and you can lose the best part of half a minute. Yes, uh, absolutely. It just goes to show how much time coming off, not only battling with each other, but trying to fight your way through, uh, through slower cars as well, and there's a lot of that to be done, of course, in the Burkitt six-hour uh, relay race. There is the JCB hooked up now with uh, Gary Campbell's Porsche 944, so the Marshall power wasn't sufficient to get it moved, but tractor power uh, is by the looks of it, and that's going to get back out uh, of the gravel trap, and uh, hopefully the yellow flags will be removed at that part of the circuit. Yep, shouldn't be much longer. Uh, of course, that will also lead to big chunks of time lost in traffic because if you catch a, a bat marker or a group of bat markers into a yellow flag zone, you're still not allowed to overtake them, even if it's not for position. There's no overtaking allowed at all. So um, if you are in a radical that's capable of going maybe three seconds quicker through Stowe Corner than a Toyota MR2, then you're going to lose those two or three seconds straight away. So uh, there went the Marco and Stasi Ginetta being... Uh, stretched off on the flatbed truck down the uh, down the wing pit lane and there's a quite handy internal road system here at Silverstone so once they've got the car off the track there's uh, always a way to get the cars back to the paddock without uh, too much of a delay so back towards us 
welcome the second and third placed cars continuing to circulate nose to tail here. Red Rascal were going well at one point in handicap, Team 68. Yes. But they've had one of their drivers unfortunately disqualified from the race. Uh, nope. Four points on their licence. We see 65D, uh, which is the... Oh, that is... Well, it's B again, isn't B, it? That's yeah. Sam Callahan We've seen yeah. him out for the second time in this race. It's not going well for, for poor old Sam. But what I was saying was Lee Phillips from uh, that team, 68C, uh, he has been uh, disqualified from the race because he passed the black flag five times without stopping. Uh, so uh, he should have taken a stop-go penalty, missed the black flags, right. and he's been disqualified from the race. Uh, okay, Sam Callahan there just having an animated conversation with the marshal, uh, explaining that there is damage to the left front corner, steering or suspension damage. There's also a bit of a tyre mark in the road uh, where he potentially has had some contact with somebody to lead to that. Anyway, the Porsche uh, is buried in the gravel trap down at Brooklyn's corner and going no further. And as you can see from that camera angle, it's right in the firing line, should anybody else get it wrong. There's also a lot of overtaking going on into what surely is a yellow flag zone, uh, something that I'm sure will please Josh Barrett, should he be watching this particular uh, part of the broadcast. That is very dangerous and should not be happening. And really, at the end of a long straight like that, there's not much excuse for missing the yellows. But anyway, uh, it's happening, and I'm sure that, again, race control will uh, have a keen eye on that. I'm sure they will. We saw Martin Schultz uh, go through there in the uh, the random racers car, didn't we? Uh, so uh, so he's uh, not the random racer car. That's not the team I want to say. Uh, where is he on the list? He, anyway, the Chevrolet Lamina. He's out there, and we're on board now with. Uh, is this Malcolm Eaton again? Yes, it is. Yep, down towards Maggots and Beckett's, just hitting the rev limiter slightly there as he turns in. Uh, to the quick left-right change of direction. Brilliant sequence of corners. Very flat, but uh, very, very fast as well. You can see the rear of the car there just starting to step out slightly as he leant on it, off down the hangar straight. And in wonderfully clear track, actually, Ian, by Burkett standards, that was quite an empty bit of racetrack in front of him until the BMW came blasting past. Uh, but it's a rare moment during this race where you can relax a little bit, enjoy the clear air around you, and uh, try and gather your thoughts, because within a corner or so, you'll probably be surrounded again. Uh, absolutely right. Uh, very random races. That is the team, Team 49, that Martin Short is a, a part of in that Chevrolet Lamine, the car that raced uh, in Bahrain in the one-make race supporting the Grand Prix, I think something like 17 years ago now, 2005, I believe. But one board for the moment with this uh, Malcolm Ederson-driven machine. Heading onto the uh, Hamilton Strait, underneath that new pedestrian bridge, the, the glass footbridge that goes over the circuit. Heading in towards the right-hander at Abbey. Then it's to the left-hand sweeper at Farm, and then he'll be, on, he'll be on the brake shortly down into the hairpin at Village, so down through the gears. Actually only dropping down one gear there, isn't he, interestingly, for, for the Village part of the circuit. Runs wide over the kerbs on the exit. Is that in his coaching manual, I wonder? <laughs> and uh, uh, back through the next two left-handers and then it'll be back onto the Wellington Stray. And he's just been past, is that by one of the dark side cars? I think it might be the dark side Golf that's just gone past. And we have a safety car. Don't look at me like that, Ian. Uh, yes, two and a half hours to go and we do have our fourth safety car period of the race and I've lost track of what this oh it's for the Callahan Porsche I guess isn't oh, it down so, yeah. at, uh, at Brooklyn's I would imagine unless someone else has thrown themselves at the scenery there you can see it uh, and that is a difficult place to recover a car from even with uh, the live snatch and, and the uh, uh, opportunity to throw yellow flags uh, at that part of the circuit it's uh, it's still not the safest thing to do to have marshals out there, as we've seen people sometimes don't spot the yellow flags, sometimes slip off the road should there be fluid on the track. So it was the safe and sensible thing to do, uh, throw the safety car, and hopefully it won't take too long to get that car out of the way. So a good time then to go through the handicap positions after three hours. Now, after two and a half hours, I think we had 20 cars within, the, within two laps of one another. Well, now there's three laps, 74 back to 71 covering the top 20. Let's give you a rundown on who they are. It's now a change of lead because number three, Triple A's Racing are now in front. That's Andrew Raff, Andrew Etheridge, Phil Nib, and Christopher Etheridge. Probably helped by that long Phil Nib stint 
nice and consistent that we saw. There's 9B in the pit lane, by the way. Uh, that's the Dylan Popovich Genetta G55 uh, V8 in the proper British GT team. Trying to clear that out, but uh, looks like there's a bit of smoke, some, something overheating in there. Let's go back to the handicap positions, though. So 74 laps completed by Triple A's racing on uh, handicap, along with Master Misfits number 69. So that's uh, Simon Ward Cancel, Stephen Rees, Alex Wilkinson Hughes, William Pickard, Nico Favo, and James McCann. Third is Team 59, Royal Navy Motorsport, uh, Adam Jewis, Seb Unwin, uh, Gareth Moss, and Simon Vernon. Uh, they're also on 74 laps. Then on 73 laps, you've got the team that was leading half an hour earlier, Team 1, RAF Team Flywell. They're now a lap behind the leaders. Uh, as are Team 11 in fifth position, lock stops and two smoking tyres. Uh, who's in that team? I don't think we've talked about them too much during the course of this race. So that's uh, Adam Lockwood, Jim Yu and Danny Bryant in their MR2 Mark III. So that's a, a nice, consistent team. Three cars all the same. Always helps, I think. Uh, then 635, the Cumble Porsche Dads and their lads. Seventh, number two, RAF Team Perardua. Eighth, number eight, Motion Motorsport 1. Ninth, 63, Rutec Racing's BMW Compacts. Tenth, 62, Rutec Racing's BMW Triers. Eleventh, 28, Motion Motorsport 2. 1258, Army Sports Car Racing. Thirteenth, number 22, St. Winifred's School Choir. Still leading Class C. Fourteenth, uh, number 44, Too Fast, Too Furious. Fifteenth, number 32, Dayton Motorsport. Sixteenth, number 31, Don't Hang About. Seventeenth, number six, PBN Racing. Seventeenth, uh, number six, uh, sorry, there. Uh, so 1833, TSR Performance. 1946, MJ Motorsport Team 1, and I'm pleased to say that still in the top 20, Team 20, Browning Pussy. Excellent news, yes. Uh, so uh, every time we look at these handicap positions, they have changed, and that's rather the point. In fact, we were totting up our points with our little uh, predictor game that we've got going on, and uh, a conversation was had about half an hour ago um, between a couple of us as to whether you want to be scoring well at this stage because in theory this should all come together in the last half hour really shouldn't it those who are further down the order now on the handicap should still have time to make their way to the front was it luke that was telling you that from his position at the bottom of the table uh, well yeah well, actually i gave him that idea oh, i'm just right. going to put that out okay. on record now and he rather hijacked it but i thought i'd give him some hope because okay. uh, yeah as of half an hour ago he wasn't doing terribly well i have to say they do say that it's the hope that kills you, so uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, he will uh, still be with us at the end of this. Uh, two and a half hours left, fourth safety car period of the race. We've just given you the handicap positions after three hours, still no change in the overall scratch race. Lead. That's Doris NWH uh, leading uh, the way at the moment in Team 14 from 15, Raw Motorsports. Then the RJ Motorsport Team 1 and Team 2 are four, third and fourth respectively, 29 and 30. And then fifth, number 12, Prep and Lay and G Sport. And uh, they are fairly well spread out because the leader have, has completed 82 laps and uh, 77 laps for the team in fifth position. Uh, update on the, the points there. Uh, it's now a four-way tie. How exciting could this be <laughs> for the lead of our prediction competition between myself, Josh and Andy, and Samantha Stoney. Uh, thank you for entering into the fun, Samantha. And sorry, I didn't see who was last. Oh, Luke Austin uh, in sixth and final position on... Biding his time, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Biding yeah, his time. Okay. He said he was going to only update it every two <laughs> hours, and he's updated it there on an odd number of hours. He was just desperate to see some improvement. Um, I don't blame him, to be honest with you. Uh, so, it's all rather quiet again, isn't it? We're behind the safety car. Hopefully, the Sam Callahan car can be recovered fairly quickly. We can see that the recovery truck is now on the scene of that car. And we think possibly there was some contact that... Um, meant that poor Sam has ended up, I think, needing to be recovered for the second time during the course of this race so far. So, all not well for him. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fair assumption there was contact, but uh, it could just be a steering arm failure or something. But uh, those Porsches, Porsche Boxsters, uh, well built, aren't they? So, uh, they don't tend to just break. Uh, all by themselves, but perhaps when he gets back to the pit lane, we can uh, we can find out. Speaking of the pit lane, Lewis Beals is uh, down at Raw Motorsports, I believe. Lewis, what have you got? Thank you very much. Well, we're down here in pit 4B with Raw Motorsports, Rob's Wrongens and uh, Ben Stone. Ben, second place overall at the moment. Yeah, we're second, uh, we're second place. I think we're still a lap down, unfortunately, so we're just fighting to get back on the lead lap. 
I don't actually know where we uh, where we lost the second lap. We had a drive through penalty early on. Unfortunately, it put us a lap down, and then I think we apparently we've we've lost a second. But we're, we're now one lap down, and about 30 seconds on top of that. So we're just waiting for the driver change. Maybe it'll level up. So wait for another safety car. See what happens. Yeah, if you get caught the wrong side of the safety car, you could quickly lose a lap, can't you? Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah, just pure luck like, of the draw where you happen to file out between the yeah. safety car. Where that where it tends to come out. So yeah, but you have to say Doris's boys are a little bit quick, aren't they? Yeah, well, you know, you bring to bring to uh, you bring a Le Mans driver in and uh, a couple of other pros. You know, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you enjoying yourself? Yeah, it's fantastic. First time I've ever been to the Burkitt. Uh, so yeah, really enjoying it. It's great. Really fun day. Oh, you're a novice then? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. First one. It's um, it feels like a, a long, long race. But yeah, looking forward to the second stint. And it's been yeah. Oh, been you're, you're done. A, you've done a stint. I've done a whole stint. Done done an hour. Got another hour to go in uh, in about 45 minutes. So yeah, well, so um, well. What do you normally race in? What series? Uh, this year I've done Radical Challenge in an SR3, and uh, I've done the Praga Championship as well, which uh, which has been good. We just finished up last weekend. So uh, and then you come and do the event. So what's a, well, as a as a newcomer? We've done this for years, <laughs> you know. We 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 love it, but what's it like as a new, new a newcomer? Uh, it's complete madness. <laughs> it's uh, it's like a. It's like you're driving the wrong way down a motorway, <laughs> especially in a radical. Obviously, the closing speeds are massive, so you've got uh, you, you just have to get your eyes on stalks, trying to work out what everyone's going to do. Because if one car's overtaking another car, then you've got another over car overtaking that, and you're you're going around three, four cars in one corner at some point. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's uh, there's there is a there is a knack, is it? Those guys who have done this before really know how to weave in and out of traffic. We were talking this earlier, and that some guys can really do, can get very close to qualifying times, but uh, you have to look so far down the road, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite a different uh, different skill in a way because you you've got to try and anticipate what three cars are doing and how they're going to. Some are oversteering around the corner and working out how they're going to slide and whether they've seen you or, yeah, it's just it's just kind of managing the risk if you like. So uh, who's currently out there? I take it you've got uh, John here, so it must John be Chris. To go out, so yeah, Chris Breen's out at the moment. I think he's coming towards the end of his stint. How long have we got? 20 minutes left, and then John's out, and then I'm out. See ya. Okay, Ben, and uh, great to talk to you, Thank and you. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. You too. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you very much. And there we are, it's Ben Stone, first time here at the Burkett, running in second place at the moment. So it's back to you in the studio. Thanks very much indeed, Lewis. Safety car lights are out, so it looks as if we're going to go back racing again any moment. News from the pit lane is that the team that had been leading on handicap, the Team 1 RF Team Flywheel, last year's winners, uncharacteristic mistake. They were caught speeding in the pit lane. They've had a 10-second stop-and-go penalty, and I'm sure that's now why they are no longer leading the handicap part of this race, Andy McEwen. Right, OK, yes, that is a rare mistake. They tend to be up there near the front at the end of the race, don't they? But that will have cost them uh, a fair bit of time, not just the 10 seconds for the stop-go, but the transit time through the pit lane as well. Uh, race lane gets back underway, two hours, 25 minutes left on the clock. And once again, we bunch everybody back together. We put some people at the front of the queue who are perhaps not the outright pace setters. I haven't yet seen one of the uh, rapid radicals coming uh, through to take the restart so they're clearly buried further back in the pack here they come the race leading uh, Doris uh, NWH car heads into Cops Corner now and when everyone is bunched together like this it becomes that much easier to trip over each other uh, especially since um, we may have some drivers out there who are reasonably fresh into their stint so still trying to uh, find their feet out there so nervy times here as always on a safety car restart let's hope they can all keep it clean Yep, that's right. So green flags waving all around the circuit, of course, to let the drivers know that the race is back underway. Uh, and still some cars just only making it now over the uh, over the line. So not necessarily that well bunched behind the safety car. There's another of the, the radicals coming through. Hard to tell from that shot which one it is. You can see the Paul Collingwood is out there at the moment in Team 10, Run Baby Run, in the Eclipse SM1. He's done pretty well towards the end of the sports special season with a few victories towards the end of the year but watching team three here and this is triple a's racing so this is uh, one of the effigies isn't it that at the moment Andrew or christopher that's out there it is d so it's uh, christopher at the moment and of course that is the team that is at the three hour mark at least leading on handicap so they will be looking for a good consistent run to the end in a way they have the advantage of only having two cars because those cars are less unpredictable in terms of their variation of performance than if you've got 
three, four, five or six cars. But there's also the extra risk that if something goes wrong, it could be disastrous for the team. Yeah, they don't have a spare really, do they? If one car is out, then that's likely to be their uh, their race over. There goes the uh, the number one car, by the way. Trying to pick out who that is. That looked Ford Fiesta-ish to me. So that's uh, Simon Frauen now, I think, uh, who has taken over the RAF car. Slightly smoky number three BMW there coming through the uh, right-hander at Club Corner and ends up in a, a three abreast situation into Abbey. Just makes it work. They all uh, squeeze uh, through the corner without contact, but they're taking some risks in traffic, aren't they? I think they know that they're running reasonably well on the uh, handicap at least and uh, want to try and keep hold of that trap position. They're running fifth position overall and it's another sign that the handicap is starting to work itself out because in the first couple of hours, the handicap leader was often not inside the top 20 on the road, but with every bulletin, that leader is now further and further up the scratch race as well. So those quick cars are starting to get their time back. Yes, that's right. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. I mean, conversely, we're not seeing any of the radicals anywhere near the, the no. leading positions on, on handicap. Uh, uh, on board or with perfect timing there for Team 70. This is for one of the the Mazda dudes. So let's see if we can work out. It, well, Anthony is coming round to point out it is C, Jeremy Rivers Fletcher, that is the driver that has uh, we've now named and shamed as the one who's having a moment there uh, in our onboard camera car. Uh, indeed, that was exciting, wasn't it? Slowest corner on the track, but uh, still very easy to get it wrong. And this Smart One Mazda MX-5, which looks a lot of fun to drive. I'm uh, hoping to have a go in one of these actually later oh. on this year. And uh, I'm, I was very excited. Having ridden on board now, though, I'm slightly less looking forward to it. it looks a little bit leery this one doesn't it as it slides and wobbles its way through the final couple of corners uh, but mark one has master mx5 racing remains as popular as ever here in the uk indeed within the 750 motor club as well with five club uh, mx5 series continuing to go from strength to strength and uh, you can see why it's a great way to start your motor racing journey these cars you can get hold of one for relatively little money in motor racing speak and uh, it is an awful lot of fun you get a lot of bang for your book with a mark one mazda uh, and as you can see there even if it's not the fastest car on track it's still a lot of fun to drive yes uh, jeremy was flash for the master dudes is let's go in 67th position uh, out of 70. Uh, it's not his first time uh, driving the bucket but he's raced in 404 1600 as jerry mgzs and the 1934 mg na single seater there's lots of hill climb events as well as Jeremy. Uh, and he's saying, at 74, is it the oldest driver on the circuit today? And the answer is, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, but he'll, he'll certainly be up there, won't he? As one of the veterans of this. I'm not aware of anyone that's older than that today. But if anyone knows different, then let us know in the comments on the, uh, on the YouTube live stream uh, chat there. Indeed so, that's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, here comes the uh, Lumina towards us and the number 41 uh, Mark IV Mazda MX-5 too. The uh, Mark IV MX-5 racing team, inventive name there for Ben Taylor, uh, Paul Sheard and Andrew Pretorius. And uh, that car staying out of trouble as it comes down through Brooklyn's there, the number 30. The RJ Motorsport 2 car, their lap times, well, at the moment it's hard to tell because we're not fully back up to speed uh, after the safety car restart, really, are we? But they uh, were doing their best to try and get this lap back on the teammate car, number 29, that they have at times been a little bit faster than over the course of the race. Class D, as we've said, still being led by Norris and uh, Doris NWH, Class B by Triple A's Racing. Uh, that Class B battle actually separating slightly more than it has been uh, at earlier parts in the race. Class A headed by Breakdancers 1, that's the uh, number 55 squad. Uh, Alan Curtis, Harry Air and Tim Steele's trio of Caterhams. And that A is the number one car, that's Frauen off the road. So it's going from bad to worse now for the RAF number one squad. They were leading on handicap. They had that 10 second stop go penalty for speeding. Uh, and now, unfortunately, Simon Frauen pulling off the road. Uh, that looks like it's somewhere up towards the Aintree area, I reckon. But anyway, the car going nowhere fast. Yeah, and that you suspect is the end of T1's hopes of retaining their uh, handicap title. RAF Motorsports, they were last year, RAF Team Flywheel, as they are uh, this year, Chris Slater and Simon Frohan, the, uh, the the links between the uh, the two driver lineups from season to season. But it looks like uh, that their hopes of uh, reprising that 2021 victory are now coming to Look how busy this circuit is. 
through uh, Stowe Corner and down to the Vale. Blue lights, they might as well just leave the blue lights on permanently there, I think, because there's so many cars coming through of differing uh, speeds. It's uh, very hectic indeed. Uh, one of the Z4 teams coming through, and the other Z4 team, and you know it's a BMW Z4 team because it's got the Alpha in it. That's how you know uh, that, and that is, of course, the car driven by Barry McMahon, who drives in the Z Cars 3 team. Uh, I don't, don't know if he got the wrong details on the invitation or, or what, but uh, he's, he's joined the Z Cars 3 team of Darren Duke, Steve Wood and Chris Murphy. Uh, indeed so, and I think I know which of those cars I'd rather be in as well if I were in that team. The Z Cars look a lot of fun, but you can't beat an Alpha. So, uh, 54 car, actually trying to get up the inside of one of the uh, Z Cars there. That's the five, uh, sorry, the 53 uh, B. Or uh, Chris Bates. Chris Bates. Callum Bates, yeah. sorry. Callum oh, Bates. Callum Bates, yes. Yeah. So, teammate car. Uh, right then, uh, in the fourth position is RJ Motorsport. Uh, they're chasing down a podium place, and Lewis Beals has made his way down to their garage now. Oh, thank you very much there. Yes, I'm down in RJ Motorsport 2 with Leon Morel. Leon, um, you're running fourth at the moment. That's not bad. No, not bad. Could be better, but not bad. Uh, we've had a couple of issues today. Nothing dramatic. We've had a my car's actually in an oil pump failure. So the lads are on with fixing that now and hoping to get that back out for the last thing. Um, it could be worse because we're actually one stop up on everyone else. So we're hoping we can finish with just one more stop. So that will get us maybe a lap back. Um, yeah. True Burkitt fashion, a part that's never failed before has failed, you know what I mean? Simple, a genuine Suzuki item, not, you know, no one else's fault, uh, something you can't service. So, yeah, it just is what it is. You win some, you lose some, don't you, you know? Yeah, yeah you've done the Burkitt before then? No, I've never raced at the Burkitt. Oh, first year. Yeah. Oh, oh, first year. So, how do you find it? Uh, really enjoyable. I did the start, which was amazing. Got to race with the other four radicals up front. Uh, was pleased with my pace, mega tricky conditions didn't drop the ball, didn't do anything stupid. Uh, we came in second. We've just, we've just gone backwards a bit from there, to be truthful. Not, not because of lack of pace, just an unfortunate problem. So, disappointing, but we're still pushing. There's still two and a half hours to go, so, you know, it's not over yet, is it? Now, that's the thing with endurance racing, isn't it? If you have a problem, you're going to lose time. You've just got to hope your rivals do as well. Yeah, I know, I know at the minute the, the handicap system sort of favours the slower cars when the weather's bad. When, when the track goes good, it, it should swing. So we should now claw back on the on the handicap cars in front of us. So we'll see how that works. We'll see if we can close the gap and get, get back up there. I think the, I think P1 is probably out of our reach maybe now, uh, but you know, let's hope for a, a, a strong last couple hours and see see where we end up. That's a good, that's a good way to approach it, Leon. Leon, you, you were saying that you had a, you've had a good season in the Radical Challenge. Yeah, fantastic year with the 750 Motor Club. We raced in the Bike Sports Championship. Uh, won the championship last year and then second again or second this year mega mega close season racing uh, well I went faster at every single track we went to I set a lap record I improved massively unfortunately just one person was better than me and who was that by the way uh, a friend of mine Simon Walkansel uh, I can live with someone being better providing I'm not doing worse than normal so proud of my my progression this year uh, welcomed Simon's competitiveness. It was obviously two good friends, close racing all year, like neck and neck. Brands Hatch, we were separated three cars within, within two hundredths of a second in qualifying. Uh, and we all had a first, all had a second, all had a third. So we were literally the exact same pace. So yeah, mega clean racing and yeah. Hopefully we'll get some, uh, get some more new guys in next year and uh, have another year of the same. Well, yeah, because that is the same thing with bike sports or any of the uh, formula with the 750s. Always good, clean racing. Yeah, just decent guys. I mean, we're not, none of us are multi-millionaires. We all want to polish the car on a, on a Sunday afternoon when we get home. Uh, ultimately, we're still flat out and our lap times are up there with, with all the other sports prototype championships. It's not like bike sports should be looked upon as a B series because we're setting lap times that, we're setting lap times that the others are, are setting as well. So. You know, the pace in the championship this year has been really strong. Uh, I'm pleased to have been able to push Simon as hard as we did all year. Uh, shame we didn't win, but you can't win everything, can you? So, 
All right, Liam, thank you very much. And uh, I, I hope your boys fix the car and we can see you back out on track later. Yeah, fingers crossed. Thanks to all the marshals and all the 750 guys for a good event. Hopefully see you again next year. Thank you much, Leon, and we do too. Thank you. So uh, that, that's Leon, and uh, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much to uh, to Lewis Beals down there. Um, is this a car park? <laughs> There's two two cars that uh, hitherto I hadn't known uh, had, had stopped out on circuit. They appear to have stopped out on circuit. One is a Lotus, and one is a Honda Integra, which is the uh, one of the uh, services cars, isn't it? Uh, yes, the uh, Lotus looking very like a Janetta to me. Oh, um, but, uh, whether it's 55 or 56, I can't tell from here. I will give you that. But uh, that yellow car, um, they're, they're both parked strangely close to each other and yet not right next to each other. So I don't think they pulled in together. I suspect maybe they're there for similar reasons, but uh, no sign of any real disagreement between the drivers, which is a good sign. And they are on the inside at Luffield Corner, so that's not an especially dangerous position. So I'm hopeful that uh, that won't require the fifth appearance of the Renault safety car. Uh, right, little mini battle going on now down towards uh, Vale. This is 27C and 39C. 27C is just ahead. Uh, that's Paul Clothier and 30, what did I say, 39C is Julian Hammer. And uh, these two, I don't know if they're fighting for on-track position, but they're certainly fighting for track position, if you see what I mean. And the Luma has got a left front puncture. It's all going on here. It certainly is. So that's uh, Martin Short, the Le Mans racer, out uh, of this part of the race. He's got puncture left front, and he's going to—he's just about managed to get it back to the pit lane. Uh, so that's a great shame for him. Only acquired the car from a Facebook advert a couple of weeks ago, attracted to it by the fact that uh, we've got a Chevrolet engine, the same as the, the Mosler, with, which is uh, most associated with, of course, Martin Shaw, and uh, says absolutely hopeless in the drive, but it was quite decent in the wet when uh, Rob Galvin was driving to the beginning of the race, but you reckon he can make a good car out of it uh, with uh, a few setup changes for 2023, but uh, for the moment, that's Team 49, the very random races that will be needing to get another car out on track. Uh, that could be Liam Bresitz in the BMW 116i, David Brown in the Master MX-5, or Jonathan Barrett in the E46 M3. That is the handicapper's nightmare, that team, isn't it? None of those yes. cars, even vaguely similar on performance levels. So no. uh, it's just uh, limped past our, uh, our commentary box as the number 49 Lumina, and uh, hopefully not done any damage to the, uh, the underside of that car. I did notice the rear diffuser was bouncing around a little bit as it came into the pits. So hopefully that's uh, just from the vibration of the puncture rather than anything uh, more serious. So a couple of them starting to uh, starting to run into issues now. We are getting towards the final third of the race now. Two hours and 10 minutes left in the race. And uh, a couple of cars now perhaps just starting to show a bit of fatigue. Yes, uh, that's right. Still Doris NWH, Team 14, that are leading the scratch element of the race. They have now got 90 laps in the book. 89 laps for the second place car, which is Raw Motorsport, Team 15, third 29, and fourth 30, RJ Motorsport 1 and 2 respectively, both on 87 laps, but about three quarters of a lap between the two of them, uh, it must be said. There is, oh no, that's not just a puncture, is it? That's a yeah. dramatic tyre failure and damage to the rim there is, of course, as Martin Short has had to limp that uh, into the pit lane, but he's... Still cheery enough to give us a little wave as he steps out of the car, uh, which is uh, which is good to see. Uh, but uh, whether we'll see that car again during the course of this race or not, I don't know. Because even if we get a tire on it, we've just got to be mindful of the, whether there's any damage to the rim as well. I don't know whether Martin's got a full set of spares with that car, having only acquired it relatively recently. That's a good point, actually, yes. Uh, suggests maybe he's had a knock with someone or something then, doesn't he, if there's uh, rim damage as well. Um, the two and a half hour handicap uh, times, by the way, have been published recently. So these are uh, the result, the standings, I should say, from about 20 minutes or so ago. Still Triple A's racing, uh, leading the way, uh, and by a lap, actually, over the RAF team flywheel, who we know now to have lost more ground. So Triple yes. A's racing are looking good, aren't they? They're 
setting a good pace and they've already fought their way to the top of the uh, the handicap scoring. Uh, and they're the only team to have been with 87 gross laps as well. Yes. So they're a lap ahead of anybody else. That's right, yes. Uh, RAF Team Flywheel and the Mazda Misfits number 69 uh, were sharing the same lap with each other and with the lock stops and two smoking tyres uh, MR2 team. Uh, but of course we know that number one will now drop back. Then another lap back to the 31. Don't hang about squad. 35, Cat Dads and their lads. Uh, they've had a whole group of them on 85 laps. So uh, Rutec Racing's BMW Compacts, the Royal Navy Motorsport, uh, number 59, number 62, Rutec Racing's BMW Triers, number two, RAF team, Paradua uh, team, uh, essentially now the team flying the flag for the RAF, and the top 10 were rounded out, in fact they were rounding out the top 10, uh, car number two, with uh, in 11th place the one and only Class C runner, St Winifred's School Choir, number 22. So yeah, lap in hand then at the moment for AAA's racing, and still, Ian, no sign of the Rapid Radicals. And they're getting a spare wheel and tyre then onto the uh, the 49 car, the Chevrolet Lumina. So they clearly did do have some uh, some spares, which is good. But presumably they've got another car that's gone out into the race in the interim, and then Martin will hopefully go back out again uh, uh, to, to get some more track time in before the end. It's a great looking car, that. It's a, an absolute hulk of a car uh, compared to some of the others out on circuit. Kind of a listen in. I think that was Martin saying that's it done for the day. So that's a shame. You might not see the Chevy uh, back out on track. But again, that's the great thing about the, the uh, relay format. It doesn't mean that team's day is done at least. Uh, and they can continue uh, on in the race just minus the big V8 Chevy. So it's a shame though. Enjoyed seeing that car out there. And Martin, I'm sure, was enjoying getting some track time in it as he tries to learn. Uh, how to set the car up and how to best get the performance out of it. Uh, there is the third of the um, RAF Team flywheel cars that we've seen out on track in quick succession. We know we lost the Fiesta after suspected contact, we're hearing. It's now David Russell's BMW 328i uh, that has taken over for team number one. But there is the car that is leading on the handicap times. Uh, AAA's Racing's BMW, it's number 3D uh, at the moment, leading is Christopher Etheridge. Uh, that was reach of tyres down at Stowe Corner, but Christopher Etheridge leading the way on the handicap and running actually a really strong sixth place overall. You know what, how I've been saying what a beautiful day it is? Yes. Luke Austin has just shown me a picture of the, uh, the, the radar, the rainfall radar, and it's showing a big blodge of blue and green nastiness heading towards Silverstone. He reckons that might arrive around about five o'clock, um, which will be sort of around about three quarters of an hour from the end of the race. So uh, maybe an hour and a half from now, it could get a bit wet here. So that could uh, first banner into the works. Maybe that's what he's hoping for in terms of his you know, entry into our predictions competition. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it would take an act of God, I think, for him to uh, get up there and outscore us. So uh, perhaps the rain will come and save him. Uh, but uh, yeah, that could be uh, that could be a real challenge, couldn't it? Teams that feel that they're in a good position uh, getting into that last half an hour will not be wanting to see a significant change in the weather. Now, Josh Barrett is showing us an alternative. It's very unlike the weather companies to disagree with each other. Uh, and his says that it's not going to rain. Now, mine I looked at this morning agreed with his. Yes. Uh, so so uh, I'm afraid Luke uh, might be clutching at straws rather here. I might, I might need to sort of decide between us here and get my own <laughs> razor up and you'll be sort of, sort of best of three type of situation. <laughs> so I'll, I'll deal with that now. Uh, still no change in the running order in scratch really. Uh, just in terms of leading sort of class uh, uh, B on the road, that is still Triple A's racing team three. Uh, that are ahead from uh, the 16 car, which is Capture Motorsport, and the 48 car, which is Dark Side Motorsport. So they are six, seven, and eight, and that's the situation within their class. Sam Redrop here with the uh, rear bumper hanging loose, and there is a stop and go penalty being in for someone. Didn't quite catch the uh, number then on the, uh, the penalty board, but somebody being given a stop go penalty uh, for something discretion either in the pit lane or on the track I'm not too sure we'll try and get another look at that uh, that board perhaps coming uh, across the timing line and uh, see who it might be who's got themselves in trouble now we've had a few penalties handed out today it shows that the um, officials are watching there may be 70 cars uh, at one time or another anyway circulating the track but uh, you will not it will not go missed if you uh, if you do do something that you shouldn't uh, another team then apparently coming a cropper of that. Right then, the final verdict on the weather forecast is... Well, 
I think the rain that Luke can see coming is somewhere off Southampton at the moment, so it's got a fair way to go to get here. We'll see. We'll see. But there is something there. There is something on the radar. Right. So, it, okay. I, you know, we, I think we could have a twist in the tail before the end of uh, end of this race. Luke Austin uh, rubs his hands with glee. Uh, the drivers out on track, pretty grateful to be getting what could be their final stint of the race in, uh, in dry conditions for some of these drivers. This will be the last we see of them uh, in this particular race. Um, certainly those who have four or five drivers may well now be cycling through uh, their drivers for the final time. But uh, I can only imagine the chaos we've now created in the pit carriages <laughs> with people going, it's going to rain, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to revisit our whole strategy. OK, Luke is say, going for being better at weather predictions than Berkey predictions. We'll see about it's that. It's a fairly low bar, though, isn't it, Ian, if, if we're being honest? Yeah, yeah. anyway. Um, what's one of the Civics going through? I think one of the... Uh, I didn't see which team it was, actually, that uh, was going through. And we've got a Mini coming down towards us as well. That's from the Bad Boy Tuning 2 team of Charles Heatley, Lee Campbell and Charles Newton Derby. Team 24. Got a, a glimpse there of the uh, Doris car once again, the Doris NWH car leading the way. And uh, they continue to run at a dominant pace. I think they're still the fastest car on track, aren't they? Well, actually, no. It's the uh, they're trading lap times, really, between the uh, themselves and the number 30 RJ Motorsport 2 car. But anything that's a 2.14 or 2.15 at this stage of the race is looking like a good time. That's about eight seconds off the outright fastest lap from earlier on. So um, track conditions uh, or track temperature going up, which will slightly account for that. But mainly, I think that is just uh, the... Uh, the fact that uh, there is so much traffic out there and again your best chance of setting a really good lap time is if you can be near the front of a safety car queue and then uh, get some clear track upon the restart but uh, they haven't had that luxury for quite some time the radicals getting uh, buried deep in the safety car line uh, over the last couple of restarts actually so that fastest lap set quite some time ago yep so coming into the final uh two hours of this race, the final third of it now. And Dice NWH Team 14 leading from Team 15, more motorsports in second place, then RG Motorsport 1 and RJ Motorsport 2, 29 and 30, third and fourth respectively, Prep and Lay G Sport, fifth Team 12. That's the 15 car we just saw going through in second uh, position. And uh, then we've got the uh, 29 car in third position as we're watching the Army, mo the, sorry, the RAF team flywheel car at the moment. Ah, so that was uh, actually thinking about the Integra that we saw off. That was another of their cars. Oh, it was. It? it was Alex Smith. I was trying to work out who that Integra belongs to. So they've, they've had a nightmare, haven't they? RAF team flywheel. They've got David Russell out in his 3 to 8 i at the moment. Um, but Chris uh, and Simon Frohan we know and has no no has been in trouble. So it could be that they're down to just two cars. David Russell being one of them and Chris Slater uh, being the other. Not ideal, is it? Um, yeah, two of their cars stranded trackside as well, so it'll take a while to get them back uh, to the uh, to the pit lane. Only two hours to go, though, so they should, as long as nothing else goes wrong, they should be able to get to the end of the race with just two more cars, assuming they can get about an hour uh, out of a fuel tank each time. But uh, that is, uh, yeah, how quickly things can change. They were looking really strong until about half an hour ago, and then suddenly, uh, a few bits of, uh, of misfortune and they're essentially out of contention. A lot of smoke there just up the road from somebody. I couldn't tell if that was tyre smoke or an engine starting to hit trouble, but it, it's white smoke. Um, the reason I make that point is that we do have a few diesel-powered cars out there. No, there we go, that's the issue. And it is the 36B? 36B. Yes, it is. That's uh, John Coburn's BMW 3 Series. So get the chopper. Our, uh, <laughs> in trouble. Uh, that car is, uh, I think, not... Well, if it is going to complete the lap, it's going to do so slowly, isn't it? And it could be well advised to do it 
offline. Yes, uh, because it did look a bit like there was some fluid coming out of the back of that from the previous shot. He is doing that, in fairness, but of course in a circuit that turns both left and right, you're inevitably going to cross that racing line at some point, such as here. He's doing his very best to stay out of the way. Let's see as he comes out of club corner whether we can spot uh, any fluid coming out of the back of the car or whether it is just uh, smoke. No, we might be okay, actually, and I can't see anything coming out of it. Yeah, I think you're possibly right there, Andy, so that's, uh, that's good news uh, from that point of view. So who else have get, got to the chopper? Well, they've only got three, three drivers in their team. They've got Oliver Smith and Paul Brighton as well, those are the other two drivers. And they were running in ninth place overall and sixth place within uh, their class on scratch before this happened, but they'll be losing a little bit of ground now. Um, They've got a couple of, well, they've got one lap between themselves and then the next car in their class, which is the proper British GTs, Team 9, in 11th overall, Chris Everill, Dylan Popovich, Ross Everill, Stuart Daven and Ben Scrivens. Yes, so some time being lost, but at least if they get it back to the pit lane, OK, you have to wait a bit longer to send the next car out, but they've got a fighting chance of getting the problem fixed, although I'd be surprised if we see that car again. That looks like... Uh, fairly substantial engine problems. So that BMW falling by the wayside then. And again, the deeper into the race we get now, Ian, the more likely we are to see this. You made the point earlier on that several of the cars in this uh, race are used to doing, you know, 20 minute um, sprint races. Cars 32, 26 and 30 uh, being given stop go penalties there. Well, one of those is the RJ Motorsport yes. 2 car in fourth position. One is Data Motorsport, and what was the other number that you jotted down? Uh, 26. 26. Uh, that was Mini Kev's one. Keith is at Kevin Philpott, John White, and Chris Williams. So, stop and go penalties. And there we, we can see it uh, at uh, Luffield, the uh, the cars that are broken down earlier, including Alex Matondra Tegra. Uh, I'm going to get the headset off of him now if Josh is ready to come in. Uh, so, Andy, leave it with you, and then it'll be Josh. Yes, yeah, so a dramatic uh, five or ten minutes there then in the uh, Burkett six-hour relay race, a race that is still being led very comfortably uh, by the Doris NWH Radical um, trio. And uh, they have a lead now of the best part of two laps, actually, uh, on scratch, really, uh, this is, over the number 15 Raw Motorsports Radical uh, in second. They are a minute clear now of the number 29, which tells me I think they've had a pit stop because they were a lap ahead uh, not that long ago. So I think we've just had a pit stop for the number 15 team in second position. 29 runs third, number 30 runs in fourth place as the number 32A car comes in. Uh, this is to serve its stop-go penalty. Axel van Niederveen uh, in the troubled Datum Motorsport squad because remember Marco Anastasi in the not so distant past half an hour or so ago uh, pulled off the road with mechanical issues down at Club Corner so that's uh, a car in the garage with a problem and a car in the penalty box serving a 10 second stop go penalty uh, just continue ring down the rest of that top 10 then fourth place number 30 RJ Motorsport 2 uh, fifth position the number three triple A's racing team they lead in class B sixth number 12 the prep and play G Sport squad uh, they are um, a class D runner and then second and third in class B seventh and eighth overall numbers 16 count Motorsport and 48 Darkside Motorsport who have been pretty close together all race long. Ninth for number 51 Area Motorsport, also a Class B runner and rounding out the top 10, number 36 get to the chopper but we've just seen them uh, with an issue of some sort, a very smoky BMW heading for the pit lane. Uh, well I'm joined by uh, Josh Barrett once again in the uh, commentary box and uh, you picked a good moment to join us Josh, it's all kicking off. Yeah, it's getting towards the end of the Burkett. It's normal, <laughs> normally what happens. I saw but when I was down the pit line that Janetta needed a push start to get going. Ah. But that time it did get going on its own steam, which uh, helped out somewhat. But uh, yeah, you're noticing lots of problems now with cars or teams running, losing cars. I spoke to uh, David Drinkwater. He said that car's overheating after 20 minutes. Oh dear. And they'd already lost Paul Hinson's car because yeah. that had a crash. And Adam Reed hit a, the uh, bumper off the MG's LS that's destroyed in the paddock, and that took out the front of that car. So that team have basically got one car limping. Um, Sam Callahan, you saw him. He had contact with BMW, which smashed the suspension. And then James Harvey's car, which is the co 
uh, co-team car. That's broken pretty much. So Jacob Ebury's car is the only one that's left, which is sharing with uh, Sam Callahan, um, with um, Gary Campbell. And we saw Gary was in the gravel, and Jacob said to me, it's a bit weird seeing your own car in the gravel when you're not in it. <laughs> uh, indeed so. And uh, normally Jacob's there waiting to snap a shot of the unlucky driver in the gravel trap, Jacob Ebury, uh, renowned motorsport photog photographer, and uh, having a crack on track here this weekend. But uh, yeah, one or two of them starting to hit trouble now and indeed hit each other on occasion heading into the final couple of hours of what's turned into a, a beautiful afternoon here at Silverstone. Uh, penalty being served here for number 30, so this was another one of those stop-go penalties uh, that were being um, shown a while ago. That is number 30C, uh, which is the Radical that was running in fourth position overall, and uh, that is a stop-go penalty for Matt Jones. Yes, it is, the SR3 uh, in the pit lane, uh, which leaves us now with only, I think, the number 26 that still has the penalty to serve. Uh, number three is being, is being reclassified into Class D because of running slick tyres. So the car we thought we were leading ah. Class B uh, because of running slick tyres, they've been reclassified. So therefore, the Class B lead actually goes back to Capture Motorsport versus Dark Side that you uh, were talking about earlier on. Right, OK, and of course that number three car, as of uh, three and a half hours in, was leading the handicap race as well. So kind of makes a bit more sense now as to the pace that they had running on slicks, though I guess they may well have had to now tweak their um, credit laps now that they've discovered they're running on slicks. So we'll uh, await the latest handicap mm. bulletin to see if that's still the case. Yeah, not sure. How, yeah, because of course they were running high up the overall as well, weren't they? That's they were leading, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, OK. So that's uh, interesting, isn't it, to see how that uh, is going to continue into the final uh, couple of hours or just under uh, of this race. And that car that had the penalty has come out the pit. Oh, no, it's the, it's the leader slowing on the oh, track. No. So the, uh, the Doris uh, Radical is going to stop, I think, I'm afraid, down into um, Beckett. And just as uh, the team boss was here watching uh, the coverage from the... Uh, from the commentary box, uh, he was explaining they're in a predicament. This is the predicament he was telling me about. Right, OK. Oh, and that's a Mazda going the wrong way as well. Was that 68, uh, 68D pulling off the road? So it's all kicking off. That's this really has been a dramatic moment of the race. Russell Clark, isn't it, that, in 68D? So the race-leading car then stopped on the road, halfway between Cops and Maggots, uh, and uh, driver waving out the uh, marshals that he will need a tow. The car has clearly lost drive completely. And this is significant. Now, the team, having seen this, Josh, will surely be able to send another car out as soon as they can, but this will lose them time, nonetheless. Yeah, there's a concern of how many cars they've got. Oh, is there now? Right. Uh, I'm not sure how much more I can say than that. OK, so we may not see another Radical out on track to replace them in the near future, then. Well, hope, hopefully they do, though, because they were absolutely dominating this scratch race, weren't they? OK, so they, were they leaning about a lap and a half, something like that? So uh, Yeah, nearly two, I think. Right, so they've got time here. <laughs> so this, this is when <laughs> we were just talking about cars having problems and teams running out of cars. So here's Hicklin. He was in the car, I think, when I, when I was uh, here earlier. Presumably he's been out of the car at some point. Um, but he is uh, in fourth, so it's the Royal Motorsport team have just gone through. So they would have started lap 98, which is the lap that the Doris uh, team have just finished. So here they are, the car in second place. So this is 15B, is that? Uh, I think so. So 15B is John McLeod, a three-time winner of this event. Uh, 2014, 2017, 2020. He also finished fourth this season in the Radical Challenge. So he's uh, working his way through. See there, one of the MGs. I uh, uh, don't think you've been out in the paddock since. The MG ZS is absolutely wrecked. Ah. The uh, coal green car. So we saw bits of cars being picked up at one stage when Ian was on with me. We couldn't work out what car it had come from because it was in so many bits. But I'm afraid coal green's uh, MG ZS <laughs> Whether it's written off or not, well, I think it's right on that. The back end of the car is no more, basically, I'm afraid. So hopefully uh, they've got a few cars uh, left. The uh, team, are they CMC Motorsport? And that was, I think, Mark Bellamy, who we saw just a moment ago. So this is Royal Motorsport coming down into uh, the loop section. So when they go across the line, they have done the same amount of laps as the Doris NWH car. And 
then, assuming they haven't sent another car out yet, once they get through Beckett's, they'll basically be taking the lead of the race. But we're going to get a safety car because of it. So we'll have to wait a few more moments. And this will give them a bit more time to get uh, another car out. And there's only a minute and a quarter back to RJ Motorsport, who are currently in third. So this is going to bring everyone in the overall back into it. Uh, with less than two hours to go. Yes, because I think that RJ Motorsport owes a pit stop because they were a full lap behind Raw Motorsport and then suddenly they were a minute and a quarter behind. So I think that Raw had pitted and RJ Motorsport hadn't. So they're now on the same lap as the car that we think is about to take the race lead. So uh, those two radicals we know have been evenly matched. The safety car will bunch them all together. Okay, 29 perhaps owes as a pit stop, but uh, this has tightened the scratch race up an awful lot for the uh, overall victory. And uh, that is uh, certainly going to be a developing story. We'll try and get to the bottom of exactly what's going on down at uh, Team 14 very shortly. In the meantime, though, uh, Lewis Beals has made his way down to the Toyota MR2 end of the pit lane and the Lock Stops and Two Smoking Tyres team. Thank you very much there. Yes, down Lock Stops and Two Smoking Tyres, we've got Adam Lockwood. Adam, you've gone quite well on the handicap. Fourth, I believe. Yeah, I think we're doing all right at the moment. We've, um, we've had a good day so far. Touch wood, no mistakes. Um, Jim's out at the moment, putting in some good solid lap times. I've just come in, um, and we were cons consistent, consistent. Traffic's a little bit of an issue, and obviously we've got a lot, a lot quicker cars out there as well, so you've just got to try and be careful of them. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going, it's going all right. We're, we're pretty pleased at the moment. Well, I can see from the grin in your face. But uh, how, how long a stint can you do with the MR2s? We do an hour stint. Um, they probably would do a little longer, uh, but by then tyres are tyres are getting pretty hot and bothered. Um, Fuel-wise, we can we can probably hold enough for about an hour and a half, um, but uh, I don't think the tyres would hang on for that long. <laughs> what about the driver? Uh, driver probably wouldn't hang on for that long either. So <laughs> it's uh, hours just about enough, I think. Yeah. Well, we were just talk we were just discussing about the radicals, which are the, the super fast cars in in, in the uh, in the race. Um, how do you how do you deal or look out for the radicals, which I take it must come past you virtually every lap? Yeah, the trouble is, is with the radicals is they're quite low down. So if you spot them on a straight, it's fine. It's on the corners. It's the problem because they di they dip underneath my mirror angle, and I just I can't see them. And the same for the other guys. Um, so some of them have been running with lights on, which really really helps. But yeah, they come round every, every lap, and they come up so quick. You see them in the mirror far away and then they're on it by the next corner but it's uh, it's all good it's just um try not to drive over one they, they don't like that <laughs> no no I, I i i hope you don't so what's uh, what's the what's your technique of keeping uh keeping safe keeping safe <laughs> keep look keep looking in those mirrors <laughs> did you tell me you keep to your line and let them jiggle around yeah best thing best thing to do just don't move let them let them go around you um, last thing they want is you sort of being unpredictable and sort of going left to right yeah just stick to stick to what you're doing and let them sort themselves out <laughs> okay Adam so anyway fingers crossed do you think you can make it a little further up the uh, handicap order fourth now do you think a winner's on the cards well you never know Jim's out at the moment and um, he's, he's pretty quick so um, yeah hopefully we, uh, you're going to hopefully claw some laps back uh, in, in this session. Yeah, that's the aim, and, 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 and Danny's uh, finishing, so um, and, and, and Danny's equally as quick. So, yeah, hopefully we can put in a real good finish on the last sort of hour, and uh, you never know. <laughs> OK, Adam, thanks a lot. We might even be come back and have a chat later. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. So that's Adam Lockwood from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Tyres and uh, telling us uh, what the situation is like uh, for those in the slightly slower cars trying to avoid the fast ones. Anyway, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. And uh, while you've been talking to Adam Lockwood, the latest bulletin has come out for the handicap. It is up to second. He was fourth uh, before that with the lock stops and two smoking tyres uh, team, which he shares with Jim Mew and Danny Bryant. But leading the way uh, still is the Triple A's racing uh, team number three with Andrew Raff, Andrew Etheridge, Phil Nib and uh, Chris Etheridge. Then in third place is 69 Mazda Mitzfits, which is Simon Walker Hansel. Uh, Stephen Reese, Alex Wilkinson Hughes, William Pickard, Nico Favot, and James McCann, as it all gets rather tight uh, behind the safety car by the looks of things. Uh, in fourth position is 35, which is the Carmel Porsches, Dads and Their Lads, which is the Craigos, the Walkers, and the McHughes. Um, in fifth position is 59, which is Royal Navy Motorsport. 
which is Adam Dewis, Seb Unwin, Gareth Moss and Simon Vernon. In sixth position is number eight, which is the Motion Motorsport team, uh, which is Chris Nylon, Jack Leese, Mitchell Hale and Will William Puttergilt. But uh, we can see multiple reasons, actually, Andy, why the safety car is out. Great. This is the these two cars have been here for a while on the inside of uh, Luffield. That is the Ginetta of Maurizio Schiglio and the Honda Integra, uh, which was Alan Smith, the number one RAF team flywheel Honda. They've both been there for at least half an hour, if not longer. So those teams have long since sent another car out, but they're finally getting their cars uh, recovered back to the paddock from the inside of Luffield. We also, Josh, have a 14 car back out on track. Now, I didn't see which one it was as it was uh, in the safety car queue. They have lost the lead in the scratch race, at least, but they might still be on the lead lap or just just off the lead lap, if that makes sense. So, um, depending, if I know they're sl slipping further back now, they are third in the scratch race now. So, it's Raw Motorsport who lead number 15, RJ Motorsport number 29 second, and Doris NWH third, but they're all still on the same lap. This is quite exciting now, isn't it? So we've very much got a race on our hands for the final one and three quarter hours. We get a true read of the gaps when we get the race back underway. But yeah, very much, uh, this is uh, gonna be very interesting indeed, I think, uh, for the scratch race, as well as the handicap. Because like you said, there's still this question mark probably over the Triple A's handicap if they've changed their tire uh, allocation, potentially. So we'll wait and see if that is factored in uh, a little bit later on. They've also, they're down to two cars. That was much earlier on they mm. were talking about that. So if they have a car go wrong, they'll be uh, in strife. So uh, you see Alistair Smart going through there. He's actually up to second, isn't he? That's the car that was two laps off after the first hour. Yes. They're back up to second place. So Alistair Smart, who started uh, that car, is back out, the PR6. But after that first hour, you wouldn't have really put them in the reckoning, would you? So even in this relay format, the endurance part of it does come into it. And the changing track conditions. I think they perhaps just struggled in the wet, but now it's dry. They've had some serious pace. As soon as they put slicks on that car, they were among the fastest out there. In fact, for a period of time, they had the fastest lap. So, um, yeah, clearly a quick car now that the track has dried out a little bit. And uh, they will now try from second position to challenge for the race speed. And there is Maurizio Schiglio car on the back of the flatbed truck being towed in is the Integra of Alan, uh, Alan Alex Smith uh, and those two cars both being sent to the paddock now. Um, that team were really in contention weren't they the yeah. uh, RAF team flywheels with all the former winners yes. they had a penalty uh, earlier on and now obviously lost one of their fast cars. Lost Alexander two Smith. actually they lost the Fiesta as well oh, right. I've already spotted this that, that broke down at Village and it was only about 15 minutes later that the Integra was stopped at Luffield, so they've lost at least two cars. Yeah, and they weren't factoring, were they, when we were just looking at the handicap no. positions? So, potentially not a win this year for the RAF. We heard earlier from how, how strong they they are, so they're being uh, the Army and uh, the Royal Navy are having to live up to the Armed Forces reputation to, uh, to be up there for a result at the end of this. But certainly a lot more safety cars this year, that is uh, for certain, because I think Lewis mentioned we only had, I think, had one last year, and that was right near the end of the race. Uh, but usually when it's really wet, we actually don't have many safety cars. I think everyone takes it up a little bit more cautiously. But we had that slippery condition, so I think everyone was pushing hard, um, but it was still tricky out there, which caused some problems. I would argue we've had more safety cars since it dried out, so that does sort of support your theory, doesn't it? It gets drier and the drivers uh, get a little bit braver, so uh, yeah, uh, and of course you keep bunching everybody up and you're far more likely to then uh, have some trouble on the racetrack, which is exactly what we've done now. We've bunched them all up, we've cleared the track, excellent work as always by the marshals and recovery crews, and that means that we, with an hour and 40 minutes to go, are about to get racing once again after the fifth safety car period of the race I think at least the fifth uh, and we are going racing once more the race leading radical is about two-thirds of the way down the uh, queue as we go racing again here green flags waving no overtaking uh, until you cross the timing line of course but uh, keep an eye for some of those quick radicals further back in the pack we're expecting those gaps to be not particularly large uh, between the top three cars just had the latest of the the prediction scores and Lewis has taken the lead now really so he's uh He's, he's fiddling things down in the pit lane, trying to, <laughs> to break the cars on our, on our points, I think. 
<laughs> I'm sure he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, as you say, the race has got back underway and it's free abreast already down towards Beckett. But there's the leader then. Uh, so this is 15B, I think I said earlier. So it's John McLeod who leads this race as he turns his way through past one of the BMWs and a Mini uh, gets, gets past that car, which was driven by Ben Taylor. Uh, then you've got Stuart Thompson, the Sports Specials champion. You've got Maxine Nichols in there, squeezes through. And we await RJ Motorsport and the Doris, Doris NWH team cars to complete their 100th lap of the race. Yeah, 100 laps in the book then, uh, with still over an hour and a half to go. And the gap officially is 33.4 seconds, first to second. Second to third, though, is under three seconds. So that's the battle we need to try and pick out here. RJ Motorsport 29 and Doris NWH number 14. You'd expect the 14 car to be a bit quicker based on the early pace, but they are 36.2 seconds off the lead at about two seconds off second place. And on pure pace, Royal Motorsport have been three seconds a lap slower than the two cars that are be chasing it down, uh, which obviously on an average lap time, it might not work out like that, which is the more important thing here. And there they are side by side. So Alistair Smart there in the PR6 had the SR3, I think, around the outside of him. And it's gone through, I reckon. So it looked like the Doris car went back into second place. And we get a confirmation of that. Yeah, there it is. This is this is Shane Stoney's car that was it smoked before. I reckon it's fuel overflow okay. because it's obviously going to be full of fuel at the moment. We shouldn't probably be doing that, hmm. but uh, I think that's uh, although Shane Stoney and Ryan Harper are sharing the car, aren't they? Just so one or the other <laughs> who are driving it, but they're both very quick, which is the thing there. And they're past Alistair Smart, well, he's three seconds behind him, he's already three seconds ahead of him. They haven't completed the lap yet. Yeah, the inside of one of the uh, Ginetta G20s they go, so uh, let's hope that is just fuel overflow. Seems to be doing it around most of the lap now, though. Whereas first time we saw it, it was really just through the uh, through the right handers. But anyway, he's uh, charging his way through the traffic, and I'll be interested <laughs> to see the lap times not hanging around at all, is he? Absolutely not. It is Shane Stoney. I just saw the letter on the side of the car. So yeah, I think he's been told to go on full <laughs> burners, hasn't he? And he is absolutely flying. But he's got to be cautious here because the cars around him obviously are a lot slow. We heard from the drivers earlier; they're not easy to see. And this is one of the cars it doesn't have the light bar on it so and he's getting sideways is he that's because he's pushing on or is it because of this fluid but this amount like you saying he might be attracting the um, the officials attention the marshals will be having a look at that whether they think it's okay or not but uh, for Shane Stone he turns into Cops corner uh, to start the 102nd lap of this race and he's got to cars side by side up ahead of him uh, but it's still, of course, uh, John McLeod who leads the way for Royal Motorsport. Because he had less traffic, he's actually still quicker than Shane Stoney by about a second on that lap. Yeah, it'll take Stoney another lap or two probably to get through the worst of the traffic, by which point he'll have caught the back end of the train again, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, he is certainly not hanging around here, ducking and diving. This is some of the most spectacular driving we've seen all race long. And Shane Stoney, knowing that they're under the thumb a bit now, um, uh, is determined try and gain some of this time back should they in for whatever reason end up losing a bit of time uh, again later on in the race but you can see there as he comes through Stoke Corner the fluid continuing to come out of the back of the car if it is fuel overflow Josh you'd expect that to get a little bit better as the laps go by almost a bit of a squeeze well there was a bit of a squeeze from the 58e uh, BMW there of uh, Doug Inglis uh, but yeah if that is just uh, an overflow of uh, fuel you would hope to see that uh, mm. lessening slightly by now. Yeah, and it seemed more major than the previous time, yeah. but he's carving his way through the traffic. Shane Stoney's got a very diverse race in history, because he won the Sax Max Championship back in 2011. Then he won the Mini Challenge twice in the Cooper class. Then he turned his attention to Radical to won the Radical SR1 Cup. And then he won the Burkett uh, just a couple of years ago. So going gone from tin tops to sports cars, but it seems wherever he drives, he's very quick, and we're seeing why. Uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, his racecraft is absolutely second to none. And, and you learn that through one make racing, which is what he's done throughout his whole career, be that in the Radical or, as you said, uh, in front-wheel drive, tin tops in the past. And he's now, I'd say, through the worst of the traffic, isn't he? That it's now just one or two cars that he's catching uh, every few corners rather than a, a constant um, 
group of cars around him. Lots of fluid out of the back of the car there. Offline, thankfully, through Luffield. This is starting to concern me, though, Josh, because I think that's getting worse, not better. Yeah, that's right. And the race lead has just done their personal best lap of the race. So John McLeod pushing on himself, perhaps in a bit of clear road. He's done a 2.09.6. So still not the outright pace of the two cars, or uh, two competitor cars. But it doesn't seem to be slowing Shane Stoney down much because despite all that traffic, he did a 2.11, so he was only a second and a half slower than the leader. But how spectacular are some of those moves? I think he took four cars around the outside of club on, on that previous lap. Uh, meanwhile, he uh, up at Stowe Corner. Well, he's got a bit clear track now, hasn't yeah. he, Andy? Yeah, this looks a bit better now, doesn't it? And that uh, the smoke is actually, as, as soon as I said it was getting worse, does now seem to be getting better. So your theory might be holding water here. Into Stowe he goes, and noticeably less coming out of the back of the car-ish. Anyway, we'll monitor it over the next few laps. But what we do know is he should go quickly on this lap. This car holds the fastest lap of the race. It's capable of doing two minutes six lap times. Uh, While well, the race leader just did a two minutes nine, so if he can unlock that sort of pace, then he should start bridging this 38-second uh, gap. He's already 11 seconds clear, or was at the start of the lap, uh, of the RJ Motorsport 1 car in third position, uh, with RJ Motorsport 2 a lap further back then in uh, in fourth spot. But Shane Stoney, uh, absolutely spectacular to watch, blast around the outside of one of the Honda Civics. Uh, and this, I think, uh, Josh, could be a really quick lap. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, at the moment, we're a couple of seconds outside the lap record. Uh, for the Burkitt Relay on this layout. This layout's only been used for a few years. Uh, and while we uh, continue to watch this, down in the pit lane is uh, Lewis Bills. Let's see who he's caught up with. Thank you very much, guys. And we're prepping lay G Sport, Russell Dack, who's uh, literally just coming off the track. Um, car number 12, team 12, should I say. And um, I think you're sort of about fifth place, Russell. You're doing well. Yeah, we're not doing too bad. I, I think we've dropped down to six now. I've got a time penalty, but I'm not too sure why. Um, and it wasn't a small one, it was 60 seconds. So I'm going to go and find out what that was. But yeah, no, we're doing all right. You, never, you know what it's like. It's not over till it's over, is it? So you never know where we're going to get to. Yeah, yeah, I think one or two got some time penalties there. I think that may have been a transgression under the safety car. Ah, is that what they're saying, is it? All oh, right. I'm speculating a little bit, but just because there was a safety car a little bit before the, all the, the penalties got dished out. Yeah, there was a, quite a lot of numbers came up on that board saying, <laughs> saying there was penalties. But yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get used to the car as well because I've never driven the car until today because I obviously have my own car here and the diff blew up two laps into qualifying. And then James kindly said to me I could use his car as well. So we're using one car twice. So it's quite hard for the car, to be honest. Well, yeah, so what's the difference between your BMW M3 and uh, James's? Mine, mine's obviously an earlier M3. It has got the later engine in it, but mine's got uh, motorsport ABS, and James hasn't got a any ABS at all. So I'm trying to literally drive a car now with, you know, no ABS, and I'm quite used to coming in the corners extremely quick. <laughs> not, I'm not using the ABS all the time, but it's always there just in case. Anyway, other than that, you're enjoying yourself. Always enjoy the Burkitt, always. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a special event, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's, um, it's good, and like, all my family and friends turn up. My daughter's the team manager, which is nice for us. And uh, everybody's here under their own steam. No one's paid. They're all doing it as the last race of the season and to enjoy ourselves, so it's great. OK, Russell, and uh, good luck, and uh, hopefully you might, might make a little bit further up the order before the end of the race. We've got one lap to gain. Let's see what happens. OK, buddy, thank you very much. You. There you go. That's uh, Russell Dack and, uh, from Team 12, and uh, that's the information he's got, and it's back to you in the studio. Thanks, uh, Lewis. Uh, I noted down an unofficial production car lap record which that team have beaten by a tenth of a second, I reckon, because uh, in, back in 2018, Cole Swift in a TCR car did a 2.15.3, and that team in one of their BMWs had done a 2.15.2 during the course of this race. So that's, as I say, an unofficial production car lap record for the Burkitt, uh, because, of course, the Radical's so much quicker, but uh, an impressive lap time there uh, during the course of the race for that team.
Speaking of impressive lap times, Shane Stoney, now that he is in clean air, is going quicker than the leader by about three and a bit seconds a lap. So uh, 32.8 seconds, that's called about 33 seconds is the gap. It'll take him a long time uh, at that rate, about 14 laps or so, uh, to catch the race leader. There he is. Uh, and of course, he's now back in traffic. So he had that one lap where he was in pretty clean air. And now he's uh, surrounded by cars once again, the 12A BMW uh, just behind him off. Uh, well, can't tell, babe, because that was Russell Dack, who we've just been speaking to uh, down in the pit lane. But anyway, that BMW carving its way through too. And Shane Stoney continues to push on. He's built up already uh, a big old lead of about 21 seconds or so over RJ Motorsport uh, in third position. Class D, uh, sorry, Class B still being led provisionally at least by Triple A's racing in fifth position but if they do get bumped up into Class D uh, then that will be Capture Motorsport leading the way and they've got the best part of two minutes over Dark Side Motorsport so that gap uh, has increased as well in the recent past as we move now into the final 90 minutes of the race. Yeah he just got past uh, Chris Stone's Honda Civic uh, we saw there did Shane Stoney but while he's going through traffic Andy I'm sure the same thing can be said for John McLeod who leads the way. Ooh. And it's uh, busy there, including for one of our handicapped front runners, which is Jim Mew in the Lock Stops and um, car, the Toyota MR2, that's working its way through. It was uh, David Russell's BMW who he was around uh, in all of that. And that more penalty boards possibly going out, just uh, I, I noticed there, we didn't, couldn't see who it was for, but uh, it's a busy uh, place to be, isn't it, to be a start line marshal on this event? Yes, uh, it is indeed. They're positioned just outside of our commentary box window, but I still can't quite see the numbers on the board. So we'll uh, see if we get another shot of, uh, of that part of the circuit. But penalties affecting uh, quite a few front-running cars, actually, of late. Uh, certainly we've had two or three of our top ten runners uh, in the pit lane recently serving stop-go penalties. So um, it's an easy way to lose your race if you start getting uh, punished for indiscretions but you're right the number 11b car running well at this stage 11b in the hands of jim mew uh, was uh, set to be one of our front running contenders in the handicap race confirmation from the pit lane that it was an engine failure for the doris team straight out of the pit lane oh as no. i thought was uh, the case meanwhile um for 17c which is ben taylor's mini taking an unconventional line there um out at club corner not the only driver to have done so down at that part of the circuit, although since it's dried out, it's become a little bit more, um, a little bit less common, I should say, to see people grass tracking down there. But the Mini bounces its way back onto the road. So engine failure then for that number 14 car, that means they're down to at least, uh, or at most, two cars uh, that they've got left to run the rest of the race. And that's going to really apply the pressure now. Those three car teams, you'd think three cars is more than enough to get you through six hours, but once you lose one, the pressure is on not to lose another because that could be your day done. So, uh, fingers crossed, they're able to carry on because I still think they're in this race, certainly the scratch race. They've lost time now uh, in the handicap, of course, but they never really were a factor in the handicap, at least not uh, up until the um, last bulletin that we had half an hour or so ago. But for the scratch race, if that car runs faultlessly to the end, uh, they could still have a shot. They continue to close on the lead at the gap now less than 30 seconds. Five seconds on the last lap, yeah. Shane Stoney was quicker than John McLeod. So uh, he continues to carve that gap down as they work lap 106 of the race. Still seeing some personal bests uh, in. In 15th position, RJ Motorsport, which is a team of Honda Civic. So they're going well inside the top 15, Mervyn Beckett. Uh, part of that team, had a chat with him this morning. Here is Shane Stoney, he's the quickest driver on the circuit at the moment, turning his way through Luffield and there he's sideways. BMW gets out the way uh, and then he carves to the outside of the next one through Woodcote on that lap. John McLeod is a 2.15, so as he's catching all this traffic that Shane Stoney's going to have to deal with in a moment, he's done a much slower lap time. So the uh, yeah, this chase is very much on for the lead in this stint. 23.8 seconds now, so he was another four and a bit seconds quicker that time around, Shane Stoney. Dives to the inside of, well, well just one car in the end, through Beckett's corner. The Honda Civic turned into the corner just ahead of him, and uh, he is continuing to make impressive progress here, Josh. Yeah, the Honda he just got past was Jack Leach, who's gone back to driving a Honda Civic, because all season he's been in a Radical. No. In, well, he did bike sports to start off with, then he did the final round of the Radical Challenge, and he got rather harpooned out of that race ah. so he's gone back to Honda Civic which he raced last year where he finished fifth in the Type R trophy so uh, Jack Leese has gone another lap down to the 
uh, radicals here up front and a lot more cars while I was describing that have gone uh, been passed by Shane Stoney, uh, including 41B there, which is Paul Sheard. Yeah, Paul Sheard, uh, Mr. M MX5 really, and uh, big supporter of the new Mark IV MX5s. He's trying to get more of them over here in the UK, and uh, he's at the wheel of uh, one of his cars. Uh, he'll be at the wheel of another MX-5 in a week's time at the um, Circuit Rally at Alton Park, uh, which is uh, apparently you can drive an MX-5 in anything. Someone's had a moment. That's another Mini, isn't it, off the club corner? <laughs> when isn't it? <laughs> it? When I was on before, it was... Uh, is it the same car? It is. It's Ben it Taylor. Is. It's like a, a replay of three Two minutes Two laps ago. in a row. Yes, that's... That's suboptimal, I think, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sure he'll describe it as something like that. <laughs> Speaking of minis, another couple of them here. There are plenty of minis all of a sudden in this stint. I think they've uh, written some sort of uh, pact between themselves that will all go out at the same time. And uh, it's a little mini challenge race we've got going on here. 27A ahead of 24B. 27A is Sean Woodard. And 24B is Lee Campbell, those two uh, nose to tail as they go through the final couple of corners on this lap. And... Uh, there goes Paul Sheard, as I said, in his uh, Mark IV Mazda MX-5. But uh, what's the latest lap time, I wonder, for the race leader? Right on cue, 2 minutes 12. So a better lap time that time from uh, John McLeod. Uh, so hopefully not quite as much damage done uh, as far as, the, as his lead gap's concerned. Uh, Lewis, down in the pit lane, what have you got? Thank you very much. Yeah, we're down here with the Doris NWH, one of their teams, Mark Williams, actually. And Mark, you were just, uh, well, can you explain what happened? Because you were well in the lead. Now you're back in second place, but um, only 30 odd seconds behind. What happened? Yeah, well, unfortunately, we've already had one car failure today. So we were using the backup car, our third car, and I was going out for 10 laps while they serviced the, the other car ready to go again. But fortunately, I got out the pit lane and uh, changed from second to third, which was okay, then up from third to fourth, and the car just went pop and cut out. I originally thought it was the engine, but now we've got it back, it's just the coil supplies came off. So we put that back on now and it's good to go again. So uh, hopefully we can retake the lead, all going well, and uh, I'll maybe get out for the last 10 minutes in that car, we'll see how it goes. Well, you're going to try it again, are you? Well, I think we'll have to, we've not got the fuel in the other car to run to the end, so it'll have to come back in. and. We'll probably have to do the last 10 or 15 minutes in that car, I believe. Well, that's going to be nerve-wracking, isn't it? Yeah, either that or we stay out and run out of fuel. So run out of fuel or win, who knows? Let's see, where, let's see if we can take the lead again first. Oh, yeah, 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 you're rolling the dice, it's going to be a gamble. Yeah, that's basically it, so we'll see how we go. So who's out in the car, uh, who's out for you at the moment? Uh, Shane Stoney's back in the car now. Shane Stoney's back in, doing another lap. And he's, he's a very quick driver, so hopefully he'll pull them in. Hopefully he'll pull them in. OK, Mark, I can see the team have been uh, 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 operating. Is Roger. Oh, oh, oh dear. Uh, we, we, OK, <laughs> Roger, yeah, 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 you're in charge, are you? <laughs> Worst things have been said about me. <laughs> anyway, OK, we'll let, let you let you back in there. So it's, uh, it's, it's touch and go, Mark says, could be touch and go. It's very, very touch and go, and we knew this was a possibility. Shane's will be running on drags, so uh, it's it's... I think he's reading in the leaders, so it's 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 classic Burkitt. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Too right. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So there we are. That's uh, that's the uh, action down. There. That's that's the tense. That's the tenseness down here in uh, pit four, eh? With the uh, Doris NWH team, and uh, fingers crossed that uh, well, we're going to get a really cracking finish. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, uh, Lewis. So yeah, a bit of confirmation down there. Uh, from Mark Williams that uh, the other car broke earlier so that's uh, the car that he and Roger Bromley were sharing I understand that was a gearbox failure in that car earlier on I think we can say that now and uh, because uh, the world now knows that they're down to one fully functioning car that one with the engine failure it sounds like they think they fixed it to a degree that they can get it back out if necessary but ideally they'd like Shane Stone to keep going but surely a radical can't go for 90 minutes on a tank of fuel unless there are some pauses into proceedings for the remainder of the race. True, if they get a couple of safety cars, they might be able to save, but um, the way Shane Stoney's driving it, he's <laughs> not conserving anything, is he? So he is absolutely going flat out. He's got now to nearly within 20 seconds of the race lead. It sets us up for a fascinating conclusion to the race, though, because there's every chance that he'll get the lead in this stint. In fact, I'd say that it's almost a foregone conclusion. On pace alone, he should be leading in about an hour's time when the car will run out of fuel. He'll bring it into the pit lane. But will the other car get to the end? Because it 
barely made it out of the pit lane last time. So uh, can they get it to do the final 15 or 20 minutes uh, without that engine issue recurring? That's going to be the fascinating thing. The Burkett is going to keep us guessing right down to the final laps again. And for Alistair Smart, I'm afraid, he wasn't very quick in the wet earlier and he's equally maybe not as fast as the others in the dry either because he's dropped over a minute away from Shane Stoney, so the Radical PR6. There's a bit more of a handful, to be fair, uh, going through the traffic, so therefore Alistair Smart doesn't seem to have the pace to live up to the top two, but perhaps when they get uh, either Charles um, Graham or perhaps Wade Eastwood, who was so quick earlier on, into that car. That could be a third car that uh, buys its way into a battle for the lead, particularly if there are problems for others, which we know there is. So we're anticipating that the final 20 minutes of the race could be quite dramatic. Uh, Ian Soman, ever want to stir the pot, has just shown me a weather radar that says it's going to rain at 20 past five <laughs> with 20 minutes to go. So just as that's all going to kick off with the uh, the mystery surrounding the uh, number 14 uh, squad and their mechanical issues that they may or may not face at the end of the race. Um, we also could throw in some weather, but uh, we'll see whether that transpires or not. We're an hour and 19 minutes away from the conclusion of this race, and the scratch race, at the very least, is going to be a real close-knit battle, I think, at the end. 17 and a half seconds now, the gap between the top two. So the rate at which Stoney's closing, it's an average of about three or four seconds, like we took five last time around. Um, he could be there in the next four to five laps, I think, couldn't they? Yeah. And this is very impressive because John McLeod's not a slow driver. He no. finished fourth in the Radical Challenge Championship, which is massively competitive, um, earlier on uh, or during the season. And Shane Stone, who hasn't done a full season of racing uh, in this car, is lapping dramatically quicker. But ha well, they've both got experience, to be fair, because they're both former winners of this race as well. So it's not even that's not uh, a factor uh, necessarily. So going to be. Uh, interesting to see what happens once he does catch uh, John McLeod uh, and whether he catches John McLeod before he uh, makes a pit stop in for that what will probably be the final pit stop of the race for the Royal Most Sport team although we're hoping it is uh, at any rate and there's Nigel Brown how are the sport specials team getting on uh, run baby run they've fallen a bit further down the order haven't they they're 22nd now so I think they might have had a few dramas because they're sort of in that odd position where they're in sort of sports cars the kit cars but they're not got the power of the the radicals and things so they're sort of amongst all the production cars which must be an unpleasant place to be in much smaller machinery uh, yeah absolutely uh, real little and large isn't it well there you saw visibly the lead gap i think that came down again by quite a chunk on that lap it was two minutes 12 for the race leading car but as they went out of cops corner shane stoney was appearing coming out of woodgo yes yeah, 16 seconds well actually only took a second out of them that time so uh, perhaps the camera making it look like a smaller gap than it actually was but shane stoney is coming and here again is the problem traffic up the road and very very close to disaster there in fact that's the 30 isn't it that yeah. I was getting confused with that's the RJ Motorsports Radical uh, but of course by the end of this lap Shane Stoney will also be in that group so you can imagine that's the reason McLeod was losing time over the last couple of laps and Shane Stoney was starting to take some real chunks out of him yeah it depends how effectively then he worked his way through the traffic that's what it's all yeah. about so yeah it was Ash Hicklin who I think had to come completely out of the throttle didn't he down the hangar straight to avoid some kind of disaster which I guess it's, it's just managing risk all the time, isn't it? So there goes McLeod through uh, Abbey, it's basically through Club Corner, comes Shane Stoney, and he's dealt with most of that traffic because there's not too much more of it to go, including one of the Catrums. We thought at the beginning there were quite a few Catrums in this race. We haven't actually, or during my stint, we haven't spoke too much about them. Uh, so they haven't featured sort of in front of the, uh, the other production cars, I think because they, so, they are so quick now, the fast production cars, having DCR cars and those fast M3s in the past, the Catrons probably would be ahead of that group, but that's not the case anymore. So through comes Stoney, out onto the Wellington Strait once again for lap 111 of this race. And into Brooklyn he goes. It's a very standard looking Renault Clio, that, isn't it, that he's just put a lap on. They're pretty much a road car that's uh, had a number put on to it and presumably a roll cage and all the safety equipment. But apart from that, that looks like a very standard car. 
Indeed so. Uh, 32A, by the way, is now Axel van Niederveen uh, after Anastasi had his mechanical issue and Skiglio had a penalty. So uh, Axel van Niederveen take over. I seem to recall him being in strife earlier on in the race as well, but I forget the details now of uh, what his problem was exactly. Number 3A comes through. That's AAA's racing. And uh, that is the uh, Seat Leon Cupra, Phil Nib. And yeah. uh, this is the car that we still have questions about as to uh, which class they're in, but they're in fifth place overall. Yes, Andrew raffing it at the moment. He was due to be in his Lotus, but that broke earlier. Yeah. So uh, oh. he's borrowing Phil Nib's car. Um, as a few of them are, I think, <laughs> borrowing their mate's cars so they can go racing uh, today. So Andrew Raff turns his way through uh, Brooklyn's lead in the on handicap at the last bulletin. And they're in fifth overall on scratch as well. And their best lap are 220. So they haven't lapped as quick as the BMW team, who are now only 40 seconds behind. Because when we heard from that team earlier, at 18 with the black flag. Ah. So that is Mrs. Mansell's Misfits which is, I think, the uh, the classic modern modern motorsport club uh, team. Dave Cholton, Warren Johnson, Adrian Matthews, Nick Lund, Gideon September, and Justin Ross. And it might be Justin Ross who's out there at the moment, that Clio, I think, uh, that, yes. that I saw. 12 seconds is the leading gap. Four seconds on that lap, Shane Stoney was quicker than John McLeod. So is he going to catch him before your stint is over, Andy? Well, I reckon another three laps. So yes, we might get a lead change uh, before uh, Ian Soberman jumps back in uh, for the final hour alongside you, Joss. But uh, Josh, even. Uh, but yes, that's going to be close, isn't it? He's certainly closing in uh, every lap now by about four seconds, regardless of how much traffic is around him. Uh, Andrew Raff here heading towards uh, Stowe Corner. Turning his way through, and there, the number 30 car, which runs in uh, in fourth position. Now, what are their lap times like? Two minutes 12. So, uh, every, all of the top uh, the second, third, and fourth place cars are all quicker than the race leader at the moment. So, John McLeod uh, struggling a little bit for pace. Uh, now, we've got a couple of cars being given penalties. Four cars have been given track limits penalties. Um, and this is 8 and 18, I think is what that says. So 8 and 18 have outstanding penalties. 8 is Motion Motorsport. And 18, uh, as you said, uh, Mrs. Mansell's misfits. So I'm guessing the 8 have served that penalty. And uh, 18 uh, were still outstanding with their stop go. And 8, Motion Motorsport, were one of the uh, front runners in the handicap up to that point. Yes. Uh, the team that Jack Lease is in. As well as Chris Nyland, who was the runner-up this year in the Type R Trophy. Uh, and then Mitchell Hale and William Puttergill as well. Get that, uh, lead gaps in less than 10 seconds between McLeod and uh, Stoney. And look at all this traffic they've got to come up to in just a few moments' time. And there is the race leader, John McLeod. So he's... Uh, Going to have to take a deep breath, Andy, and work his way through. Uh, yes, indeed. The next radical was the number 30, and there, the car that's chasing him down for position is Shane Stoney, the white number 14 car, uh, out of Club Corner. We reckon he's going to be able to keep going for less than an hour, about 50 minutes or so, and then he will hand over to a car that may or may not uh, be capable of making the finish of the race. But right now, he's not thinking about that. His job is to get the lead, get as big a gap as possible, so that if there is an issue for the other car, uh, they can perhaps just refuel this one and send it back out but they're not allowed to refuel in the pit lane they have to do it in the garage and that means that uh, they have to drive the car down the pit lane round the back of the paddock find a space to get through all of the traffic into the garage then refuel it and then send it back out which is a good you know three minutes or so minimum uh, that it would cost him so he needs to get the lead and try and pull as big a gap as he possibly can and uh, getting the lead is going to be tricky now because as you said he's got all of this traffic and he's catching it at the worst part of the track yeah, there's so many probably bad places, aren't there, really? But yeah, through Luffield. He just tried to clean around the outside of three cars there. Um, and he's dealt with that. Um, then he comes up and that's Colin Benham in his um, car. So he's past that and under the Catrums. Uh, you've got a Porsche in there and a BMW as well. And there is the race leader, John McLeod, who's pretty much dealt with them. Um, and he gets a good lap time as well, at 2 minutes 12, despite all that traffic. Yeah, that wasn't bad, actually, and uh, we'll get Stoney's time in a moment or two, but I suspect he was delayed, although it didn't look it because he kept his speed up around the outside. He was still off the line there through the final corner. Uh, well, it was still a 2 minutes 10.2, so, excuse me, over two uh, tenths quicker 
two seconds quicker than the race leader. That's a confusing graphic. Yeah, I, I wonder here if somebody has sent their car out too early mm. because that lap time is certainly ah. not a true lap time. No. So uh, we just saw Colin Benham on track. That car is not capable of going that quickly. So <laughs> I imagine they've sent a car out. Perhaps they thought one car was broken out on the circuit. So that car might be getting a penalty uh, forthcoming. Which is fine. You, you don't necessarily get a penalty. You just don't have uh, you don't have your laps counted uh, whilst you're out on well, track. Is my understanding, isn't it? And yeah, you normally have two laps taken away. I think so uh, every, right, every lap's okay. tight. Yeah, so every okay. lap basically taken away. So that uh, team are in trouble, I think. So um, team ten, run baby run, are working their way up the timing screen, but they're going to fall back down again as they get uh, penalised. So here comes Stoney up the inside. Oh, oh no. we've had an instant behind him up at uh, the Vale. 45B was one. Okay, I got the other one. So it's Fraser McFadden's BMW Z4, which is 53C, and Andy Peck with the Porsche 968. Um, yeah. So that's Z Cars 2 and Cap Ryan Insurance. And what might this mean, I wonder? Uh, I don't know what you're suggesting <laughs> here, Josh. The Porsche is definitely in a dangerous position, though. It's not moving from the gravel trap. The other car did get going, I think. Uh, but we've had safety cars for cars stuck in that gravel now, so far in this race, haven't we? If you're the Doris team, the safety car comes out, do you come in and put fuel in the car that you know is good and lose less time out on the circuit? Uh, yes, is the short <laughs> answer for sure, because I reckon they could do that and not quite lose a lap. And I think that's what's happening, isn't it? There's a yellow flag at the start line, and I think we're going safety car for at least the sixth time uh, in this Burkett six-hour relay race. Yep, driver's slowing down, are they? Is there a yellow flag? No, that's actually no, a... Another yellow at Cops, I reckon. Right, okay, so that's not a safety car. Yeah, there's something going on at Cops Corner. Couldn't quite see what, but this now increases the likelihood of there being a safety car because we've now potentially got two cars off in dangerous positions. Interesting, Ash Hicklin has managed to catch um Oh. John McLeod, the leader, hasn't he? So Hicklin, who's in fourth, is trying to unlap himself. They were just lapping Rob Baker there, the three-time club enduro champion. Out now, though, in a Volkswagen Golf, which we understand is what they're going to run next year uh, in the club enduro championship. So on that lap, though, Shane Stoney didn't bring the gap down anymore. So we should get a look here at Vale and see if uh, this is something that can be done under local yellows or whether a further intervention is needed. The Silverstone Marshals are there with the driver, but that car is a damaged car as well. It's not just a car that uh, perhaps can be pushed. It might have more damage. The BMW got back going, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It's quite heavily damaged, isn't it, as well? So, yeah, that's not going to be easy. The Marshals are just kind of standing there, which tells me they're waiting for a, a live snatch vehicle or for the safety car to be thrown uh, so that they can really work on it. The race leader there with a close moment in traffic, but Shane Stoney is almost within sight now uh, of the leading Radical, and uh, he will be, in a way, hoping that we don't get a safety car because the racer in him will be really enjoying this, chasing after the uh, leaders. He'll want to do it all on merit, but a safety car, as uh, Josh quite rightly says, could be their salvation if they've got... Uh, concerns over their surviving sort of spare car if you like that's in the garage might give them the opportunity to refuel this one and take it to the end with i guess shane stoney staying behind the wheel but uh shane carving his way again through the traffic and the 39d car it is the uh, 39 car you were right uh, the renault clio there and uh, comes through to again not to see a safety car board. So I think, Josh, they're going to try and clear this without bringing the safety car out. Yeah, they're trying their hardest. Obviously, we've got this other situation at Cops Corner where we have double waved yellows there. So I suspect there's another live snatching operation at Cops Corner as well. So the other thing the drivers have got to be careful here, while we've got lots of yellow flags out, is not to go past a car under yellows because there will be a penalty uh, for that. And uh, they tend to not be just a, a stop go either as Ash Hicklin is working his way through there. I think Randy outside of Ed Christie's M3 by the looks of it. The lead gap is now 4.2 seconds as uh, Shane Stoney is getting through the traffic that little bit quicker than John McLeod. And John McLeod's got this extra sort of confusion of Ash Hicklin bearing down on him. Uh, which could actually play in his favour once Stoney arrives on his tail, because Stoney will first have to get past Hicklin uh, in order to have a go at John McLeod for the race lead. Hicklin, remember, is a couple of laps down on those two. Uh, there is the JCB pulling the... Um, 45B Porsche out of the way. So the damaged car of um, Andy Peck uh, is being uh, dragged out of harm's way. And that 
is uh, being done under double waved yellows, as we've said. Green flags waving once again on the exit of the corner, which means that now Wes Payne can go past the slower BMW. So too can the radical of Shane Stoney, uh, who on this lap, Josh, I think if anything is losing time, I think partly because he's catching traffic into those yellow flag zones. Yeah, and you, you lose less than you get penalised, so you definitely yes. don't want to go through. But yeah, it does seem that gap is larger and then to McLeod, the leader uh, of the race in a very similar car. And there is uh, McLeod, who's still ahead of Hicklin. And then, yeah, there's multiple lapped cars. Where is Shane Stoney? Yeah, he's lost huge yeah. amount of time. Um, whether, of course, he had cops as well. That could have, you could have lost time there. And then further time at the Vale, seemingly. So this lead gap for the first time all stint, really, is going to go out on this lap. Yeah, he did have traffic ahead of him going past the pits. So, um, I mean, you think of the mid-corner speed of that Radical. If he's now stuck at Honda Civic pace, for example, through Cops Corner, uh, then that is uh, really going to um, lose him a lot of time. Right then, uh, as the scratch race really starts to heat up, and we'll give you that updated gap in a moment or two, uh, we also now have had an update on the handicap positions. This was as of four and a half hours, though, so this is about 25 minutes out of date. Uh, but things have changed around, haven't they, Josh? Because it looks like they have tweaked the... Yes, AAA's racing have been moved officially now into Class D. They've adjusted the handicap, and that leaves us with three teams on the lead lap. Uh, leading on handicap, then, was the number 11... Um, lock stops and two smoking tyres Toyota MR2 team second number 69 the Mazda Misfits and third number 44 too fast too furious and there was not a lot of time between those leading three cars then a whole group of them on 109 laps so one lap down Rutec Racing's BMW tries were fourth number 62 fifth for number third, uh, number three AAA's Racing who as we've said have been moved into Class D now sixth number 63 Rutec Racing's BMW Compact seventh number 35 um, Cap Dads and their lads and Class B runner they are. Eighth position then for number eight Motion Motorsport 1. Ninth number 33 TSR Performance and also on the same lap as all of those cars in 10th position at number 23 four corners so that is kind of what we expected Josh uh, with the number three team shifting classes and it means we've got a very very close race heading into this final hour yeah so one car we haven't mentioned two one team we haven't mentioned too much is 44 isn't it who's up to third that's the 116 yeah. trophy team uh, too fast too furious of Louis Woodward Toby Partridge Richard Phillips and Richard Lakey so they work their way into contention now as the uh, lead gap on scratch is nine seconds between John McLeod and um, the chasing car of Shane Stoney. As we uh, see here, there's our handicap leader, the MR2 at the front of this, which we do pick up. That looks like Adam Lockwood's car. Uh, it's not, <laughs> so that's good. Rep <laughs> that's good uh, <laughs> it's Jim Mew who's, uh, who's in that one, who's, uh, who also races in the MR2 Championship uh, with Adam Lockwood and the third driver is Danny Bryant, all in these uh, latest generation of MR2s, the Toyota MR2 Roadster, the Mark III car. And obviously, Andy, they've just been consistently banging in the laps while we've been focusing on radicals battling away up front. Uh, they're just getting their job done. Well, the only time we've mentioned them is when we do the half-hourly handicap bulletins, which is good because it means then they're, they're staying out of trouble. They've had no penalties. They've not broken down. They've not had an accident, uh, and they have just kept on circulating. <laughs> nearly uh, very wide out of Luffield Corner went Jim Mew, and I'm going to stop talking about them now, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, there's probably so many moments like that though <laughs> on every single lap, let alone during the course of the race. It's just uh, when we pick it up so uh, they continue to lead then this uh, race with just over an hour uh, to go then and just uh, up ahead of them is 63a on the road which is martin roche in his bmw compact but we can ride on board now with 48e i think that is which is scott parkin in the audi the uh, the tt the driver uh, Scott Parkin uh, raced a Volkswagen Golf during the course of the season, was a winner in his class at Anglesey a couple of months ago, finished second in the championship. But great to have these uh, Audis uh, here that Darkside Developments have put together. Uh, they're a good looking car and they're quick as well. 
They are indeed, and Scott Parkin, a very rapid driver as well, just nips up the inside of a slower car there into Village, uh, and now through the left-hander at the loop, and actually he didn't quite get past that Porsche, did it, because it's still in front, and now he dies for a very small gap on the uh, inside line into Aintree Corner, but some brilliant onboard footage here from the Audi as he accelerates down the Wellington Strait. Uh, pick his breaking point now into Brooklyn's corner. He breaks so late into this corner. There he goes, dives uh, into the left-hander. Nice late apex. Sun look right in his eyes as he turns into the apex. And as we move into the final hour of this race, which is about to happen, Josh, that's only going to get worse. So uh, they've got the sun in their eyes. They've got rain, supposedly, on the way in about half an hour or so. Uh, and we've got a fascinating conclusion to this Burkett six-hour relay race coming up. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And... Uh, thanks to Andy McEwen. Good to share a country box with Andy after I don't know when the last time we did that. So Andy, I think, might uh, come back for the uh, after the race to tell us his thoughts uh, on this event. But we'll hear from Ian in a moment. But I was speaking to, it was one of the Bart Parkin twins, I'm never sure which one it really was, that uh, Scott and, and Ryan, about the problem they had earlier when Dan Sylvester was in this car. And he said they had an ABS problem, so when the safety car out, Dan tried to reset the car. And when he did that, it wouldn't restart. And they reckon in the end, it was where the, the standard key fob goes, it, it broke during the course of the, uh, the trying to restart it. Because he said it's a sort of a dodgy road car um, thing. And uh, therefore, it had to be recovered. So then they were hoping to have a three hour stint in the Gulf. And that ended after an hour when they had this turbo boost issue. But they're still well up. They're eight for on scratch. I think a little bit further down the order on the handicap. Uh, positions when from where they'd like to be, but uh, still well up the order nevertheless. Ian? Yes, uh, hello again, Josh. Hello, everyone, and thanks to Andy McEwen for the four hours he's put in the commentary box so far. And yeah, let's have a quick look at the scratch positions, just a reminder, especially for those at the circuit who maybe don't have access to a timing screen. A long lap there from Team 15, which means that now it's Team 14. Doris NWH back into the lead, so that possibly is just a, a change of driver, change of car there for Team uh, 15. So it's number 14, Doris NWH, that now leads by just a shade under 23 seconds, with all of both of them having 118 laps in the book from Team 15, Royal Motorsports. Uh, then third, also on the lead lap, is Team 29, RJ Motorsport 1. A lap down, maybe two laps down, is number 30, RJ Motorsports 2. Fifth, number three, Triple A's Racing. In sixth place, number 12, that's uh, Prep and Lay G Sport. Seventh, number 16, Capture Motorsport. Eighth is number 48, Darkside Motorsport. Ninth is 36, Get to the Chopper. And running out of the top 10 is number 51, Area Motorsport. But still uh, an hour to pan out. In terms of the weather, the forecast looking a little bit more optimistic that we might get through to the end of the race <laughs> without too much rain now. But um, we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. We just got a shot of Capture Motorsport there, Ian, and I think it's Sylvain Gintoli making his uh, first appearance on track during the course of the race. The 2014 World Superbike champion. So we'll see uh, how he gets on. He won that season with Aprilia. Uh, so while we uh, watch that, Royal Motorsports have just made their pit stop and Lewis Bills has gone down to their garage. Well, thank you, guys. I'm down here in Raw Motorsports at Rob's Rongens and John McLeod. John, you just pitted it from the lead. Well, that was, a, that was a tense session. It was a tense session, and we certainly didn't go into it in the lead, so I'm really glad to see that we finished it in the lead. I think we had a bit of bad luck in terms of our two penalties, one of which was for a mistake we, we could have avoided. It was my mistake. I didn't realize the control line was that white line. I thought it was that white line. So that cost us a minute and a half, I think. We had to stop for 60 seconds. So I'm really glad my seconds didn't sort of made up for it and just try to sort of get through the traffic as quick as possible and be consistent and just somehow make amends for what happened in the first session. So you thought the start, you, you thought the, the, um, the, the lap started where the, where the timing beam is and not, and not under the bridge. Yep, not gonna do it again. Well, that's good to know. I actually didn't know that either. So, uh, you know, you're, you're keeping us all informed. But yeah, it was a good session. Second uh, session was much better. Yeah, second yeah, session yeah. much better. Yeah, Shane Stoney was trying to hunt you down. And, and they're actually in the next garage. So uh, it's a bit you tense know, down here. Uh, uh, I don't know how Shane was doing, and I'll have to look afterwards. But if I managed to keep Shane behind me, I was doing well. I, he was, yeah, yeah. I think I think traffic was playing a part. He, he, he's a bit awesome in the traffic. But, you know, when you're in the lead, you've got to be a bit more cautious, haven't you? 
I try to be, but at the same time, you can't be overcautious. You've just got to try and make things happen, but somehow without collecting people. I think I had a few moments, but I somehow managed to get away with it. Well, that was a, you had about an hour session? I think so. It feels like about that. I haven't timed it. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, you, you, you look good on it. You're, you're not exhausted or anything. No, you should have talked to me about three minutes ago. <laughs> Anyway, congratulations and hope things go well for you for the rest of the race. Yeah, it's going to be a tight race now. Let's see what happens. Okay, I think that they might not have, they may have to pit again. We think they do. I think you're probably right. But anything can happen. <laughs> I know. Okay, thanks, mate. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So there, that's John McLeod, who's just pitted in there and just changed over uh, with Chris. I think it's Chris. No, it's, it's um, Ben Stone who's gone back out for the Rob Drongans. Anyway, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. So the gap between Shane Stoney and Ben Stone is 29 seconds after 120 laps. Uh, meanwhile, we, we mentioned just before that Sylvain Gintoli had just gone out in the Gulf and he immediately set the best lap of that car uh, during the course of the race, a 219.51. He's backed it up with another 219. Uh, that's not bad, is it? So it, it's it, very it, impressive. <laughs> just like Valentino Rossi, if you're quick on, on two wheels, you're quick on four wheels as well, seemingly. Yeah, it certainly seems to be the case. And uh, former world superbike champion, still very much involved in World End Germans Championship on uh, on two wheels as well, and uh, enjoying some different sport. Another mini in trouble, and this is 27B, which is uh, Robert Rees, isn't it, in his Cooper S for Mini Kiev's two. So that car is well and truly beached into the gravel trap. A couple of marshals there trying to move it and it's rocking, but I'm not sure it's going to roll. And yeah, it's kicking up the gravel. I think it may need the intervention of a rescue vehicle. There is a recovery truck just in the background of shot that, ah, if you get it backwards, that works much better. See, this is a Beckett, so it's a long way off, it's gone. It is, isn't it? And now, oh, you know, it's, now it's acting as a snowplow again. <laughs> Uh, with, the, uh, <laughs> with the gravel. Yeah, it's going forwards and backwards for a little while there, wasn't it? Yeah. There's the Volvo, Chris Camp's car. It does uh, look good, that car, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, with, as you were talking about earlier on, the sort of authentic BTCC-style livery on it. Looks very good indeed. Oh, I see James Harvey's box is still out there. When I spoke to Jacob Ebery during my break, he wasn't very confident on that car lasting too much longer. He, didn't see, he said he didn't want to go out again himself, so I'm sure he'd be quite pleased that uh, James Harvey's uh, still going. Well, still 53 minutes to go, though, isn't it? So it might be a, a need for Jacob to get back into the car. Jacob, who competes occasionally, but best known for his uh, photography work in uh, in motorsport. There's the number 9C uh, Ginetta. That's the uh, Ross Everall driven car at the moment, the G55. As we go on board here with uh, Team 36, I think this is. Yeah, that's the uh, Paul Bryden. M3 Solution F that uh, I said earlier that looked quite uh, interesting, quite extravagant, but it's fantastic as well. And uh, Paul Bride in the 2016 Northern Sports Car uh, Champion, I think. There it is. It does look uh, quite something, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So the Solution F, uh, very effective purebred uh, motorsport beast, and it sounds great, doesn't it, as well as he heads down the Pit straight makes mincemeat of that look clear as he uh, heads into uh, into Cop's corner that time. So very rapid as well that car. Yeah, quick in a straight line. That's uh, for sure there. Because probably if you were in that Clio doing 100 miles per hour, whatever, it probably feels quite fast. But then something else comes faster, much faster. So go through in third gear, going into Chapel Curve uh, here out of the Beckett's complex with that sun right uh, in your eyes there at that stage of the lap in particular. Uh, this car currently ninth on scratch to the two minutes 23 on the last lap, catching the dark side car ahead by about three seconds on the last lap. Who's there in eighth position. So Paul Bryden, who I think races at Notkill a lot uh, over the recent seasons, has made uh, the fair trek to south down to Silverstone for this event. Turns his way through the Vale chicane and into Club Corner. And you can hear the sound now from the outside as well as from the internal camera a little bit earlier on. So Paul Bryden continues on his chase of those in front. 
Yeah, he's, uh, no, he's got his son Cameron oh, oh, starts oh, racing oh. this year. Uh, now there is Team 14E into the pit. So that's, we knew we, this was going to have to happen at some point. That's uh, Shane Stoney in, and it looked like that didn't quite work to plan, did it? Because uh, the car stopped in front of the garage there and was blocking the next car from getting out, Josh. Yeah, not really sure it's supposed to be stopping in the pit lane at all, is it, really? No. So I just wonder if it literally ground to a halt. Yeah, where it ran out of fuel at that stage, although yeah. it wasn't that long ago since he went in here. It doesn't feel that way. And is that fluid on the road? Not sure. See if we can get another shot of that in a few moments time. But potential dramas there. So uh, Mark Williams, I think it is, has gone back out, hasn't he? But has he lost the lead? I would imagine he would have done because they're only 14 seconds ahead of uh, what we think is Ben Stone in the Royal Motorsport car. Yeah, and that, that's changed relatively recently, hasn't it as well? But we should uh, get an idea in a couple of minutes when they get towards the end of the lap as to, to what's gone on uh, between between those two. The other thing is how long this Mark Williams car is going to last because before it lasted not much further than the end exit of the pit lane. Uh, uh, there's the now question mark of the car that Shane Stoney was driving, even if they can get it refueled, if that, uh, that's uh, pitted in a way that wasn't quite expected. Yeah, that's right. So lots of question marks here over this car that turns its way down into the veil that is, um, I think, Mark Williams then. Yes, it looks like it with the uh, salt on his helmet. Mark Williams, he finished eighth this season in the Radical Challenge, but I think probably the least experienced driver out of those top few teams this weekend, making his Burkitt debut, I think. Yeah, had four years in the SR1 Cup, didn't he? Okay. Uh, a fair bit of experience racing, but not necessarily in this event. Yeah, well, it's such a different event, isn't it? That I think that certainly has to count for something, even if you... you in if you've uh, sort of won championships at single make level doing this is so different to anything else but uh, but it's gone further than last time yes which was yards rather than uh, than anything else so it looks like it's going to come through and complete a, a lap and we'll just need to see uh, sort of the track position on the timing screen where the 15 car has gone through so that's the raw motorsports car so Need to swap back around again. It's going to be what 20 seconds or something like that. Probably the the gap between the two of them. Um, we'll just get uh, 14 car about to come across the timing line. We'll get an update on the gap. And as soon as that bit on our screen, we'll pass that on to you. Always a tense wait. And it, yeah, it's not yet appeared. <laughs> Still not appeared. Um, we'll talk about something else in the meantime, then. Because that 31 part, seconds. There we go. Oh, it's just appeared now. Uh, when you gave up. <laughs> yeah, just as I gave up. I thought 20 seconds. That was how long I was prepared to wait. <laughs> Actually, 31. Oop. Oh, now what's gone on there? This is on the Hamilton Straight. There was a car, presumably, a driver out of it, uh, just around the corner from that. So that's on the Hamilton Straight between Club and Abbey. You couldn't see it from the previous camera shot. This is a fixed camera here at, uh, at Abbey. So can't see what's caused uh, what's caused that at the moment but there's certainly a car off at uh, on the, the approach to Abbey there Josh which was smoking we could see that but it was just behind the wall yeah the other thing for the overall lead battle is uh, the RJ Motorsport team are less than a minute behind Royal Motorsports and lapping quicker at this stage. I don't think whether who we saw who took over from Alistair Smart. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Wade Eastwood going off how well he went uh, earlier on when we were ordering. I think he went out after Alistair Smart earlier, so I think that's yes. probably not a bad uh, presumption. No, I think that's a, a, reasonable, a reasonable thought, Josh, to be honest. So there'll be yellow flags, I think, so at this part of the circuit along the Hamilton Straight, one would think can't actually see them. Although that car did get behind the barriers, so it might it have did, been a quick so maybe yellow. They were able to get the yellow flags in fairly quickly. Hopefully, looking at what's going on there. And uh, we saw uh, the Doris car come into the pits, uh, the Earthwell race leader. That's here from Lewis Bill to what he's found out. Thank you very, very much. And yes, there's real drama down here in the pit 4A, where the Team 14, Doris NWH, have uh, well just come in from the lead. Shane Stoney was uh, actually 
got to uh, where I'm actually standing with uh, a fuel pressure issue in the Radical SR3. The team has pushed the car back into the into the pits as you can see on camera at the moment. Uh, you can see one of the mechanics is they're just changing the battery, so they're hoping that, that that may well be the problem. They put some more fuel in it, so fingers crossed at the moment Mark Williams is out in the car that broke down earlier in the event, only just got as far as uh, few yards out of actually the, the pit line so they've repaired that that was a coil issue which the team has repaired they're hoping that Mark's car will keep going while they service Shane's car you can see is that uh, at the moment uh, the laptop is out to try and uh, reset the car and you can see Shane Stoney is uh, still in the um, well still in his driving gear the battery's out there's the uh, the battery's been taken out, the spare battery's being put in, more fuel is being put in, which would be enough to get Shane to the finish. So there's a real tense atmosphere down here in Team 14. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. And that's drama for Chris Slater in car 1A in the Peugeot 306. So the driver that won the event last year, the handicap event last year. It hasn't been a good day for RAF Team Flywheel today, has it, Josh? Well, I think Andy said we'd lost two cars, so this is the third one that's Yes, uh, we'd lost the Integra and we'd lost the Fiesta of Simon Fruin. Well, that was only the gravel at one point. Whether it got out again or not, I don't know. But, uh, okay. yeah, not RAF Team Flywheels here for certain. No, they were, they were up there at one stage. But uh, we look here at Ross Everall, who we saw a little bit earlier on, and he's Janetta. They are running 11th at the moment, uh, by the looks of things. So making their way down into the Vale once again. And just on, uh, on scratch at the moment, there's 34 seconds between the leaders. There's then uh, only about 21 seconds, I think, back from second to third as well. So it could become an interesting uh, last 40 odd minutes of this race and the quickest one is wade eastwood in the rj motorsport so, team so yes that's the car in third position isn't it and he uh, he won this event back in 2019 did uh, wade eastwood there's uh, gintoli who we we're talking about earlier in the motul liveried volkswagen golf the uh, 2014 world superbike champion he's also been a race winner in the british superbikes um, and I think he's done some racing in MotoGP as well. So a massively experienced motorcycle racer. Uh, he'd raced radicals as well in the past. I think that's where he made his car racing debut. But now in this uh, TCR car, not sure if he's got any plans, Ian, going forward that you know of. No, not certain, uh, certain on that, as I know that uh, he'd like to take the opportunity, if he can, in his busy schedule to, to do some more car racing in the future but he's still competing in the World Endurance Championship on bikes and he has a role with, uh, with BT Sport on their MotoGP uh, coverage. Certainly many free weekends, really, <laughs> uh, for him. Uh, but I'm sure if he gets the opportunity, we'll see him in, on four wheels again. It's a, uh, a great way for him to get back involved in four-wheel racing after doing some radical racing in the past. So is this event just because this is when he's got a free weekend rather than choosing yeah. this event in and particular? Yeah, he's got good mates racing with him, so uh, yeah, good chance for him to uh, enjoy uh, some, some forward racing. And he's clearly got a natural aptitude for it because, as you say, Josh, he's set some very good lap times. Yeah, I think he's got past uh, Triple A's recently, hasn't he, up into sixth. Uh, yeah. on scratch and he's going six seconds quicker than them but they're all being caught by Paul Bryden who we were on board with earlier who's just got past dark side for eighth on scratch so we'll keep an eye on that over the course of this stint but Gintoli then makes his way into Luffield corner to complete another lap flashing his lights so he's got that uh, in nice and early in his a TCR racing career, more black flags going out for a single digit number. Couldn't quite work out which, what that single digit was. No. A, a stop go penalty of some description though. So on that last lap, the top three, RJ Motorsport were four seconds quicker than Doris, who were a second quicker than Raw Motorsport. So top three are now separated by just 50 seconds. Yeah, and there's 40 minutes to go, uh, so that could easily come down. It looks like we've got the new uh, handicap position, so shall we have a quick run through of those so this is at the five hour mark so we've got four teams on 123 laps now 
Those are 69 Mazda Misfits, 63 Rutec Racing's BMW Compact, 11 lock stops and two smoking tyres, 35 Carmel Porsche Dads and their lads. So they're all on 123 laps and separated by about a minute and 14 seconds. Fifth on 122 laps and all of the next however many cars. Certainly the top 17 are on 122 laps. In fact, the top 18 on 122. And those are... Uh, 23 four corners, three triple A's racing in six, seven 54 Z cars, three, eight 62 Rutec Racing's BMW Triers, ninth number eight Motion Motorsport one, tenth number 46 uh, MJ Motorsport Team one, eleven 59 Royal Navy Motorsport, twelfth number 44 Too Fast Too Furious, thirteenth number 33 TSR Performance, fourteenth number 20 Growling Pussy, fifteenth number 31 Don't Hang About, sixteenth number two. RAF team per our duo, 1753 Z Cars 2 and 18th to 21 uh, DH Racing all on 122 laps. That is the uh, leading car at the moment. 69F is being driven by James McCann. The rest of that team comprising Simon Wog, Hansel, Stephen Reese, Alex Wilkinson Hughes, William Pickard, and Nico Favot. 69 Mazda Misfits Josh are handicap race leaders with an hour to go. Yeah, and James McCann we're looking at now, who I think was last year's Northern Sports Car uh, champion. Uh, that team, which features Simon Walker Hansel, I had a chat with him earlier. That's having a bit of fun uh, to end the season off, who won the Bike Sports Championship this year. He could go out with uh, quite a good result, couldn't he, with uh, the lead on handicap and James McCann sliding the car about at the moment as uh, this one of the slowest cars on the circuit but trying to make the most of it and that's exactly what you need to do here. Don't think anyone else really apart from us is interested in our predictions competition now but I'm going to tell everyone what's going on anyway. <laughs> uh, Lewis Beals 20 points ahead he's got 80 points then it's myself, Josh, Andy and Samantha Stoney on 60 points and Luke Austin at the bottom of the table again on 50 points. What's going on? <laughs> uh, I just say it's the penalty for the car in fifth place. Car 12, the prep and lay BMW team have got the black flag now. So this could bring Gintoli into the top five because he's uh, the next one. He's about 80 seconds behind on the road at the moment. Uh, as we watch our handicap leader, the Burkitt Relay leader, which is uh, James McCann. Now, can he go to the end of the race? I guess that's the, the next thing. Because it looks like that team have been running like letter by letter. So Simon Walker Hansel who started it. Then we had Stephen Rees, Alex Wilkinson Hughes, William Pickard, uh, Nico Favot, and now James McCann. So James McCann's just got to get through this final stint uh, while we see others uh, continuing on as well. Looks like Liam Morrell's car's back out there after the problems that that car suffered. So I think that uh, go through in fourth place, but they are a lap, I think, aren't they, behind the top three. But now separated by 48 seconds, and Mark Williams certainly the one who doesn't have the pace in this car in comparison to Ben Stone, who leads, and Wade Eastwood, who is behind. Ben Taylor in car 41H, heading down the pit lane there in the at Mark IV MX-5 Racing Squad. As we uh, watch cars head down the uh, Hamilton straight here towards Abbey. Uh, there's the uh, BMW that we were talking about earlier on, the 36 car that we were on board with. And uh, that's the team uh, in eighth place, go to the chopper. Yeah, they're a long way behind, aren't they, Triple A's? So I don't think yeah. Paul Bryden's going to, well, it's unlikely he's going to make more progress on the road. But he's one of the quickest cars out there. Yes, uh, seems to be uh, probably where he's going to finish up. Barring any disasters there, we can see the Ross Everall Ginetta going through. That had a spin at Brooklands a few laps ago. You can hear it now. Yeah, you can uh, hear it. It's very distinctive, loud, deep rumble. There's the leader of Royal Motorsports going through Abbey, a 2.10 on the last lap for Ben Stone. Yep. And now we can ride back on board with Paul Bryden in that BMW F Solution M3 to complete another lap. Uh, this car has lapped in the 2.15s as well, I think. So one of the quickest uh, production-based cars. 
Oh, he is into seventh. So has the Triple A's team got a problem here? Because that is a team with only two cars, the Sayat and the BMW. Mm. And they've lost, which we weren't expecting, they've lost a position on the road, on the scratch positions. And uh, let's uh, hear more from Lewis Bills, who's busy down in the pit lane. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, we're, we're down here with Rotex Racing's BMW Compact's Martin Roach. Martin, just told you, you're second in the handicap uh, um, um, classification. That's pretty good going. It is pretty good going. Uh, we came out with a plan to try and do it with just two pit stops. Um, they've been me off now because I'm a bit too slow. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> uh, and they put a fast guy out now, uh, Martin Gadsby, and hopefully he'll bring it home for us. And if we can, you know, keep, keep ticking over the laps, then the handicap just might come to us in the last hour. Well, you've been creeping up the uh, order slowly. So now in second place, I believe the, th the, the top three are on 110 laps, on equal laps. So if you've got your fastest driver out, could be a benefit. Yeah, could work, could work. We've lost it before now by 14 seconds. We were 14 seconds too late over the line. Yeah, the guy in front did another lap, came round behind us, and we had the chequered flag. So it literally, it's sec six hours, it's down to seconds. Well, yes, that, that's not unusual, is it? Because what you're talking about is position on track, isn't yeah. it? Had you, got the, had you been slightly ahead of your arrival, you'd have got it. Yeah, yeah. We'd have been just 14 seconds up the road, we'd have got the extra lap and we'd have had it. Anyway, so what was your stint like? It was uh, hot. <laughs> hot and sweaty. Yeah, quite warm in the cars. Normally, you're used to freezing, aren't you? You normally have the heater on. But no, today it was, like, warm. Yeah. But, uh, track conditions, what are they like? Nice. Nice. Pretty good. I... I We'd have done better if it had rained. <laughs> I know we're second, oh, but, right. but if it had rained, I had a really good... In the sighting laps, it was absolutely fabulous. You know, because they're not a slow car in the wet, whereas in the wet, every, you're just getting out of everyone's way all the time. Yeah, there is that situation, is that when you get a handicap, if, you, if, if you're in the wet and you can get... you don't lose as much as some of the quicker cars, yeah. can be advantage to the lower powered cars. Yeah, yeah. Round the corners, I was playing with Porsches and M3s. Go on, go on, get on with it. Yeah, so, yeah, it's great fun. Absolutely great fun. Uh, well, good to hear, Martin, and best of luck for the rest of the race. All right, thank you very much. OK, thank you very much, and uh, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. Uh, meanwhile, out in front of this race, Team 15, just on a personal best lap for that car, a 209.44, and they have extended their lead now to 40 seconds over Team 14 in second place. That's uh, Doris NWH, so it's Raw Motorsports leading from... Uh, Doris NWA in second, RJ Motorsport 1 and RJ Motorsport 2 are second and third. RJ Motorsport 1 also on the lead lap, only about 10 seconds behind Doris uh, NWH, Josh. Yeah, that's uh, right, so that gap's coming down, isn't it, as um, continuing to push on his uh, wade eastward, catching Mark Williams. So it'll be interesting to see if they are happy to keep Mark Williams out or if they can fix Shane Stoney's car, whether they'd prefer to him to come out, because of course you do lose time when you make that pit stop. Yeah, Stoney proved early on how effective he was in, in traffic, didn't he? It was absolutely mesmerising to, to watch him, really. Uh, so I'm sure they might think that getting Stoney out again for the final 25 minutes or something might be worthwhile if they're comfortable with that car. He's going to last the distance. It's a roll of the dice, really. The fourth, the car that's out there at the moment, for Mark Williams, does seem to be working, uh, but perhaps not quite as quick as Stoney would be. So it's a, it's a risk. Uh, meanwhile, we just saw Charles Hall, who's out in Leon Morales' car, I see, uh, after his season of racing Pragas. He's uh, back in a radical. There is Williams, who's now only what seven and a half seconds ahead of Wade Eastwood, who is. Just uh, behind, going through Stu Corner. On the last lap, he was three seconds quicker. So yes, so give it another three laps of this and you'd think they'd be together. Yeah, there he is. Check it is Eastwood, um, if we can. Yeah, 29C. So, yeah, so Wade Eastwood is in 29C. You've got uh, Mark, Mark Williams there. And the leading car at the moment, that's being driven by Ben Stone, isn't it? That's what we think, yeah. So this is the older car as well that uh, the Doris NWH team have brought with them. So probably 
well, the problems it's had, and being the older car, means it hasn't got the pace of the newer machine behind of Eastwood. He squeezes around the outside of uh, Master MX-5 there. Which I think was Simon Vernon, part of the Royal Navy. Uh, there's the, I think, Louis Woodward BMW that he goes around the outside of. Uh, and the Jaguar, which comes very close quarters uh, to Williams as he came out of Luffield there. As we go into the final half an hour of this motor race. We do indeed. And uh, sometimes, sort of oh, and the Solution F BMW has um, ground to a halt, it seems to me, the 36 C car. So that is the uh, get to the chopper team. And that, where is that? But it has stopped possibly on the loop. Yeah, no, not sure. No, I'm trying to work out where. Was that it Beckett's? Is it the tarmac at Beckett's? Might Beckett. be Beckett's. Marshall's now arrived, but a distance away, and the Bryden car then is uh, looks like it's going to be seeing its last race action of the day, and it was up to seventh, wasn't it? Yeah, and for Triple A's, they dropped all the way to eleventh, so that was a long delay for them. Meanwhile, Mark Williams is only four seconds ahead uh, now of Eastwood. There he is. So that chase is almost completed. But the bigger chase, I guess, for away to Eastwood is the big prize. It's the win, isn't it? Which is 45 seconds down the road, which he's slowly getting those seconds down, but maybe not quick enough. Yeah, I think you're probably right. There's Eastwood there getting past a Civic and now the BMW as well. And you can see it's only a fraction of the length of the uh, Hamilton straight now that's between those two cars as we look towards uh, towards from Harry towards club there's Nigel Brown in the team 10 run baby run car but here is the car that's in second place it's in the midst of a group of, uh, of slower cars what's well, relatively slower cars the Lotus and the the mini but what was four seconds is going to be Almost nothing, I would think, by the end of the lap. Where is Wade Eastwood? There is Wade Eastwood. I don't think we've got any cars between them now as they head up the Wellington Strait towards Brooklands. Pick them up here. They do get that BMW uh, in between them temporarily at least. But I think probably on the next lap, Josh, we might well have a change for P2. Yeah, was that Audi a little bit smoky when it came into the pits? It's got Possibly. That's Team 48 Dark Side Motorsport being in eighth place, of course. Just a 62 with a black flag now, Ian. So that is the Rutec team, but the triers, I think, which yeah. uh, wasn't the one right in contention, I don't think. Yeah, so that's got uh, James Dalzell, Sergei Minive, and Rob Lyons, hasn't it? Nose to tail now, Ian, between Mark Williams and Wade Eastwood as they come up to lap. Nigel Brown, who gets uh, forced out the way a little bit there, I think. But it's nose to tail now between these two as they come through the Beckett Sesses. They've got David Russell's BMW to lap, which they both go around the outside of. But I don't think it's going to be long before this change comes possibly up towards Stowe Corner. Yeah, and he pulls out of the slipstream now, just Wade Eastwood. But I think he realises that he can't get through there because switches to the inside line. The door is closed <laughs> by uh, the number 14 car. Of Yellow flags. Yellow flags. I think he's realised he's got to took him behind there. There was a, an MR2 in the middle of all of that as well, it must be said. Down towards the Vale they go. And Eastwood will have another go here. Got Club Corner as well. Will he get the undercut at Club? I suspect he might. Going wide there is the number 14 car of Mark Williams and Wade Eastwood does get through in second position. The exit of Club Corner on lap 133. It felt a bit like a radical race there for a little bit, didn't it? Those uh, couple of corners. But yeah, the reason I'm always noticed the yellow flag because you heard you heard a marshal going through the gravel trap, didn't you, at the time? So uh, obviously someone's had a moment up there at Stowe Corner while all this was going on. And while this is going on, they are catching Royal Motorsports a little bit. Uh, on that last lap, Wade Eastwood was 2.3 seconds faster than the leader. So the gap is around 40 seconds that he's uh, looking to chase. And remember, this is the car, or the team, that we're two laps down after the first hour when the PR6 struggled in the uh, wet conditions. So it's, a, it's in a real fight back for Josh Smith's team. Yeah, no, it's uh, a great effort, isn't it, for them to, uh, to get into this kind of contention here. Let's see how this race pans out over the next 26 minutes or so, though. 
And Raw Motorsports have had a long lap, so I don't know if that means they're in the pit lane, because there's a 2 minute 41 for the race leader. Yeah, 62 there, getting that stop and go penalty. I think you've mentioned that one already. So yeah, we'll see if that's a, new, a change of driver then. So that's team 15, and it's uh, uh, Spence Stone out yep. there at the moment, isn't it, I think? O only 12 seconds ahead, Ian, and they've got to, if they've got to come out of the pits, or not as they've done that already, <laughs> we've got 15 seconds between the top three after five and a half hours of racing. Uh, considering there's only was only really four teams that were ever in contention for the scratch win, that's pretty good going, isn't it? It is really, yes, it's, uh, it's very good indeed. So we'll try and keep our eye on what goes on with Team 15. So it was Ben Stone. The other drivers in that team, of course, are Chris Preen and John McLeod. So for anyone's out there, it's pretty Chris, Ple Chris Preen, I would think, because... Uh, John McLeod had done the stint before Ben, I think. Yeah, because we were hearing from him from uh, yeah. with Lewis. But I don't think they were expecting to make another pit stop. So that says to me they're perhaps a problem with that yeah. car. So I think some of these radicals are getting quite tired at this stage of the race. And we know Wade Eastwood's been pushing on. So how is that car going to uh, get on for this remaining 24 minutes or so? We'll see if we can pick up who might be leading the race, perhaps at the end of the lap when they come back through to get uh, some confirmation of that. Yes, absolutely. Look out for, for that one we can. There's Nigel Brown again in the phase up, making his way into uh, Abbey. Let's go down to the pit lane. Lewis Beals is there for us once again. Thank you very much, and here we are down with the Mazda Misfits, and I've got Simon Reese with us at the five-hour mark. Simon? Stephen. Oh, Stephen, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Stephen, you were in the lead, so you've been gradually coming up the, to the top of the pile. Yeah, yeah, slowly but surely. Um, I think there's only 25 minutes to go, but anything can happen. So our chap just needs to stay on the on the tarmac, and we stand a good chance of, of first in class or even first or uh, second overall. So... Who's out at the moment? Uh, Jamie. Jamie. That's James, James McCann is out okay. at the moment. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, he, he's last person uh, sharing his car with a chap called Simon. Um, so, he, Simon went out first. Um, then uh, Alex, uh, Nico, me, Will, and now it's Jamie's turn to just keep it on the black stuff. I noticed there are six in the team, so you're doing an hour each? Yeah, hour each. Um, like the first few laps, you think, God, this is going to be long. Um, but then, like, you look at 18 laps gone, and you start getting into the groove, and I wanted to stay out longer. And then, they, like, the pit board came out, and you're like, oh, I've got to come in now. So you enjoyed it? Yeah, brilliant. Third third time doing the Burkitt, and it, it's absolutely great. Yeah, yeah you've been really relatively competitive each time. Yeah. Um, the first year, um, we was closing in on third in class. Um, but they brought the red flag out 15 minutes to go, so we finished fourth. Last year, uh, um, I think we were fifth or sixth, but we've never been this far up before, and it's it's like nerve-wracking. It is, you know. All right, Stephen, I know we should. Well, no, you've got a soft drink. You, you've not got the hard stuff yet. No, not yet, but we'll be, we'll be getting one of those. Hopefully, if it finishes where we are, we'll be celebrating. OK, mate, and best of luck for the, for the last 20-odd minutes or so. So there, yeah, that's the uh, information down with the Mazda Misfits, who left, who led us at five. That's very good of Stephen to do that, come down this end for us. Anyway, back to you in the, pit, in the uh, studio. Thanks, Lewis. It's really hotting up in this race now because there's now only 14 seconds on scratch between the three leaders, which are in this order, 15 uh, Raw Motorsports, 29 RJ Motorsport 1 and 14. Doris NWH. It is uh, car A out for Team 15, so it is Chris Preen, as I thought. Uh, with that driver change just a few minutes ago, Josh. Yeah, so he turns into Cops, and then Wade Eastwood's up across the line. So for the leader, Chris Preen, he did a 2 11 1. The uh, runner up in the Bike Sports Championship back in 2017 was uh, Chris Preen, and he's being chased then by the 2019 Burkitt winner, Wade Eastwood. There he is just coming up to lap the dark side golf, and he's 5.6 seconds back. He caught another 1.6 seconds on that lap uh, for Mark Williams. We know that car with its issues, not as fast as the two in front, but he's still in very much a position here, and if something happens to the other two, that they can capitalise on that. 
Yes, absolutely right. It is really tight, isn't it? Uh, anything could still happen in this race. 20 minutes to go, an unscheduled stop for any of these at this point would spell the end of their victory hope, certainly. It is at the moment number 15. RJ Motorsports Rob's Roggins that uh, sorry, your Rob Motorsports Rob's Roggins that leads the way by 5.68 seconds. Well, it looks less than 5.68 seconds there, doesn't it? As the cars head past the wing and into uh, Abbey, it might be for four seconds possibly now. And the gap has come down to. So we'll see what that is, Josh, in another half a lap time at the end of this lap. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Ian. So there is uh, Chris Preen then turning his way through in this Radical SR3 XX, which I think is the very latest model uh, of SR3 from Radical in Peterborough, um, which is not far away uh, from Silverstone at all, about an hour and a half to, or so. And yeah, that gap is coming down, that is uh, for sure, between Preen and Eastwood as they turn into the complex here at the end of the lap with 20 minutes to go. It does feel like Wade Eastwood is carving into this advantage on this lap in particular as they come through Woodcote. A gap which was five seconds must be half that now as they come to the end of 136 laps of racing. Uh, so I think more penalty boards going out for others. Yeah, looks that way. So less than 20 minutes to go with a sprint race from the end. Some squealing tyres from someone as they went through uh, Cops corner that time, but yep, one and a half seconds the gap. You can see it on screen now. Uh, it's going to be the two leaders nose to tail in just a few moments. Through Beckett's they go, past the little cage from seven. Ooh. That's bet got, so between the two cars very briefly. There's the 29C, Wade Eastwood, as Josh says, winner of this event three years ago, pursuing car 15, Chris Preen. He's raced in uh, the Bike Sports Championship and the, and the Radicals as well over the seasons. And he will be trying to soak up the pressure for Rob Srongans, the Royal Motorsport uh, entry this weekend. Down towards the uh, Vale they go, another BMW uh, in front of them, but the two of them are now nose to tail. We've seen Wade Eastwood get past Mark Williams already in this stint. Uh, a few laps ago, actually, at this part of the circuit. He's not going to do it there on this occasion, so you'd think he would find a way past somewhere before the end of the lap. There's a lot of traffic out there, including that uh, as Astra, which is nice to see. Um, but uh, let's see, as they come through, are they going to be side by side down into the village hairpin? It's on the right hand side of the picture, Wade Eastward. And he's not made it through yet. He's going to have another go at the left hander, but won't make it through there. And they are both going past the growling pussy and through onto the Wellington Strait once again. And is it going to happen at Brooklands, Josh? Well, Chris Preen knows, I think, that he's got to defend this because with 18 minutes to go, the two leaders into Brooklands are nose to tail. They're side by side as Wade Eastwood tried to go around the outside but runs a little bit too wide. So Chris Preen, but he doesn't get the car turned into Laffield. So down the inside goes Eastwood. It's side by side for the lead of the motor race. And on lap 137, coming out of Laffield, we've got a change for the lead. And after being two laps down, RJ Motorsport take the lead then as they go through but it's Chris Preen trying to fight back here into Cops Corner because they're still in traffic and the car in front of them has to turn into the corner so that's going to adjust Eastwood's line there as they come back out of Cops Chris Preen's fighting back as they come down towards Beckett's he can't quite get alongside so Wade Eastwood has got the move done but I don't think it's all over Ian it's certainly not worth saying as well that the 14 car Doris Enterprise H is not getting any closer about 22 seconds behind at the start of the previous lap, we'll see where they are in a moment. It's, it's, uh, it's looking a little bit more subtle now, isn't it, Josh? It looks like Eastwood is getting away as we wait for the third place car to come through to confirm the gap there. Looks like it is, it might well be through now. And 22 seconds still the gap. I wonder if they're coming into the pit, perhaps. Yes, possibly. Yeah, what's going on? Yes, uh, they've actually dropped back, so they're having a change of driver. They've probably realised they're not going to win this race now, Josh, I would suggest. It feels that way, but uh, quite a lot's happened, hasn't it, to get to this point. 
because in the middle of the race we were talking about the totally the opposite order for the top three with a lap between each car but uh, that's turned around in quite spectacular fashion really uh, Wade Eastwood's pace I think probably had a lot to do with some of this because he was quick early on when he managed to pull I think a lap back and then in this stint, he's done that chase. He's proved to be quicker than Chris Preen and has been able to get past him. And he's looking now to pull away. Um, as uh, on the back of the flatbed, we can see the Paul Bryden car. We saw that car stop, didn't we? And they managed to get that uh, dealt with under local yellows. That head back to the paddock. Well, that means for that team, they will have lost uh, a place or so. I think they're in eighth position on the scratch uh, positions at the moment as uh, the race leaders come through then to complete the next lap. The only thing for Wade Eastwood, he has been out there for a long time. So has he got enough fuel to get to the chequered flag? I mean, there's got to be a doubt over that, hasn't there? Um, and you would think if they did need to do a change, he needs to get a decent lead before he makes it in order to, uh, to stay ahead. Gap, what's that, 2.8 seconds? So he's, he's, not, he's not hanging about, is he? No, he's squeezing not. past the traffic like he feels like he needs to pull out a gap at this stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess uh, you'd want to do that in any case, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want to take any chances. Don't think we've yet had our latest handicap positions for the uh, five and a half hour mark. We'll bring those to you as and when we get them. Watching this Alpha Live stream sponsored by Grove and Dean Motorsport Insurance of the Burkitt Six Hour uh, Relay Race for 2022, seven second running of the event. And it's being led on scratch at the moment by the car that you've seen now, Team 29. That is the uh, RJ Motorsport One team from the Royal Motorsports, Rob Rongans, Team 15 in second position, Doris NWH number 14 in third. And then it's uh, RJ Motorsport 2 in fourth position, but they're uh, at least one, if not two laps down, Josh. I think this is the first lap they've led all race, isn't it, for RJ Motorsport? So they've left it right to uh, the end, but now they do lead, they're pulling away. I'm uh, not sure what your weather radar is uh, saying for these last uh, few minutes of the race, because that's obviously the other thing that uh, could come into this. And yeah, whoever's taken over the Doris car is going much quicker now. So although, yeah, 44 seconds, really that's too much. Uh, for them to do anything about the top two. There they are in third place. Um, is that a different car or not? It's a yeah, different car, isn't yeah. it? And it's... Uh, so that's stony again by the looks of it. But uh, surely that gap is uh, too large even for Shane Stoney to pull in. I don't think we're going to see any rain, Josh. Just, uh, was that just Luke uh, spicing things up a little bit earlier? Oh, no, I did see, I, he showed me the radar. I've, you know, trust him implicitly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think it's going to materialise into anything. I hope that means the drive home is not going to be well. Well, I can't guarantee you that. <laughs> At the moment, I'm looking ahead for the next 12 and a half minutes. And don't forget, the way that the Burkitt relay works is that uh, it is the... the, 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 the the laps that count are the laps up until six hours. It's not six hours and a bit, it's five hours, 58 or 59 minutes or whatever. It's the laps completed within six hours that are those that count. Yeah, that's right, Ian. Because that could, came into play, didn't it, a few years ago, the year the TTR Sayax uh, won by less than a second, I think it was that year. We're not going to have that uh, seemingly this time. So there is second placed. Uh, Chris Preen, who's now 4.7 seconds behind the leader, who's Wade Eastwood, turning into club corner now. So he continues to extend this margin. And Stoney was two seconds quicker than the leader, four seconds quicker than second place on that lap. But it might just be that little bit too late uh, for that team, which uh, was looking so strong uh, until the mid part of the race when they had that problem. And if only Mark Williams' stint went in that car like the last one did, yes. they would have been in a very good position. Yes, that's, uh, that's very true. So that's not worked out for them uh, at all, has it? Seemingly, anyway. Um, the proper British GT's team are up to seventh on scratch, which I don't recall when they got inside the top ten, let alone that high well, up. Well, they've benefited from get to the Choppers' demise. They've lost ground with that retire or retirement for Paul Dryden. 
But they've also got ahead of Triple A's and also the 48 team, which is the Dark Side Motorsport team as well, haven't they? So they have gradually just moved uh, up the order a little bit, that team of, uh, of Ginettas. Mostly Ginettas. Yep. So here comes the leader, Wade Eastwood on scratch. Oh, penalty boards going out there. Can't see any numbers for that. Uh, right. Ooh. That one was two something. Yeah. So I'm not sure if we can get that shot back at Woodcote to see the penalty board uh, at all, because that could be important. We just go to the right. There's double yellow flags at Cops as well. So drama continues around the track. 29. It's the leader. It's the leader with the penalty. <laughs> we said it wasn't over yet, Ian. <laughs> Uh, 6, 10 and 20 are the others, so that's PBN Racing, um, Run Baby Run and the Growling Pussy Jaguar team. But the big one is the leader wow. with a, at least a stop-go penalty. We saw that yellow flag, didn't we, with the car into Stowe Corner. We did. And that could absolutely be it. Raw Motorsport were very close in all of that, so they might well be looked at as well. Oh, and Raw Motorsports are now only 35 seconds ahead of Doris, so we're three seconds quicker on that last lap. Well, Wade Eastwood could still win this because he's got lots of pace. He was five seconds quicker than Preen on the last lap, but we know he's got some kind of stop-go penalty to be served. Hopefully he serves that before the race concludes. Uh, absolutely. We don't want this decided. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Astra's oh. stopped. What could um, this mean? <laughs> uh, which team is the Astra in? I don't know. The Snatch Tractor's going. Uh, I remember... That's... Uh, uh, sort of, uh, sort of the cops to Beckett's kind of area, isn't it? That that's off. Um, and uh, it stopped just on the edge of the circuit, so I hope that can be recovered under a local yellow, although it looked fairly close to the edge of the circuit. We've got handicap positions. Shall I run yeah. through those with nine minutes to go? Um, because this uh, is equally, if not more important, than the scratch results, and that's... Uh, very much in doubt as well. It's Rutec Racing's BMW Triers that's now leading. That's Team 62. Uh, they're on 137 laps. The only team on 137 laps now. On 136, it's Carmel Porsche Daz and their lads, Team 35. Team 63 in third, Rutec Racing's BMW Compacts. Fourth is number two. That's RAF Team Per Argyra. Fifth, number 11, Lock Stops and Two Smoking Tyres. Sixth is 69, Mazda Misfit. Seventh, 44, Too Fast, Too Furious. Uh, and then we get on to those teams on 135 laps. So 8th, number 59, Royal Navy Motorsport. 9th, 33, TSR Performance. 10th, 54, Z Cars 3. 11th, 31, Don't Hang About. 12th, 48, Dark Side Motorsport. 13th, 58, Army Sports Car Racing. 14th, 46, MJ Motorsport Team 1. And 15th, 21, DH Racing. They are the only teams on 135 laps. And there's too many to mention on 134. So the leading team now is Team 62, which is James Dalzell, Sir Gleman Eve, and Rob Lyons. And uh, Chris Preen's pace is going off massively because it's just a 2.15. So Wade Eastwood leads by 16 seconds now. What we don't know is how long this stop and go penalty is for. And uh, we shall await Wade Eastwood to pit. And then we'll see if it's just a stop go, which I think means he could still be in contention. But if it's longer than that, he's probably out of contention. Shane Stoney is now 30 seconds behind and going five seconds quicker than Chris Preen. But there's not quite six laps to go, is there? Which he would need. But there's nearly six laps to go, I guess. So well, the, it's, it's probably only realistically yeah, of course. three, isn't there? Two, yeah. two or three two or three yeah probably for three including the one that they're on yeah with the check with the result being done be at six hours rather than when the checkered flag is yeah, waved exactly which is different to to most racing so dramatic <laughs> conclusion to both races the handicap race I mean that seems to have changed pretty much every half hour the handicap race positions and the the overall scratch race lead, well that's been changing regularly in the last hour as well hasn't it and it's going to change we think probably one more time yet yeah, and is Wade Eastwood going to take this penalty before the race finishes? Oh, I hope he does. <laughs> He's just lapping Gintoli, who's got even quicker. He's into the 218s now. Very impressive. So that's the, here he comes, leaders into the pit lane to serve this penalty. There is uh, Chris Preen, who is going to take the lead of the race, I think. And... Yeah, we're going to get two more laps within the six hours, aren't we? Then after the third lap, the checkered flag is going to come out, I think. Uh, so you can see the marshals are stopping 
uh, the car in the pit lane there. Yellow flags for Preen. Oh, and a bit more drama. Oh, and that's a damaged Mini. That's 39A. And that is uh, the skids car of Chris White. So he's got some trim hanging off the bumper. Where is that? Uh, no, Beckett, the, the, I think. The Beckett, we think he has come to a stop. And that's not a great position to be there at, uh, at Beckett's. Oh, part of his car's going for a spin as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's not a great position. It doesn't look like he's can either A, find a gap in the traffic, or B, get the car fired up again. So I'm not sure I particularly like the the look of the way that's going either with only five and a half minutes left on the clock there is our new race leader it is car 15 now and that is uh, Chris Preen from the Normo Sports Rob's Rungans yeah he's 27 seconds ahead of Shane Stoney but uh, what we don't know is if RJ Motorsport come back out of the pits just as of yet haven't seen that in the background uh, of any of these shots yet so he's working his way there around the outside of the MR2. One of the cars uh, battling for the handicap honours. So, yeah, we await second place. Well, I could see out of Stoke Corner the, uh, the Stony car in the, the distance. So are they up to second, possibly? May well be. May well be. So with four and a half minutes left to go, uh, JCB in the background, that's doing some recovery work. That's thankfully got the Astra out of the way, hasn't it? What happened to that Mini, I wonder? That's the next corner, I think. So, yes. Oh, Wade Eastwood's slowing. So Wade Eastwood has only now come out of the penalty, has he? Yes, he has. So he's lost, well, three quarters of a lap? Yeah, he's having a second, hasn't he? So the gap is between... Uh, between Preen and Stoney. Oh, what's going on here? The BMW sparks everywhere. What a bizarre conclusion to this race. That's Johnny Hayes, I think, isn't it, in the uh, M2. Here's our race leader, and the checkered flag. flag goes out a little bit early, possibly because of that mini stationary at Beckett. So the checkered flag being waved on this Burkitt six-hour relay race, and it will be... Uh, well, we need to see, well, it was less than six hours, so it should be the Team 15 that win it, Raw Most Sports, Rob's Rongans. Yes, <laughs> so it's a change of the lead on the last lap. Yes, it's changed the lead for the last lap, but we'd still have less than six hours, so um, I would think that's how the <laughs> classification will go, because uh, we hadn't had more than six hours, so I so think... And presumably the handicap would have to be readjusted slightly, because of the shortened... Slightly, yes. The, there'll be some uh, calculations going on there. And so Shane Stoney got the gap down to 20 seconds, what was 45 seconds with three laps to go, I think. So he, he did well, but it just came that tiny bit too short. Wow. <laughs> that yeah. was an eventful last two hours, really, but when I came back on, it was... It, uh, it was pretty uh, eventful all the way through. Here's Wade Eastwood. Yeah, so he's going to come through and he's going to see the chequered flag this time, which he probably won't be expecting, although the team may have let him know. And he is going to be in third position. So 15, the winning team. Uh, that's the Raw Motorsport Bob's Rongans. 14 in second place, Doris NWH. And third, now over the line, is number 29 in third position. That's RJ Motorsport 1. Those are going to be your only three cars on the leading lap at the end of this race. Fourth will be Team 30, RJ Motorsport 2. Uh, fifth will be 16, which will be Capture Motorsport. They will win their class. Sixth, number 12, Triple G Sport. Seventh, number nine, Proper British GTs. Eighth, number three, Triple A's Racing. Ninth, 48, Darkside Motorsport. And adding out the top 10 will be uh, number 51 in the end. That's the area motorsport, uh, golfs and civics. I think Lewis is going to have some busy interviews here and with some people that are probably frustrated at what happened towards the end there and others who are very pleased with how the end of the race went because of course we did have that drama for Ben Stone which we weren't expecting him to pick but it looked like that was going to put Raw Motorsport uh, potentially out of a winning position. That's but then it was that moment up towards Stowe when 
the top two were nose to tail and uh, well with we think anyway that's not confirmed yes. when the yellow flags were out yes that's right and we'll need to wait of course for the official confirmation of the results as well yep. uh, the timekeeping team will get those out as soon as possible well, of course it could there be a few moments there was a lot of yellow flags on those last few laps so obviously we don't know if there's any reports that have gone there in could be some penalties exactly. post race applied for those um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't in a way <laughs> with so many cars on track. But good to see drivers acknowledging the uh, the marshals on the slowing down lap. That's the 45A car. That's Ed Sampson in the Porsche 968. As he goes round on his slowing down lap, he gives his thanks to all of the marshals. And we echo that uh, once again ourselves. And once again, we say many thanks for all of his years of service, 25 years of service as Chief Marshal for Pete Harding who's done that role for the 750 Motor Club for two and a half decades. And the chequered flag has now come down on his uh, chief marshalling career with the 750 Motor Club. And we're very grateful for Pete for all he has done for the club over the years. Right, which car is going to get into slot number one? It is going to be number 15 that gets there. And that is the uh, Royal Motorsports Rob Racers car. Uh, Chris Preen, it was, that brought that to the chequered flag. And we should see slotting in second place to Shane Stoney in number 14, Doris NWH, and 29 in third, Wade Eastwood, who was leading until the last six and a half minutes of the race when he made that, uh, made that stop, the stop and go penalty, possibly for a yellow flag infringement. And uh, with that, he lost half a lap or so. And he finished, yeah, about a minute 17 behind the, uh, behind the leading car. Uh, John McLeod, congrats for well, having a chat, I think, because I think Chris Preen might not really know what has happened. Is that Rob Weldon, who's come over as well, by the looks of it? Shane Stoney, not sure if that's congratulations or commiserations, really. Yeah, well, he's done a, had a good drive today, Shane, hasn't he? He's driven so well, and it's only been a little bit of unreliability in the team that probably have cost them the overall victory. Yep, and Chris Green, I think it's so much shock he's not even able to get out of the car <laughs> because of what they were leading, they were second, they were leading again, then they're back to second and then they were leading once more. The lap chart will make interesting <laughs> leading, won't it, for this race? I mean, there's 143 laps of it to, to cruise later on. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit to write about on this, isn't there, Ian? Uh, a lot to squeeze into 550 words in the <laughs> Autosport report. Here's a look at the unofficial results, then. This is on scratch. So, 15 it is. The winners, Raw Motorsports, Rob's Wrongens. 143 laps in the book. They finished 20 seconds ahead of number 14, Doris NWH. Uh, and then one minute 17 seconds behind the leaders was team 29 rj motorsport one in third place uh, fourth and a lap down on 142 laps was number 30 rj motorsport two fifth on 136 laps was 16 capture motorsport winning their class sixth to number 12 prep and lay uh, and g sport seventh to number nine proper british gts eighth to number three triple a's racing ninth to 48 dark side motorsport and 10th to 51 area motorsport uh, looking a bit further back, get to the chopper were 11th in Team 36, 12th, 33 TSR Performance, 13th, 56 Simon Green Motorsport, 14th, 32 Dayton Motorsport, and then another class winning team was Team 55, which was Break Dancers 1, uh, and that was the team of, uh, of Cage from 310Rs. Uh, 1666, the Mad Moon Winders, 17th, 46 MJ Motorsport Team 1, 18th, number 5 Break Dancers 2. Uh, 19th, number 35, uh, Commel Porsche's dads and their lads. 20th, uh, 57, seven graduates. And I'm not going to read through the remaining uh, 50 cars, but for those of you watching the live stream, you'll see these uh, scrolling uh, through. Uh, and there's one other class winner to pick out. There it is. Uh, 44, that's the uh, 44th overall number 49 very random races. Winning their class. And we can see now down to St. Winifred's School Choir, uh, 65th overall on winning Class C on scratch, although it's uh, uh, the handicap results that we'll have, uh, hopefully for you shortly, that uh, count the class prizes. Uh, from the commentary box for the moment, let's head down to Lewis Beals in the pit lane. 
Well, thank you very much in the studio. We're down here in a very, very busy park for mate. Well, I suppose it is. And we've got uh, third place, uh, Wade. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, sorry, Wade Eastwood, sorry, Wade, lost you there. Wow, did you make that exciting? You cut your way through, all the way through to the lead, you took the lead, and then suddenly, mm, dear me, got to stop, go. I did, uh, don't know why, still. I uh, was very conscientious of all the many wave yellows and safety cars and uh, waited for the green flag or the green light, so, um, you know, not the way we want to take third when we had a comfortable lead in first, but still fun racing. It's like a, like I said last year, it's like a video game driving the Burkett, it's just so much fun. Um, pity to end it with a decision like that, a 60 second stop go for a possible passing under a yellow, that's pretty extreme. But anyway, there we go, that's racing. Yeah, where's the rest of your crews? Come on, come on, let's yeah. uh, Alistair Smart, and, who, and uh, where's uh, Charles Graham? Charles, Graham. 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 Charles, Hello. Charles, uh, yep. Sorry. And uh, sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. Alistair, <sighs> that Nearly was back tough. Back. Nearly back to back, yeah. not quite. Um, but RJ Motorsport, well done, boys. Yeah, yeah great car prep. Yeah, preparation. great car prep. Really good. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Charles, you look as though you were a bit tense there in the car waiting just to see if you needed, were needed right at the end. Do you know, there's always a drama with, uh, with Wade Eastwood and RJ Motorsport. There is always a drama, and it doesn't get much more dramatic than that. And actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm happy with third place and the drama. I think it was wonderful. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> OK, congratulations, yeah, guys. Well, yeah. Done, yeah. Well done, Raw. Well, done, well let, let's have a look. Let's have a look for the second team. Yep, team... Uh, Team 14, let's have a look, let's have a uh, uh, Shane, Shane, come on, come this way around here, Shane. Yeah, Shane, boy, fuel pressure problems at the end. Yeah, yeah, just, it wasn't our day, unfortunately, we literally ran out of cars. Um, yeah, we just, it just wasn't our day, we, 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 we gave it everything and we, we came close in the end, despite, you know, everything going wrong. Um, but you know we, we, we give it a good shot and uh, I've just got to say thank you to everybody at Doris you know we've worked our heart out and uh, we came close but we just couldn't quite get there. I, I was watching you catching catching the uh, the 15 car in that last hour you were weaving in and out of the traffic just like a video game as Wade was saying. Yeah um, I, I was yeah I, I was quite fired up to be honest um, yeah, I was I was uh, going through every which way and and just trying to trying to gain as much time as we could, but um, it was just a little bit too far, unfortunately. But I um, mean, fair play to 15. They, uh, you know, they they did everything that they could and they they did they drove really well and uh, you know we, it just wasn't to be, unfortunately. Okay, let's have a word with Roger. We'll have a word with Roger. Roger, yeah, they're nearly there. Nearly so close and yet so far, as he says rather predictably. Well, that's the way, isn't it? Who else? Are you? Who else? Are Mark. Well, can I just tell you this? Oh, come on. I've got to say, I think two people really. I mean, apart from the whole team, doing obviously, uh, team did a great job. Two drivers really made superstar performances, and Ryan and Shane did all right as well. But you know, ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about. Us. Come on, Mark. Come on there. Yeah, yeah. You, you had a bit of bad luck with a breakdown, but uh, you, you, you put your shift in, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, at the end there, I put the shift in. Unfortunately, we weren't expecting uh, Shane to come in, and I went out on old tyres and just never had the grip on the rears. Uh, we actually put those tyres onto that car before he went out, and then never had the opportunity because he uh, just didn't have the rears to have the pace. So I was trying my best, really pushing it on, but wasn't to be, eh? Well, not today. Anyway, come back next year? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's a word with Ryan. Come on, Ryan, come round here. Don't forget there's a the camera there. Yeah, the fourth driver in uh, Doris, NWH. Close, but not close enough. No, it's you know it's the way it goes in a race like this. With so much going on, so many cars out on track, and and for six hours, you know anything can happen. But we and it did, <laughs> and it did. Yeah, no, but we we did everything we could. And as Shane said earlier on, we had literally everything go against us at one point. It really looked like, you know, we it really looked like we were out. Yeah, and um, to then every every time we came through, and it still looked like we still had a chance. And even into those last five minutes, there we all kind of thought we actually might have a chance again so yeah it was just uh, bizarre but uh, really really good fun and uh, yeah thanks again uh, to Doris and, and, and everyone these two especially for giving us the opportunity to come and race with them and uh, have an amazing weekend okay thank you very much guys congratulations on second place let's have see if we can find our race winner who is that Chris where's Chris Chris come on Chris well 
Many, many congratulations on taking victory at the uh, Burkett. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's quite uh, an extreme event. It's, it's a bit like a track day on steroids, I guess. It's the <laughs> first, uh, first Burkett I've entered. And uh, it was John McLeod and Ben Stone, my teammates, that got me into it. And uh, they're, they're fellow competitors were racing the same team in the uh, Radical Challenge Series and we're all, we're all on a similar pace. So it was all about consistency and trying to not get too many penalties. Unfortunately, these two uh, got penal penal 30 second, 60 second penalty for uh, crossing the overtaken before the before the start finish line. Yeah. The line, do they call it? Yeah. John's already given his excuse. He says he he took he thought the first line was that the the second one. Yeah. Ben thought the same, <laughs> and followed him on the next session. Yeah, they so, didn't tell uh, each other. <laughs> although we picked up two penalties, um, I can't believe after six hours how. Uh, you know, it's still so close. I don't know what the gap was. Was it 30 seconds on the radio? I'm not really sure, but it was really close, yeah. yeah. Coming on, you two. Here come John and Ben. John, many congratulations on your victory. You. Yeah, you did a good stint. Yeah, but Chris is right. <laughs> Chris is right. I could have made it easier. I could have made it easier, and I wish I had. But we won. We got, we got a bit lucky, but we won. We made our own luck, maybe. We did what we could. Well, that's nice there. And so we had Chris, that's a little Ben. Ben, we had a word with you earlier in the day, but uh, yeah, good run. Yeah, well, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. I like, was so happy to win it. It was great. Um, like Chris said, it's mad that after six hours it was so close. But yeah, each team was having their good luck and their bad luck throughout the six hours. So yeah, it was. we got ours right at the end with the, the 29 car getting a penalty. But we had our own, we had a share of bad luck as well throughout the race. But, so what did you think sort of 15 minutes from the end you just got past? Well, so I was, I had a bit of a lead. I was just scheduled to do the final stint and then the alternator went on the car. So the battery voltage was just dropping and dropping. And then uh, I knew I had to come in. So I sort of signaled to the team I was coming in and Chris wasn't expecting to go back out, but uh, had, had, to, had to go back out. So yeah, just, just about got the car back and Chris finished off uh, the last, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, I think the last minutes. 25 minutes I uh, finished, which I wasn't looking forward to. I, was, I thought my day was over about two hours before the end. But, uh, no, it's, it's a great event and a uh, big thank you to Rob and the Tim from Royal Motorsports. They did a great job. OK, guys, thank you very much. And many congratulations to the uh, 15 team. It's the Royal Motorsports, Rob Rongans. It's Chris, Ben, ben John. and John. Many, many congratulations. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. And we're going to see you back next year? Yeah, go on. I think so. I think we convinced them. Yeah, we'll be back next year. 100%, 100%. Hopefully these two know where the control line is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very, very much. So uh, there we are, there we have... Uh, we got Chris Breen, Ben Sto and John McLeod. I think we have got a couple of other people as well just to talk about. Um, some of the class winners. I think we've got car 16, if we can find them. Who's a... Uh, ah, class, car 16, here we are. No, car 55. Sorry, what's your name? Uh, Tim. 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 Tim, well, I think you've... Uh, I think you won class C. Well, I didn't know... Well, I was hoping that was why I was called in, but there's a sign there saying penalty area, so I was a bit worried <laughs> what I'd done wrong. But, it, yeah. uh, did the team have a good run? Yeah, we had a great run. So uh, I don't know where the rest of my team members are. I guess they're in the garage down there. Uh, that clearing up and you're not. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, we had a great run. Everything went to plan. Uh, no incidents. Um, Harry and Alan are the other two team members, and we had a lot of support in the garage as well. From we had a second team. There's two break dancers teams. We're break dancers one. They're break dancers two. So uh, yeah, it's been a great day and uh, fantastic to win. So congratulations to yourself, Alan. Then we got Tim and Harry. We've got to say hello. Oh, oh, sorry, Tim. We've got to say we've got to say congratulations to to Alan and Harry for for their win. Exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass that on. Okay. So um, the only the other the other class winner is car 16, but we don't seem to have got car 16. So uh, oh, yes, we do. Oh, you want the car? Uh, anyway, so that's uh, I think that's as much as we can do from the uh, the pit lane. So it's from me, Lewis Beals. I'll hand you back to the studio and uh, maybe they can run round up the, uh, the final result.
Thank you very much indeed, Lewis Beals. Lewis there celebrating his 30th anniversary of doing that job at the Burkitt Relay Race. So 1992 was his first year, and that was before 50% of the Commentary team was born, uh, and that doesn't include me. Um, Andy McEwen, you've had your first experience of the Burkitt Relay uh, today. How have you found it? I've thoroughly enjoyed it, Ian. Uh, what a, a crazy, bizarre, unique race it is. Uh, I, I was able to go and watch most of the final hour from the uh, BRDC grandstand <coughs> earlier on, and uh, it was an experience like no other, really, that I've seen in motorsport. I, I don't get to watch trackside very often these days, so that was special, but uh, the eclectic mix of cars, the dramatic finish that we had, every time we thought that it had been settled, something seemed to happen that would uh, completely change the picture at the front of the field, and, and, uh, yeah, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope that it's my first of many uh, because, uh, yeah, it, it, I think, could become a real highlight of the season for me. Yeah, well, we'll have to see if you uh, will invite you back again uh, <laughs> uh, for next year. And uh, the, the great thing about it is, although it's that drama at the front, we've got the drama for the handicap, and I keep flashing refresh <laughs> to see if we're going to get the uh, results for that anytime soon because we'll give those out as soon as we get them. But you have such a, an amazing array of machinery that we, you, you and I probably see week in, week out uh, club races and national races across the country but to see it all on track together yeah. is quite something isn't it it really is and, and i think i mentioned it at some point during the race the job that the handicappers do to um, balance all of that even doing it on the fly as we get safety cars weather changes things like that is really remarkably difficult to do and um, uh, we've seen it uh, even as recently as the last uh, handicap bulletin half an hour before the flag how close it was it looked as though they'd done their job so um, yeah you get cars out on circuit together that you wouldn't normally see. You get drivers out on circuit together that you wouldn't normally see as well. And uh, for the drivers themselves, that's a, that's a fairly unique experience. And uh, they will find themselves racing against people that uh, that perhaps this is the only chance they get every year to go door to door. So, um, yeah, uh, really good fun, uh, even in the fading light as well. And as the temperatures dipped, there was a good crowd out there watching. And, and they were engaging in it as well. They all had the live timing up. They were listening to the commentary. Uh, they were trying to work out what the handicap uh, was. Uh, good luck to them is all I could think, because uh, even now we still don't quite know what the end result was. But, uh, yeah, fantastic atmosphere uh, around the whole place. Uh, absolutely right, and I'm sure it's an atmosphere that will be repeated again here at Silverstone next weekend when the Walter Hayes Trophy is here, the uh, premier Formula Ford 1600 racing event in the country, if not the world. Uh, so we look forward to, to that. I think well over 100 entries for the main Formula Ford event. I was just hearing from uh, from James Beck at the event mastermind. And it's not the last 750 Motor Club event either for 2022 because 750 Motor Club are also responsible for organising the car racing events uh, at Mallory Park on Boxing Day, the Plum Pudding uh, race meeting there, so a mixture of car and bike racing. Maybe Sylvain Quintoli could come along and compete in both. <laughs> that would be absolutely ideal if he's uh, listening. That would be a good idea, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, so uh, we'll, 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 we'll put some pressure on him to do that. Uh, uh, so that's the last 750 most of action of the season, Mallory Park on Boxing Day. But we're already looking ahead to the uh, 2023 season. Uh, looking forward to a number of meetings across the country for the fantastic array of championships that the uh, 750 Motor Club uh, puts on. Sadly, Andy, we didn't see too much of you during the main 750 Motor Club season this year. You were with me at Cadwell Park, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to get a bit more involved uh, next season and join Josh and uh, Matt and Marcus and the other regulars on the, the 750 Motor Club commentary team. Uh, for that, uh, because I know you enjoy the 750 Motor Club events. I do indeed, yes. I'm, I'm privileged in that I get to work with, with lots of different clubs, lots of different championships, but I do enjoy coming into the 750 Motor Club paddock because it just feels a lot more relaxed, open, friendly. The, the racing is still as close and competitive as anything else out there, uh, but there's just something special about walking around a 750 Motor Club paddock and, and everyone who works behind the scenes at the club, who do a fantastic job, by the way, year on year, the 750 Motor Club continues to um, prove itself to be uh, one of the top clubs in the country. And it's because of the hard work done by uh, everyone behind the scenes. And not only do they do great work to keep the club running well, uh, but they also uh, welcome everybody into the family and uh, they make it a hugely enjoyable experience to be a part of their events. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed I'll be back for a couple more next year and uh, I'd very much like to uh, to make the Burkett one of those. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'm sure Alpha Live will be back covering several of the events as well during the course of the 2023 season. The Alpha Live coverage masterminded by Luke Austin, but there's a big team behind the scenes as well that are involved in 
putting the uh, the live stream on. Uh, so many, many thanks for all of the hard work that they put in uh, to make uh, to make this coverage happen, not just at the Burkitt Relay, but at the other events that we cover throughout the season. Uh, Andy and I are jabbering away <laughs> because we're still <laughs> waiting for the handicap results to come out, and we don't really want to go off air if we can help it before the uh, handicap results are published, because that is the main point of the uh, Burkitt six-hour uh, relay race. So we'll keep chatting for a moment <laughs> while, uh, while we uh, press... Refresh. Uh, quite a few safety cars in the race. Uh, <laughs> in other seasons, we've had relatively few safety car pairs, but I think we're up to six today, weren't we? Which, uh, uh, again, that, that adds something different to the race in terms of strategy. Uh, yes, and I will claim at least partial responsibility for that because at least one of them did happen within about 30 seconds of me saying how rare safety cars are at Silverstone. So uh, it can happen. We had a big grid, um, and I think the mixed weather conditions at the start definitely played their part in that. Although, as we made the point, when the track conditions improved, actually that's when drivers... Um, started to perhaps push a little bit harder and, and more mistakes were made but uh, a generally low attrition rate actually although there were safety cars a lot of those cars we saw later on in the race even those that appeared to have suffered fairly significant uh, mechanical uh, issues were able to to get going and because of the, the the unique relay format we've got in this race the teams crucially uh, could keep on going even uh, we we saw the doris car uh, they lost two of their cars we mm. thought permanently they got one of them fixed back out there and they were still in contention for the win at the end so um yeah a couple of safety cars out there definitely spice the race up and that plus the fact that the flag had to go out early all complicates this handicap system even more and that i suspect is why there's a small delay in getting the the end result finalized yeah, we saw a few cars with uh, with, with damage, uh, with the MG uh, ZS, I think it was, uh, from uh, that, that had relatively heavy damage. But I don't think there was too much, generally speaking. Hopefully, m most if not all of the cars have uh, survived to to fight another day and are back on track during the 2023 season. Obviously, we don't want to see drivers with uh, with any damage to their cars, and uh, we very much hope that uh, everyone will be back out next season. So we will uh, hopefully be able to bring you the result of the uh, handicap race. I'm still frantically pressing refresh, as you pointed out, though, Andy, there's possibly some judicials that needed to, ah. need to be sorted out as well. So we probably need to do a bit of producing live on air here and work out <laughs> how long we can keep talking uh, about, uh, about nothing in particular. Um, just a reminder that at the five and a half hour mark, the team that was leading on handicap was Rutex Racing BMW Triers, Team 62, from Carmel Porsche Dads and their lads, Team 35, and then 63, Rutex Racing's BMW Compacts. That was the position after five and a half hours. Obviously, uh, we want the positions after six hours, which still are not yet available. Um, uh, we'll be bringing those handicap results just as soon as they have been uh, published. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, podium ceremony will be taking place in the paddock just outside the uh, the cafe, I believe, uh, very shortly. But obviously, before the podium ceremony can take place, we need results so we know who we're giving prizes to. So that will take place in the paddock for those of you, if you at the circuit uh, just as, uh, as soon as it possibly can. And... Uh, a reminder that uh, next weekend here at Silverstone it is the Walter Hayes Trophy organised by the HSCC and uh, I'm sure 750 Motor Club will be back on uh, more than uh, one occasion here next season. Uh, obviously we usually race on both the national and the international layouts as well as the Grand Prix layout for the Burkitt uh, during the, the course of the year. And yeah, that's the great thing about Silverstone, a choice of different layouts. Indeed, and a huge number of events that take place here at Silverstone. It really is the premier uh, circuit in the UK and uh, it's not just the host of uh, two and four wheeled Formula One uh, competition or world championship competition but also uh, an extensive calendar of club racing which culminates in these two very unique events really at the end of the year the Burkett followed by the Walter Hayes Trophy uh, and uh, they uh, are a cracking way to round out the the season we've been blessed actually with some very un October like uh, weather here today and uh, that has certainly uh, added to the uh, the pleasant nature of the of the event but yes yeah, Silverstone uh, a fantastic circuit a real driver's favorite isn't it one that they all love to um 
come and have a go at and as we mentioned at some points during the race not to lay out that actually people get the opportunity to race on all that much it tends to be the big international events that race around the grand prix circuit uh, but things like uh, the burkett uh, one of the rare opportunities for club racers to have a go on the full circuit now ian i'm trying to uh, this is uh, and, and not something i should advise that i do often but i've been trying right. to do some maths oh. um now with half an hour to go number 62 were leading on the handicap were they yes. not Retech racing's bmw triers they yes. had a lap in hand over the cap dads and their lads right at that point rutek had completed 112 laps and cap sorry, uh, cap dads 115 now yes. between then and the flag uh, the Rutex squad managed an extra 10 laps, yeah. whereas car number 35 did an extra 11. So by my maths, they would have been on the same lap yeah. at the end of the race. Now, I haven't yet worked out the other however many cars that were in contention on the handicap, but just between those two alone, it became a lot, lot closer uh, by the flag. Even over that last 20 minute period or so, they did gain back a lap but on the team that had been leading. But the, So the Rutex racing BMW tries at the half, five and a half hour mark had got 25 credit laps. And Cap, Cap Dads and their lads had 21 credit laps. Yes. So that would be sort of prorated a little bit. So uh, uh, yes. that might squeeze another lap yep. out the other way as well. See, the point is, Andy, it's very hard indeed <laughs> uh, to, to, to sort of make these kind of judgments uh, without... Uh, without waiting for the official results. I know what you're trying to do, and I admire it. <laughs> but... Um, it's uh, it's not quite as simple as that all the time, I'm afraid. Uh, no, exactly. I mean, it was complicating enough just trying to work it out between those two teams. There were probably another dozen or so that could be in contention because it wasn't unheard of over the space of 20 minutes during the race, Ian, for a team to lap another team two or three times. And so, actually, teams that looked well out of it with half an hour to go could easily gain a couple of laps back in the final 20 minutes. I'm told that there is an appeal going on uh, into what I'm not quite sure, but that could mean that it is a little while before we have the handicap results. Ah. To spare <laughs> anyone who is still watching this from any more pain, <laughs> I think we will bring our stream to a conclusion there. You will be able to find out the results of the handicap element uh, of this race uh, in Autosport on Thursday, if you can wait that long. Um, but you, even more quickly, you'll find that by going to the 750 Motor Club website and uh, clicking onto the, the live timing link there and going through to the results page and you'll find the results of the race which will be uh, uploaded just as soon as uh, any uh, appeals, protests and whatever else might need to be dealt with as soon as possible. But uh, it's probably not in anybody's interest that we uh, continue to chat uh, until the results are officially published. You know what will happen now is that we'll go <laughs> off air and immediately the results will be published, so possibly that's what we should do. Uh, so, with thanks to you, Andy, and to Josh, and to Lewis, and to all of the team behind the Alpha Live production, and indeed uh, the uh, the marshals and the officials of the 750 Motor Club, and of course all the competitors for putting on such a great show for us today. Many thanks to everybody uh, for all of that. It's been a fantastic day here at Silverstone. We look forward to doing it on many more occasions. Uh, but for now, from Silverstone. The 750 Motor Club and Alpha Live, we wish you a very good night. Bye-bye.